was a friend of the American side Coming back from the middle of Wisconsin Spirit freighters come, it was better than most With the crew in good captain, well seasoned Corn came late and the breakfast had to wait The waves broke all of the railing or perhaps there's a, a specific technique that you just want to learn a little bit more about. Maybe you have a tournament coming up on a new body of water and you want a second pair of eyes on how to approach that. Maybe it's your home body of water and you want to go through some seasonal patterns. I'm offering a service called the Smallmouth Crush One-on-One. -on -one. It's actually a web-based program so we can meet virtually and I can answer any fishing related question that you may have. Any topics, any questions, we're going to go into detail and then we're going to be able to record that conversation so you can have a copy of that and look look over that in the future. It's a really neat program I'm excited to offer. And if you want to take advantage of this, all you have to do is head on over to my website, travismanson.com. Upper right-hand corner, you're going to find the link, Smallmouth Crush one-on-one. -on -one. And it goes into detail as far as what that service has to offer. And I look forward to chatting with you. What's up, everybody? These these people in the comments. They're crushing you already, man. Did you say <laughs> I look forward to chatting with you? You're a grown man. No grown hey, man. Chatting. Hey, first of all, welcome to the show, everybody. This one's going to be pretty good because there's a lot of moving parts. I see Brian, BTC, in the comments. He's BTC. ready to go. He's ready to go. He's begging to come on. He, he's got to go to bed early, right? <laughs> And I don't know when we're going to get them in because we got Rick from Monster Bass. We got Tom and John Nee because they almost did something very special this past weekend. We got maybe my sister. Do you have a sister? I do. That's crazy. Who I don't know yet. We'll see if we can fit her in. And JP wanted to come in too. I mean, requests are going crazy. And then we got, <laughs> we got Joe Zom back. Text messaging me the other day. Jay Z. Jay Z. Can we call him Jay Z? That sounds yes. pretty cool, man. Like Jay Z it. Bass. Spinning rods. Did you win? Talking about the Ike tournament. No, bad decision. 17 something one. Tough day. Why don't you ever make bad decisions when you fish against me? Mm -hmm. I go, LOL. Ha ha. You know, we're going to talk all about our little disaster. Let's call it a disaster, Eric, this past weekend. Truly. Um, we actually have a video premiere of the whole tournament that, we're, that we put together. And so we're going to share that with you tonight coming up. <laughs> I'm already laughing. <laughs> it's good. My favorite scene was probably the hotel scene with you. Oh, it was. Yeah, it's true. True. Or I outrunning the storm, maybe. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got some of that footage. That's pretty cool. Uh, two storms, by the by. Yeah, that's right. Double trouble, man. Double trouble. That should have been a sign. The storm. Storm. And then you turn around, you say, I'm not afraid because I am the storm. <laughs> we, <didn't say> <laughs> we just ran. Like, quick. Like when I saw that lightning bolt come out of that thunderhead out of that white cloud, not the yeah. dark cloud two, two miles away, but straight up, I'm like, dude, we got to go. So we here's what go. here's what scared me about the situation. We're out in the middle of the ocean, basically, and 
<laughs> Eric's like telling me things about lightning and and it'll come out of nowhere up to three miles away. I'm like from a thunderhead. Yep. Yeah. I'm like, True. come on, dude. True. And then True. I didn't see it, but he claims a bolt of lightning came out of blue sky. White cloud, man. Straight up discharge. I'm like, holy shit, we're going now. And we did. <laughs> oh yeah. I feel bad for the pie the kayaker with the pieacker. The <laughs> kayaker wheel. What's a pieacker? I don't know, man. It's something you say when you have a glass of Tito prior to the show. <laughs> <laughs> it is gonna get crazy. So uh spoil alert, e Eric and I did not do well in the Ike event, the Ike Foundation tournament. Um really the guy trips leading up to the event were decent. Uh, we had one rough day just prior. And then, of course, I had a guy trip the day after. And things didn't really change, Eric, on, yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. Um, I did have a guy trip today. And the same area where we fished very, very hard. Yeah. We caught them today there. Yeah, they had a chance to breathe, man. I mean, you had the Bay Legends Tournament Friday, 60 boats, 50 boats, whatever it was, and the whole fleet was on the flats. And then, you know, I think more than half the field was on the flats. So just a ton of pressure, man. I mean, yeah. I thought the game plan was good, but uh, I, I think the way we fished was uh, not what they wanted. Clearly, it was presentation, you know. We were around them. It was. Looking back, we I saw a bunch of boats calling. <laughs> man. So some of this. So first thing in the morning, as I was running out to our spot, I lost the microphone on, on the uh, action camera. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, there goes 150 bucks. Well, and based on your timetable, we were running late. So you were you were high anxiety. You're like, dude, when we get there, you're going to have to sprint and find the live well check. And I said, I think we're going to be OK. <laughs> that, I mean, that's how it started. Like, dude, we're late. And, and I'm just so it was just like a little chaos right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then the microphone. And then it got not better. We had fun. We you know what? We we we, we talked a lot. Occasionally, and you would go, hey, Eric, you know, it's just it's really nice hanging out with you and fishing again together. <laughs> I did say that <laughs> several times. It was funny. Oh, so, my God. Travis, one thing I noticed was the weights were a lot lower than they were last year. Is that mm -hmm. pressure? Is it just the time of year? What's up with that? Gales well, were off a pound. Er Eric, Eric says it was it was due to postponed blues. But mm -hmm. Eric, was it today or yesterday? Might have been today. We caught another pre spawner out there. Yeah, I mean, I caught one in practice. Mm -hmm. So there's a group that spawned, right? So those are the most oh, sure. Then there's the pre-spawners. That's the last, probably maybe the last group. There might be a smaller group there, that might spawn throughout the summer. Who knows? Oh, absolutely. But it's certainly not a giant wave of fish that's moving up now. Jamie goes. Remember, yeah. it's all for charity. That's what he kept saying <laughs> exactly. to himself. Oh man, what's up, casual bass guy? Listen, guys, we got a pretty jam-packed show tonight. I'm hoping Tom. And his father, John, make it. I sent him the link. They confirmed, but I haven't heard back yet. But he's going to be joining us a little bit later. We are going to talk to Rick from Monster Bass because he's got a lot of cool things coming down the chute. I got the Bassmaster Classic on Wednesday or Thursday. I'm heading down Thursday. What is today? Somebody help me out. Monday. Monday. Mondays. And so busy week. Then I get back two days. So I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, which we'll talk about. And then another doctor's appointment next week. Um, uh, Eastern, Eastern medicine doctors. No, I ain't got Western. time. I ain't got, as soon as they give me, they tell me what disease I have, then I'm going to go to the holistic doctor and they're going to fix me up. So you're trusting the conventional doctor to tell you what's wrong with you. They just have the, the blood test. And yeah, I could go to a, a so holistic. the holistic doctors don't have a clue what this, what to tell you it is. They do. I'm I just, sure. I didn't have time to find a good holistic doctor. I need to get in, find out if they're going to chop my leg off, if I have cancer, or if I got a blood clot. One of those three things are going to happen. You might need a shaman. Hmm? Yeah. Or a shaman. So, <laughs> or the problem is, I'm going to be so damn busy. 
I go to Wisconsin as soon as I get back from the classic the next day. Yeah. And the boat is in disarray, totally trashed. There's plastics littered all over the place. Guess what caught him today, Eric? I know. No, just, I caught one on that, but what we should have been thrown in the tournament, which, which worked well last year, all year for me, which is a standard five inch Senko. Oh, I got, Oh, my client today, uh, he had a chatterbait tied on his rod. He's like, you mind if I give this a throw? Mm -hmm. I go, no, bro. Chuck it away. Hmm? Doink. No, I'm scrambling, looking for my swim jig. I'm like, maybe I can get something going here, guys. It was fun. They fished. Listen, they fished hard, dude. We started on some hard structure in the morning. Hmm. And uh, he banged like one just under five. Nice. And I'm like, oh, my God. why? And that was actually a pretty healthy looking fish. Yeah. (laughs) And then... um, we had we it felt like we had high tide for five hours today, <laughs> and then the water started coming out. Yeah, and I guess everybody cut their grass over over the weekend too, because you pretty much couldn't make a clean cast to save your life. Oh yeah, there's a lot of lawn mowing going uh, on. <laughs> yeah, waves, current, and ice about that comment. Chickened out on the last second and decided to uh, focus on a few other things. Yeah, that's not a priority right now. Yeah, keep that weasel in your in your pocket, Eric. That's what you told me. <laughs> I mean, you said I, something about a weasel. I don't even know what to say, man. He's Just keep it rolling. It. Okay. <laughs> roll tape, roll tape, roll tape. I don't think that's a Dunkin' Donuts your drink you're sucking on. What you got going? What are you brewing up tonight, bro? Nothing. It's a double, I know, because if you're going to the doctors, you're. it might be a triple tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um all right what else we got we got a giveaway guys let's talk about that real yeah. quick yeah let's do it man same deal we're gonna try to keep track if you donate through the um that thing i hate what's it called super chat super chat if you donate a dollar how many entries you want i'm gonna we're giving out a bunch of these berkeley max scent power baits you can't find them anywhere <sighs> Which it's a cre- it's a creature hog, okay? It's not the flatworm, so don't give me hell, yeah. okay? <laughs> no, yeah, I'm a bunch of cr- curious. Man. Okay. Uh, I wasn't going anywhere with it, but uh, throwing, hey, did you ever talk it. to the guy? Speaking of uh, Berkeley uh, accent, did you ever talk to the guy at uh, at Nico to see if he was the guy that wrote the story about Johnny Appleseed and the Bluebird houses? No, not yet. <laughs> we will get you, back to that. So they're that. saving Blue Jays, not Bluebirds, right? Is that what we're looking at? And no, so I got we some had buffs. That argument last time. I got some buffs, and then we're also giving out a Monster Bass a bag, which got some pretty cool stuff in it Ooh. for sure. So, super chat. Um, we'll run something on the bottom every once in a while, right? Yeah, sure thing. And then got a quick shout out the last super chat giveaway winner, Brendan Andrews. He DM oh, me on Instagram, right. and he he caught a big one on the secret color from God Joe Bates. The, I believe Eric coined it as a trap stole it from the Native Americans, but I Brandon stole put it, a big right? smally in the boat. And- Listen, I'm going to throw a bunch of those in too, guys, because the Super Chats are coming, and I appreciate it. Um, hmm. that just Sean, I, I would rather take your money through PayPal, believe me, but the only way to keep track is through Super Chat. Yeah. I wish there was a better way. I wish there was a better way. Uh, but I will throw some of those Gajo Seeker colors in the in the bag to the winner tonight, too. Where do we go from here? Where are you at, Eric? Man, I'm at Deep Creek. Take a look. There nice. she blows, man. Nice. Got the look. Where are you in the uh, crow's nest? Yeah, man, I'm in the uh, little dining nook. The dining nook. You would have a <laughs> dining nook. Is that where you have your morning coffee overlooking? The- As a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> yep. Ah, Looking out there, man, wondering which one of those docks has a 10-pounder on it that's going to eat my gang craft. If I only had a boat. I was counting on Tom Need winning that boat and buying it. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> hey, don't With give it boat. don't give it up yet. I was really happy, guys. We're gonna have hopefully have Tom and John in, in on in a little bit. And uh I really thought they won the tournament. Like uh, you were stoked, dude. But nonetheless, before, he's yeah. earned his stripes now, man. He's just not any Randy out there. Thanks, Tom, for the super chat tonight. 
Tom. Let's go, Tom. Tom, in the comments, let me talk to me about those uh, creature hogs. What do you like about them? Where do you rig them? How do you rig them? Where do you throw them? JP, Guggen Slayer. Travis, how would you that? Well, I kind of told you guys, if you paid attention, remember I cut those in half and I put them on the drop shot? I Curtis, got an idea. Courtesy of Kent. I got a new bait that I'm going to Kent gonna Collins, do. what's that? I, I got a bait that's going to blow your mind. I'm not sure. I can't wait. Bait. I hope it's not that bait you tied on. Practice. Nope, 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 <laughs> nope. Oh, like your baits did a whole lot better for us. 12 pounds, six ounces, 12 pounds, Travis. Are you kidding me? You actually said that? <laughs> Anything would have been better than what we threw and how we threw it. Uh, remember what you said at the end of the day? And no. there you go again. You said, you actually said, you might have had an epiphany on the boat. I know I did this. Oh, oh I remember what I said. What did you say? Share, because I'm gonna. I'm I don't want to talk something. about it right now. All right, later. Can, can we talk about it later? Because I'll yes. share something too. Real quick, guys. Next week, I'm I'm gonna be at the classic, and my flight uh, comes in late on Monday. So, I'm I'm I, I don't want to let you guys down saying there's gonna be a live, and then I don't make it. So, we're not gonna have a live next week. Okay. Okay. It's fair. Man, the guys in the comments are keeping me on track. Was it Waves Kern and Ice that said, don't forget to shout out to TRS? Yeah, let's obviously, guys, the real shot, major support of the channel. If you head on over to realshot.com, you get 15% off your order, Smallmouth Crush 15. Check out the latest Smallmouth Crush podcast, Michael Simonton, who's been on the live show. That was once a good or one. Yeah. I got to re, re, uh, Chris Eldane was awesome. I forgot to yes. ask the dude what his biggest smallmouth is, apparently. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't catch that one. Yeah, but yeah. All upset with me. Michael had me getting ready to go buy some scuba gear. I want to try that out. That's sounded kind of fun. Hey, wasn't there a guy that had a whole show that, that he used to like? Yes. Um, well, who was that? Name? He was a smaller guy. He would. I bought down. his DVD. Yeah. What was his name? I can't think of it. You he remember was sponsored the show, by right? Strike King from Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. It was awesome. I mean, those smallies were ultra curious. I'm into, I, I would love to scuba dive in like crystal clear water where I can see the bottom. But if you're going to put me down in an area where the Fitzgerald sink with all those skeletons down there, it ain't happening, bro. You might find yourself. He's That's your old right. Skeleton. Can you imagine finding yourself? Like you were perfectly preserved. I that think you disappear. If you find your reincarnated body. Dude, that would you be just... a great movie. You find... <laughs> Travis I, Manson in the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Kim Stryker, Stricker. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Thank you, guys. Anyways, listen. The what was fort the name of his show, though? Does anybody remember? Something about underwater eyes or I don't know. Hook <laughs> and look. There you go. Hook and look, you man. Guys are on it in the comments. On, yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys, don't forget to give us a like. Apparently, YouTube really appreciates that and lets everyone else know so if everyone watching right now 179 likes could just pop up real quick it doesn't take long really i would really really appreciate that so next week monday we're gonna have uh no live then i'll be in wisconsin we'll be going live probably from the real shot on the 21st and then the 28th of june is a patreon and i just might convince eric to join me because we're going to be talking about something really really cool and he might just he might dig it you might dig it, Eric. You got to let me know what the topic is. I got to think about it first. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Grat84 coming in strong. What's the win? Dang. Thank you, Grat. That'll cover those 10 bags of flatworms he's given me. <laughs> Ooh, me? Oh, you're paying up on that bet. Oh, about the bluebirds? Yes. And the blue jays. Bluebirds. All right. I think we might bring him back. We have to. And get this settled. Yeah. This is a good you idea. You could just record a Patreon of you two talking after the show and put that out there. People would love that. Slump Gumpy, listen, why so many commercials with my uh, Smallmouth Crush interviews? Because the settings were messed up, and I'm trying to stay on top of this. Bear with me. 
Now, Trump it, Gumpy too. Just listen on now, iTunes, Spotify if you don't like the ads too. That'll be yeah. Well, another plus, way to get around that. I did have a record uh, income stream from Google Ads last month, and that could be something to do with it. Maybe the more ads. I, what I'm going to try to do is put put an ad every minute, and then that way I know the real, true Smallmouth Crush followers will watch through the end. Yeah, I wish there was like a uh, little symbol on their names to show if they liked the stream. So that you could know cool. who's comment, like who popped up with a little thumbs up. Let me know if you liked it, guys, in the comments. If you like this, let me know, because I only see four on my end. Also, let me know what area you're from. I really want to hear from the new people as well. Is there anyone new? If, if, you, if you're new, just put new. I feel like I'm new after the way we fished. You got a new fancy shirt on, bro. I like that. Thank you, man. Avid gear. Avid. It's avid. 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 A V I D. Which uh, you know, you don't feel too avid after that showing. But by hey. the way, Eric, you got a little sweat stain on the smallmouth crush hat, and and that's a problem with a lot of those hats. Okay. Well, you know, if anybody has a uh, idea on how to get these out, but uh, if you got any more at home, you know, you might want to bring. Your I probably out. squirreled away a few. Good. Because, you know, I you. like to have two of the same hat. One I wear when I'm fishing because I like to show when we're out on the flats or video doing, you know, like in New yeah. York with Roland Martin. And yeah. then one for in studio so you keep it clean. Hmm. But when you only gave me one, I think I actually took this one from you from the show. Perhaps. So we had a pretty cool uh, experience that night having dinner at the Naughty Goose. Uh, I shared with you some of the videos <laughs> I edited and we actually watched some of them. Super excited about the videos coming down to shoot for everyone, especially the tube video we made. It's pretty much behind the scenes of what really goes on in the boat with Eric and I fishing <laughs> and the banter that goes on. It's pretty and funny after because- watching that, it's like, how are we even friends? It's <laughs> like totally like how many times did you say like in the car ride down? We should have filmed that. That should have been on film. Yeah. Oh my yep. gosh! Like, but you get mad at me sometimes when I take out my phone and I want to film a funny moment. Like, you actually like if people watch my story when the candy bar stuff, that was just <laughs> yeah, I, that's like gold. But you gotta let it go, man. You gotta be willing to show a side of you that you don't want people to see because sometimes you're a train wreck, but uh-huh. you don't want people to know that. Yes. He's it's gonna expose you now. The, it's it. This weekend was a lesson. Hey, what? Welcome, Mark D. Brand new from Poconos. Hey, man. There you go. Yay. Heck yeah! All right, guys. If you if you can share this on your social media, I'm trying. I'm doing whatever it takes. Let's grow this channel, and I need your help because we got some awesome supporters. Jack, man, everybody. Tim, yeah, look at that. Jack B. It's my boy, Joe Zombeck. I'm getting a lot of advice on the uh, stain on the hat. I'm going to try it. Okay. How? It's so. Then okay. a dishwasher, vinegar, white vinegar. Come on mm. now. Let's roll. Mm. Awesome. So, so go yeah, ahead. go ahead. Wait, 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 uh, 16th, <laughs> I'll be in Wisconsin. I'm thinking about inviting. I'm going to invite a super fan that watches the live stream pretty much religiously. You just talk like comments. Captain Kirk. Okay. You went like this. You went inviting, thinking about. Super fan. Okay. From the stream. Can you guess who? Sean Lai. Don't you think that would be cool? How, how would, would you guys love to see a video with Sean and I go busting up some big smallmouth in Wisconsin? Yes. Unreal. I think I'm going to make that happen. Well, here's the thing. I got to check out the schedule and I got to make sure it works for him. You know, it's going to, I'm going to invite him whether he can make it or not on the day I can do it. And hopefully we can yeah. work that out. I think that'll be pretty cool. Sean, if it doesn't work out for you, he'll just stop by and kidnap you and return you at the end of the day. You'll be right. There you go. Well, I'm driving Make right through. Happen. Or maybe I should go film in uh, Chicago. Dude. Yeah. That would be cool. Go to Chi Town, man. I wouldn't know a thing about it. But Sean does. Yeah. Like trying to catch fish in the Windy City, like on the skyline. That would be cool. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Got the wheels turning. <laughs> he was. <laughs> I, I mean, it would know. be fun, man. Yeah. Is the boat launch safe? Hey, Sean said he's going to quit his job to do it. Oh. So he's coming to his time. 
<laughs> no pressure, but you better make it an epic day. <laughs> oh, we will. I promise you that. I actually have a couple cool ideas um, when I do get back. I, I am actually focused on the Wisco event uh, when I do get back. Uh, to Wisconsin, I got an event on Sunday, so very li little amount of practice, but that's going to be the next big deal. And then here's the crazy thing: so I get back on the fifth of July. Can you believe something going to be July soon? Um, and then I head to uh, Lake Ontario on the seventh already. Wow, nice craziness, craziness. So Travis, getting back to your guys' event this last weekend, Wild Bill had a good question. He wanted to know, do you think the cicada, you know, that big movement of all cicadas going through there, did that have any effect on the fishing? Did it make it bad? Worse? Alex, it? that's a Not really even... good – that's awesome. The, listen, so that's here's Wild what happened. Bill right there. Yeah, Wild Bill. So I was fishing a, uh, a little canal today, and there was cicadas all over the water, right? And they were like getting slurped up, dude, left and right. Bluegills or bass? Big bass. Or both? I'm Dude, just joking, bro. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I, I'm about to say I didn't see I want to tell you this. I The clients I had uh, this morning go, are, are the fish like uh, – they asked the same question you did, Alex, about the cicadas and if the fish are eating them and stuff like that. And I go, dudes, I go, you hear them? I, I haven't seen one on the water yet, and I've been out here for weeks. And then we go like 20 feet and there's one buzzing on the water. I go, oh, there's one. And I go, you make a good point. And then they started talking about how you can deep fry them and dip them in chocolate. And then I'm like, well, you're talking my language, bro. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And so I, mean, so I brought eight of them uh, home. Half-eaten bluegill, you'd eat a cicada dipped in chocolate. That's right. <laughs> you did, man. You sushi that thing. I don't know. Boat. Um, maybe I can play a quick clip of that. And nailed the landing too, man. I mean, unbelievable. Like, how do you do that? Good. Guys, I'm gonna I, I am. I'm going to uh you got drag cool like skills, man. Because I'm gonna play a crack could do that, man. I I'm think I play saw it. the fangs. If you do it in slow motion, uh -huh. when he opens his mouth, you'll see the it happened. <laughs> I was there, guys. Right, I don't know me... if the camera can record it. Let me see if I can find it here. Hey man, Oliver and I was out there chucking a big bait. In our he tournament. was. I go. Do? I turn to Eric. I don't know, but I turn to Eric. I go. He'll learn real quick someday. <laughs> <laughs> of all the days you could try to get a big bite on a big bait, I don't think that was the day. But I'd be curious to hear how he did. Oliver, if you're watching, post up in the comments, bro. Here we go. Will's got a shotgun again. <laughs> you get interesting. Can you get the net? You can handle it. We're not no, using I'm, net. I'm getting a net. No I'm getting a net. Defined edges. And as you can see here, this is all smooth surface. And you have your chunk rock out here. And we catch rock bass. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. What have you done? What have you done, man? Settle down. Settle down. Don't get crazy. That's how people lose an eye. Just watch out. <laughs> yep. Watch out. Of course, with that two hand most of us would have Another walleye. Hey, hey, be careful with that walleye. <laughs> Look at that. What do you spit up? I don't know. Something crazy. Looks like a bluegill. Maybe bluegill. Jeremy? I do. What would you do if I did? You would not eat that thing. You don't think so? You would sushi that right now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are nasty. That's nasty. That's crazy, dude. And you nailed the landing. I, I have a lot. So, yeah. I'm pretty good with stuff like that, Eric. I, you know you know, I struggle a little bit with life, but some <laughs> things I'm pretty good with. He's been saying that lately. He looked at me one time and he goes, do you struggle with life? About like, three weeks ago, I look at Eric because he did something that pissed me off. And I go, do you struggle with life, dude? And then ever since then, it comes back to haunt me. Oh my God! I left the keys in the boat. I I forgot Wallet to lock in the boat twice. Uh, it just yeah. craziness. Man. And then every time I mess up, he goes, "Do you struggle with life, Travis?" <laughs> and and it hit me. It hit yeah. me. I'm like, Eric. I even came up to you. I go like on a serious note. I go, Eric. I I fucking do struggle at life. <laughs> <laughs> There was if some Eric's struggling, I don't want to know uh, what I'm doing. Hey, Alex, let me tell you something. There were there were epiphanies this weekend. I, I had post 
tournament with Travis, a, a conversation with Billy Kramer and even Captain Scooter, man. I'm like, it hit me. I've had epiphany. Travis had epiphanies. We'll talk about it later, but major weekend of epiphanies. Mm. Good stuff, man. Less Don't forget the like, guys. I see seven lousy likes. Alex, what's no, going on more there? more than that. All right, why can't I see, I see it on 79. Okay, well. I don't know. Listen, we got to move on with the show. We got we got our first guest. In the house. In the house. Looks like he's really cold where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, what's going on, dude? What's up? What's he's up? San Francisco. What's it's up, skater, bro? Come on, man. That's an awesome hat, dude. It's a little tall. I mean, Rick, are you wearing two hats or is that one? Uh, or is it pretty small? The reservoir tip. tip. It's like a gnome hat. What is that? <laughs> it's the <laughs> reservoir tip. I love it. Uh, yeah. Oh, you mean like Cali reservoir? Sure. We don't I, know. I don't rib know. for somebody's pleasure. There you go. Uh, whoa. Is that better? Is that better? Yep, that no, I like hot. it. I like it. I like it. PG. I like it. Well, we it's, already messed that up. We put late. a disclaimer when when the live show starts. We do. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. Solid. Man, we got a action packed live tonight. Super, super excited. I want to bring you on, Rick, because well, first of all, we're going to be able to hang out next week in person at the Whoa, classic, classic, which will be cool. Wednesday. Everybody going to the classic. Yeah, baby. I'll be fun. Hey, Travis, it's always look. a good time. What you got? Little mobile light, dude. Check it out. Oh, good job, man. Yeah, man. What's that for? It's, little... it's the loom light, so when I'm out, I can like you know do it up, man. You're trying right. to get serious with this thing. Yeah, man. How do you wow. like the little? I found Ooh. your Yeti mic. You're taking. <laughs> I caught it. You didn't know, and I stuffed it in my pocket. Yeah, I lost yeah. the mic, dude, Rick. Like in the tournament this this past Saturday, drive run down the lake. It just blew off my uh. Oh. Action camera pissed me off. Would that drop you? One fifty, not bad, but still, it's like. I guess Eric just we lost Eric. Alex, what happened? He quit. Get him back in. He's done. <laughs> He's auctioning off your mic. Oh, there you go. There he is. We'll bring him in. Welcome I back. Like Why I are like you upside him. down, dude? I don't know, man. I don't know what happened. Try to I really like the your arrangement. Thing. I like mm -hmm. this arrangement. This is good. I like that I like backdrop, the man. <laughs> Who's backdrop? Look Alex's or, or, or Eric's? <laughs> Alex's. Yeah, cool, thank right? you. Are you in the bathroom? Is that a shower curtain? I'm actually in prison. Uh, they got me a nice little <laughs> setup here, and I've been behaving well, so they let me do a stream every Monday. Wow, that's really nice of them. What do you yeah. do? <laughs> yeah, what what'd you do? I illegally gave away one of Travis's uh, trivia oh. questions that he asked and didn't know the answer to, and he had to send out three Monster Bass bags or something. He's all oh, mad I about remember it. That. So I he called the that. cops on me, and now I'm in prison. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, we had, a, we had a giveaway, Rick, a while back, and I don't know what happened. It was for a Monster Bass bag, and like, oh, it was whoever answered first. You know how the comments sometimes get confusing and crazy? Yeah. It's yeah, people's feeds come in differently when they're answering at the same time. And then, and then you get the hate yeah. mail. Hey, man, I answered first. I, here's the proof. You're right, buddy. It's coming. Of course. Of course. <laughs> it's all good. I love it. I love it. So what's new, man? What's going on? What's what's the uh, I got my somewhere. I, I got to bring it out. But I got I got my my baits for this month. And I heard that you got a lot of cool things moving forward i'd love to hear about it. i know we're going to talk a little bit more in detail at the classic but anything you can share that's super exciting right now uh besides the fact that i just cut myself okay. um, <laughs> yeah. what uh, is going on yeah I was, I was using the uh little boomerang snip for everything that it wasn't designed for uh, mm. ah you're um, trimming some nails exactly <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got a lot going on at Monster Bass, man. We're we're getting ready to head over to the Classic and looking forward to seeing lots of people. And then the following week, we're going up to Michigan. Dang! And uh, we're gonna fish with Rudd and Nowak and Burley and Dang. all and like a bunch of people. We rented a house up there on the lake. Nice. And uh, oh, nice. We're gonna do that, and then we want to head over to. Uh, Hopefully New York and do some fishing there, maybe with you. That would Ooh. be nice. Whoa. I'll be up there all summer. 
I know. Maybe I Man. should just run, I should just rent a house. We can all go up there. That would be fun. It would, would be fun. Be Plus, fun. we gotta get, go back to your roots, man. We yeah, got exactly. we got tear up Syracuse. You I'm know down. What I'm, I'm down. Yeah. Syracuse, man. Fun. Oneida. Yeah. Oneida. Oneida. I need Oneida. Oneida. Love Oneida. hate relationship Oneida. with that place. Yeah, you and me both. Mm. You and me both. It's all good. So what? Uh, what day do you guys get to the classic? I'll be there Thursday midday mm -hmm. and so i'm pretty much open all i'm really doing is i have to i have to go to the launch so i'd love to meet a bunch of the fans uh if anyone sees me in some weird mercury gear sometimes they dress me up and we're probably gonna have one of them big cowboy hats on those <laughs> big foam cowboy hats cowboy the baseball boots. pants again this yeah year? Man, i don't know what she's got in mind dude uh, but I we're gonna be like when you and stasiak were getting ready and i'm just like are you kidding me i know i know we're gonna have some silly outfit and i'm gonna be handing out mercury gear hats whatever you were hanging out the uh the clap batons i think at the class yeah the thunder sticks so oh, we'll be yeah. doing all that and then anyone who enters the arena uh you'll run into either myself or four other individuals that help out mercury and we're handing out we're handing out the thunder sticks to everyone those noisemakers, and then of course we have the um, crazy about Mercury promotion during the actual weigh in at some point where we get to run around the arena and toss shirts out into the uh, the audience. So it's not it's fun work and it's not a lot of work. So I have a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. So I'll be roaming the halls, roaming the expo, uh, hanging out, talking, doing a little filming, and just catching up with everyone. It's 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 a busy time. You know, Rick, it's uh, mm -hmm. very little sleep. Yeah. Little hey, Travis, sleep. Um, if they give you that foam cowboy hat again, could you yes. include that and incorporate it into a video? I think that'd be awesome, man. I, yeah. I, 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 I'd personally do a super chat donation to watch you film on the flats with a cowboy Wearing hat like that. that. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Or in New York, anywhere, really. Doesn't matter. I don't care where you film. Just a scene. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and ride along in the river and just let it blow off at some point. Let your okay. locks go crazy afterwards. You know, <laughs> I think it's a great commercial. Yes. So let me ask you guys, who do you like? Who do you like in the classic? Mm. Texas. Man. So I don't follow <laughs> professional bass fishing anymore. No, I That's don't know. You, you <laughs> Rick, I, dude, I don't you know do. who's in the Seth fighter. Let him win. Hmm. He's on a hot streak. All right, he is. Yeah, is like he? Colin, is he man. still leading? Is he still leading the Angler of the Year? Yep. Really? And he's all he's got left is Champlain and St. Lawrence. So, and, and by oh the way, my gosh, I mean, you're kidding me. I think he yeah. wrapped oh, up that. So, I mean, he's got the momentum. I, I think I like Spider Man, it, man. And, but yeah, let's Kalanick, man. I mean, I now think let's right go with there. Seth Alex. because Seth is coming up on a Smallmouth Coach podcast in the future, mm -hmm. and he gave out some. Pretty cool information. You guys are gonna definitely dig it. Um Matt, fighter's my boy, so I'm I'm going fighter. He's your boy, but he hadn't been on yet. How's he your boy? We well, tried to get on. All right, cool. I we had him we, well, he ditched us because he had to he had to leave early for a tournament. He was driving through the, the mountains. Mm. Fair enough. Cool, Fair man. Enough. Fair enough. Well, Fair when enough. he wins, you'll have him on. There you <laughs> go. I love it. Even if he comes in ninth, have him on. Top ten. I will. You know what we should have thrown this past uh, this past weekend, Eric? Aside some, from a Senko and a swim jig? Some sort of buzz bait. Dude, I had him in the bag, man. I did throw I, the buzz I, bait. I know I yelled at you. I go, that's not gonna work right now, Eric. And we get back <laughs> to the boat. Know, we get back to the boat ramp and Johnny V's got like 18 buzz baits tied on. Yeah. Really? Man, it's it's I'm gonna stop allowing my team partners to influence my decision because my bass instincts I've realized are good, not great. I'm still learning. I always can learn, but you just gotta fish what you feel in your gut is gonna generate a bite, man. Yeah, I think you got a good game plan, man. We'll talk about it later. But yeah, you did say that's that, that's never gonna work. So it does have like, a time and place. I just felt like it was a little too early. Could have been. Mm. Absolutely. You know what? Sure. I We're a week away minutes. from the buzz bait fight. I spent five minutes on it, dude. Right. And the bait you were catching one earlier in the week didn't get a bite. 
for you, a keeper, until close mm -hmm. to noon. So did it matter yeah. at that point? No. Could have had right. one fish reactor. You just never know. It was the right tide for it. And I waited for the right tide. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when do you like, saw some fish breaking? So right. you're saying it's a week too soon for the buzz bait. What can what conditions are you looking for for a buzz bait? Sure. So so I really want those fish to be 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 happy that the spawn's over, be relieved that there's not <laughs> pressure on them, no stress. The sores are healed up on their tails. I want them to want to get hungry, get in that summer pattern, and I want that tide where we fish on the Chesapeake to be coming out. I want that grass just under the surface and I want a little bit calm conditions and then I'll chuck and, and I know you can catch them under the high sun, hmm. but absolutely there's, there's something special about being on the Chesapeake Bay in middle of the June, Did right after the spawn, of the middle of the June. <laughs> I'll say what I want to say. This is my show. And then being out there right at, at, at sunrise and have a buzz bait in your hand. Hey, Travis. Epic. You should have yes. just told Rick to watch my buzz bait episode that I filmed with you on yes. your YouTube channel because yeah. I've seen you throw a buzz bait, what, like three times? No, I caught point. <laughs> just, dude, dude. I, I go. just got, okay, okay, <laughs> I mean, okay. You hold on, hold on. Yellow buzz no, bait I gave you when don't you came upset in third. me. <laughs> right here. I just got a, a memory. <laughs> I got a memory on Facebook. With me and Jack on the flats, and what does it say? Just under 20 pounds yesterday, throwing buzz baits, good for fourth place. Here's a video of some Travis, of the catches and lost I'm fish. Mess, Travis, I'm okay. messing with you, man. But it's 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 pretty easy. But don't – okay. I know you know what, what a buzz bait does, man. I'm just messing with you, man. <laughs> wow, that lighting, really, that lighting really works, man. It, it does. It's like, it looks like he's – yeah. Like thanks yeah thanks man you, you got some nice to... tone well thank you thank you i'm trying to you know it's a soft you can do the warm or the bright white light whatever you want mm -hmm. it's cool it's cheap too and it's a nice little wow. pack man yeah i figured i'm on the road a lot when i'm doing these lives so i hate shitty lighting so that's right. i try to step up the game for the gentleman mm. i bet if he's good for another week he can get that in prison too mm. <laughs> 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 So, Rick, I got a question for you about the Classic. You said you guys are going down there. What benefits does that big expo provide you from a business standpoint? Does it give you easy access to new bait companies? Does it help you network? What are you looking to do when you go down to the Classic as Monster Bass? Yeah, it's interesting. I've attended since, uh, I don't know, at least the last 10. And I've, I've expoed every single time except for the last two. Last year I didn't expo because – you know, we were just so brand new and, uh, you know, budgets were tight. Sure. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, when you have a booth, obviously it's more about just get, getting in touch with the consumers, you know, putting stickers in their hand, getting them to sign up and give you their cell phone number, email address, and then you can communicate with them afterwards. It's so hard to sell stuff unless you're selling like individual baits because anything that you got to sign up for, I mean, the line just wraps around the corner and nobody wants to stand in those lines because we've all seen the the aisles, right? I mean, it's a gong show. It's so packed. So, uh, you know, for us, it's it's more of we're going to walk the show. We're going to talk. We've, we've got a lot of meetings set up. We're going to talk with some of, a lot of the brands and just, you know, kind of interact with some of our some of our influencers that are going to be there. Um, next year, though, we'll we'll definitely have a booth, you know, and we'll uh, we'll retail the brands and have some sort of sign up. But uh, I don't think it's a great place to be signing up people for subscriptions. It's just sure. nobody wants to stand there in those crowds. Mm -hmm. And it's for a deal. It's, uh, it's Deal City, right? Well, yes and no. It's so, like you were saying, it's very, uh, it's hard to get around that place and to look sure. at everything. You know, it's jam-packed. I mean, I... <sighs> I try to do a quick – what I do is I get to sneak in there a little earlier, right, before right. the doors open. That's when I do my damage. But once it gets chaotic in there, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. It's crazy for sure. It's crazy. Like they, go, they walk into Dick's and they walk out with five ducat rods for 100 bucks or something silly. You know? Dude, so listen to this. So about four years ago, 
I think it was Dick's actually. They had those Mustang inflatable uh, life jackets and they blew them out like half off and they were already pretty reasonable. And for some reason I was, I was into this, you know, buying stuff and selling it online. And I'm like, damn. So I buy literally, I think $800 worth of life jackets. What? And, <laughs> yeah, oh my dude. God. I'm like, I can That's flip crazy. these next week, man. Double my money. So, uh, <laughs> which one, like Mustangs? The, yeah, but what sucked was uh, the shipping because they had the cartridges in them or something. Oh, I got screwed man. over, man. Yeah. Anyways. Dang. <laughs> oh, best laid plans. Yeah. I would have thought the same thing, man. Well, because it's like a hazardous thing. And yeah, so, you have to pay yeah. some premium. Yeah, yeah, they charge you like thirty nine bucks or something. <laughs> right? Right? Holy moly! Uh, it's all good. Yeah, not the smartest thing to do. I'm gonna try You're to sh- shove them all in my suitcase on the way home. <laughs> try and watch Boiler Room the night till before. Until it goes, right? till it goes right. to the X ray machine and they see like seventeen. Yeah, sir. What are you doing, <laughs> dude? I always get stopped. I always get stopped at security. I got like weird powders and creams and in unmarked bottles and then you know camera gear and stuff and they're always like well, can you can you go you got any lithium weird, batteries weird, on you sir What's weird that? powders and creams part well so i i brush my teeth with uh baking soda and and uh uh hydrogen peroxide and so the baking soda i put in these little canisters okay and so i always get questioned what that is and you know i take a lot of vitamins and supplements and things like that so it's always it's hit or miss at the airport. Uh, I was more interested in the creams part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the guy no one wants to go through security with. Right, right. <laughs> they got him on their training video. And this weirdo walks through. Here's what you do. Oh, my God. Weird true, 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 creams. Travis, true story. Special, I, once walked through, I once walked through security in an airport. Yeah, and it was an international. It was an international flight, and I had twelve giant steak knives rolled what? up in a golf shirt, what? stuffed in my bag. I had won them as a gag gift at a Christmas party. Totally oh, forgot that I had them in the bag, the and, and they just looked at me like, "Sir, is there anything you want to tell us about?" And I'm like, I have in the bag, whatever you need." And they're like. And they're looking at me like I'm the biggest oh. on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Double fisted 12 steak knives, giant ones. Holy was, crap. That's crazy. That is. Yeah. Damn. Well, yeah. It, it happens, I guess. Yeah. I mean, oh, shit. Good it's not. It is good. That's good stuff, man. Well, Rick, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Hanging out with you down there at the Classic. We always have a good time. I get to meet some of the guys from Monster Bass. I haven't met yet, so I'm really excited about that. And then, of course, uh, I'm excited for your trip to Michigan, man. You're going to have some pretty cool content coming out of that, man. You're hitting at the prime time, dude. Prime time. Yeah, maybe a little, maybe a month late, right? Well, you can do some damage still. Sure. Anything's yeah. possible in Michigan in June. I'm, I'm assuming you're going to hit some of those – crazy clear water bodies that just got absolutely. giant smallmouth. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Dude, I'm in. I'm in. Let's do I'm it. In. Well, perfect. So we- well, listen, I we, again, we're giving away a monster bass bag at the end of the show as well uh, okay. for everyone. We got a lot of crazy stuff coming up. We're going to talk about our <sighs> the Iconelli Foundation <laughs> Tournament mishap. Bad decisions were made. And we just didn't stick it out. We didn't stick to our roots. We didn't go back to the wacky rig or Texas rig stick bait. You know what I mean? Slow it down. Stay in one spot. Don't move around. The problem was the week of guiding, Eric, and in our practice, we found some patches and areas that held fish. And so we decided to just move all over the place constantly and kind of mess up the rotation with the tides. That's our excuse. I I got nothing. No, man. I mean, I, you know, I thought your plan was good out of the gate. I, I mean, I, I literally, I think a couple of times Travis said, the only thing we haven't tried is the dead stick. And, mm-hmm. I, you know, we just didn't pull down and do it. I mean, it's not like I insisted. <laughs> I 
and it occurred to me maybe we should be because the guys that were anchored with not power poles but with an anchor rope. Yes, I'm almost certain we're going to talk won. about that. So, <laughs> listen, if you don't have power poles, and you use, I'm not picking on these guys. It was genius. They used yeah. an anchor to keep them in place, and they milked out an area. And every time we looked at them, they were, they calling, were calling and catching. Mm. And then the I one mean, guy was slinging a Senko, and the other guy is slow reeling, which I thought was a swim jig, which made perfect sense to me. But did you think that we pulled down and slowed down? Nope. We did it occasionally, bit. but oh, but we it's were still bit. fishing finesse but fast. Yeah. Sure. Rick, it's before resolved. well, we're gonna we're gonna premiere the video shortly, so we don't want to give the results okay. away. But we got a video coming up here, and then we got a mystery guest after that. Well, I think you guys know who it is. But before we let you go, Rick, yeah, man, the, the fat bastard, come on, man, what's up with that? What do you mean? I don't what know. It? It's just a crazy what name. One? Isn't that a reference to the, uh, uh, the Austin Maybe. Powers? Yeah, man. I got a fat bastard. bastard. So did I. Mine looks like this. Well, that's pretty interesting. That's wow. That's like a crazy red-headed blackbird. Does that have a, a spinner tail on the bottom? Yeah, man. Yeah. Like the old Ottoman furbid frog. Wow. Is that a uh, spitting frog as well? Yes, sir. Hey, cut mouth. Yeah, cool. Eric, you're going to appreciate this. So here's the cool thing about monster bass. You never know what you're going to get. And a lot of times you're going to get baits that you may not have bought or tried or even thought about trying. And so sure. this fat bastard comes in the bag, right? And I'm like, okay. And you know what? I'm very picky when it comes to frogs, right, Eric? Because first of all, material. it's got to be collapsible. Be it's got to have a good, it's got to be soft. Yeah. It's got actually. I like to trim the the skirts. You don't have to trim the skirts with this, okay? Yeah, that's pretty cool. It comes the hooks, trimmed. dude. The hooks are tacky sharp, like straight up. And this is the perfect gap and plastic. And um, I'm going to be throwing this frog this year, Rick. And listen, yeah. if it wasn't for Monster Bass. I'd still be on the search because we talked about this months ago, Eric. We're supposed to do a video about the search for the perfect frog because I was still confused. A lot of good options out there. Don't get me wrong. But this is definitely one that I have a little bit of confidence out of the package already, knowing that it's got the right profile. Per what se. do you think of this one? I definitely like the color. Yeah, I like that. That looks... Very similar. Frog or, oh yeah, popping popping frog. or walking, popping frog. Nice. Ah, Z-Man. I don't see no Z-Man in this. What do you mean? You you one hundred percent got a Z-Man in yours. I don't know. He used it already, probably. Maybe Travis, he did. Travis, <laughs> do, do, do you struggle in life? I do struggle in life. <laughs> Everybody's getting, everybody's getting Z-Man. Everybody. Okay, cool, man. Okay. That's awesome. I tell you what, the Z-Man frog, I, I definitely have a few of those. Um, great colors. Legit. Did you get these? I, I might be looking at the wrong bag, bro. Are you messing with me? I got these. Did what are we, a month behind here, bro? Did you get these? I got to check the mail, bro. <laughs> I'm either a month ahead or a month behind. I don't know. Well, either way. <laughs> there you go. Either way, Ricky's showing off Monster Bass stuff. There you so go. It's a win win. It's, I'll tell it's you what. New. I, bright skies. <laughs> Did what I get the right I mean? bag? No. No. <laughs> I wonder why you didn't say anything when I held the Thunderhawk up. Well, I got the Thunderhawk. Or the big bites. I didn't get that. What the heck? I got this one, though. I'm so confused. Mm, that's is that sexy. a walking bait? Like a, yeah. That? Yeah. It's about Light like, blue. It's about blue a three, uh, three and three quarter inch. Okay. Shake it. Hold on. Let's hear All that right. rattle. Smart thinking. I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. He's game. loud. Wow. 
Well, I think the uh Oh, dude, I gotta tell you, Rick. Tell me. Again, another thing. I keep saying this because I was with Eric and, and we're fishing up on the on the uh, a secret Those place. Are good. Dude, I'm like, I gotta try these. I'm like, they are legit. Yeah, they are a great swim bait, and we caught them on it. And since you only sent me one and it was very snaggy. <laughs> well, that's the end of that video, huh, Eric? Guess that's not going to make the cut today. Well, we can give you more. <laughs> I know. I'm it's, 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 it's heavy for its size, which is pretty cool if you're fishing Yeah, deeper, yeah, you know? it's it's awesome. It's a good yeah. – it's definitely legit. And we're actually going to have that in the, uh, in the giveaway tonight. So <laughs> when you get that, whoever wins, tie that thing on because it will catch them. Sure. Wow. We found that out. Nice. Dang. Right, well, what makes it so good, Travis? Why is it better than any other old swim bait right, on the market? Yeah, let me pull that out for you and show you. Apologize, whoever's going to win this. <laughs> Just have to deal with it. So what I really like is a smaller profile. I'm big into the two and a half, three, three and a quarter inch swim baits. Okay, the profile's perfect. I like the fact that the head actually has the lid actually goes a little bit above and beyond and kind of almost integrates well with the plastic. The hook is super stout yet small enough to be paired. A lot of times you get a small swim bait. You, you can't pair it correctly with the right hook. And a lot of times you get a real super light wire hook, which works, but you're going to bend that out with this. There's no bend in that hook at all. And it's perfect. It actually, we hooked plenty of smallmouth on it before we lost lost the bait um, on the rocks. But we were slow rolling this basically, and we were fishing it probably in a little bit more shallower water than we should have. Um, yeah. You know what's nice about this? This is a was this a three eighths? Is I it imagine. three eighths? Feels yeah, feels like it. I think so. Um, I think that's what I remember. And it, so we were working that in about four to six with some pretty snaggy rocks and so that's where we wound up in trouble but it worked because we were dragging it on the bottom and it just really went through the rocks really well and so it's very durable too i actually didn't have to i still got an extra trailer and so uh, it does come with that but of course you can't go wrong with green pumpkin i put a little bit of chartreuse on the tail just to give it a little kick and um they are cool and you talked about this rick a few months back on the live uh, about these so I certainly appreciate that. Yeah, it's a really interesting brand. The guy that he, the guy that designs them, works with. Uh, he designs with Rago. Is that how you pronounce it? Rago Bates out of California. Sounds yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. J Jerry, Jerry Rago. Yeah, yeah. He said they said that he designs for twenty two. He's he's designed baits for twenty two brands that are sold at Tackle Warehouse today. That's wow. extraordinary. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, that's a dude who's got game. I mean, you know, in the crankbait world, like one of the most epic deep, deep diving crankbaits was called the Junior D from Specialty Tackle. You couldn't find it because it, it was really like a very small crankbait that could get to depth. I think uh, Skinny Beer makes them now, but it's a sinker. Skinny anyway, Bear. yeah, yeah. Um, but it's really, that, that intrigued me about that swim bait. A very heavy head, small profile, stout hook. You don't see that often. If, if you're throwing a three eight ounce, it's usually a much bigger bait. So mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, if we were fishing deeper water, I thought it would have really performed and not got snagged. But anyway, it still caught him. But it was mm -hmm. tough to keep it up out of the rocks. You know what I mean? So it's a unique bait because of that, in my opinion. It's hard to find that. It's funny you mentioned skinny bear. I haven't heard many people talk about skinny bear. So yeah. I heard. I heard about Skinny Bear years ago, and somebody mentioned uh, we're talking about their drop shot hook and how much they loved it. And I just forgot about it until just now. Um, yeah, they made some really. I cool guess jigs. they make a pretty good drop shot hook. I don't know. I don't know. They had some really badass jigs back in the day, man. You know, um, Donna Avino had some really cool finesse jigs. The puff ball. You get some real nuts that are uber finesse guys and they pine for it. It's tough to find them maybe the way they were back then, you know, living rubber, had a little piece of chenille on the back for scent. It was really cool, man. Great design, man. Gamakatsu hook, some had a deep throat uh, mm. um, owner hook, which, you know, once a fish gets pinned on that deep throat hook, it does mm. not come off. It's a very unique hook. So, but Skinny Bear, I think, kind of made a re 
repro of the Junior D, and it's a sinking version of that crankbait. So it's a very small crankbait that gets to depth. Not many people mm. are sinking crankbait, right? I mean, um, but but there's a time and a place for it, and especially a small crankbait that can get down that deep. So I'd be curious to try that with Travis, like that that Skinny Bear, that Junior D remake in a sinking version. Suddeth made a sinking crankbait. And um, a lot of guys that are crankbait heads will tell you, don't sleep on a sinking crankbait. There's a time and a place for it. Mm. Very cool. Yeah, Damn. hearing Lee Sisson that was on Bass University, I was on the show with him, and he was talking about um, how he got crankbaits to sink, and it was just like he had his way because he was getting things to depth in a different profile. I mean, you think about a 6XD, right? That's a giant bait, but it gets to depth. Can you get a crankbait that small to that depth and present mm. something different to the bass? So in a, in a you know for the right reason for the right time so interesting yeah. stuff man yeah so i think we said there's a time and place for it what is that time and place oh i mean think about the say, profile so size, Eric right? is, I mean, yeah did Alex, you, you just froze man what'd you say so what i'm saying is okay I'm so thinking about you said that there was a time and place like, for the sinking okay yeah i'm thinking about small mouth in particular i'd love to be on a great lake with travis you know, targeting those really isolated rock piles, you know, when, when the crankbait bite is on. And has Travis even, you know, has anybody up there ever tried to present a crankbait that deep? I mean, you saw some smallmouth tournaments where they were cranking for those fish. And I, was it Seth that was cranking um, and did extraordinary well? I, I, Travis, I don't know if you watched that tournament, but uh, Seth was, was deep cranking. And, uh, but I'm talking about even deeper, you know, 20, 30 feet, right? Um, yeah. To see how that might work, you know. Hmm. Yep. interesting mm -hmm. good stuff good stuff yeah i mean think about how they they attack a tube right i mean travis you know uh, some of the deeper things you fish right i mean and think about the action of a crankbait i mean a crankbait is way you know that thing scurrying along the rocks i think a small mouth would just yeah crankbaits definitely have a time and place especially it. on the big clear bodies of water a lot of people don't yeah. throw them i've experimented with them i can tell you i have not fished them in a tournament before a tournament setting yeah. yet but that's not to say I shouldn't say that there was a Lake Erie event. Yeah, I did throw a little bit and caught a few. But yeah, um, but that experimentation is like the size of a three-inch tube. Maybe I was throwing. Smaller. Yeah, yeah, dude. I I'm totally on board because I was throwing that big deep, uh, spro. Um, the big John, deep John, the little John. Okay. Yeah, but the deep deep yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Big the bait, profile. But it's, it's it's so much bigger than this beta. So yes. you ought to check it out, man. I I, mm -hmm. I I I don't have to make it anymore, you know. But uh, I remember looking at looking for the Junior D, trying to find it because you know you can grind that kind of thing, bait, that smaller profile, Alex. Even even though you're not trying to get to twenty feet, you can throw it in ten and really grind that bottom and trigger bites. But I'm talking about a sinking bait that can get to if you've got the patience to let it get down to twenty thirty feet. And and this and a small mm. enough profile, so I I would just really you know uh, you got to you got to be willing to to give up baits right because you know are you going to be able to yeah. get something back in that deep water you know it, it is what it is but if you're trying to win fifty k who cares right you're gonna that's you know, right or twenty hey, so or someone, or five. Someone, someone in the chat was talking about drilling a hole in the crankbait filling it with water and then epoxying the hole so there was a show on Bass U. Eric, and you're probably more familiar with that, where I think it was Scroggins. Terry Scroggins. Yeah, Alex was telling us about that, where he drilled a hole, and there was a little secret. And they were mm -hmm. he was saying that's how KVD won or did yeah. really well in a lot of events in the past. Yeah, he used to let his um he used Sneaky. to let his um striking baits fill up with water. So he was effectively making that bigger body bait sink. So yeah, you, know, you thought he was throwing a floating model, but he was getting a, a strike king five XD or whatever it was at the time to depth on those mm. ledges right because you you know those baits would would only go let's say 15 feet was the max or 16 or 17 or 20 and he's got a ledge with fish in 25 maybe 30. you know drill a hole let the bait sink who cares if you lose them he gets unlimited quantities <laughs> of five you know gets that break one off tie another one on you know and, yeah, and right. the viewers are none the wiser i would love to like True. get a slow motion replay and it probably wasn't time where, you know, there was a live camera in his boat looking at his every move. But, you know, along the way, you'd see pros palm and throw it over the side real quick. You always wonder what are they hiding? 
But uh, wouldn't it be cool if like, you could see a slow motion of the crankbait with a hole right in the throat? You're like, oh, that rascal, what's he doing? You know, or how about off the phone, man, throwing that swim jig with a blade? Juice Newton was telling me about it. I didn't watch that MLF deal, but uh, yeah, he put a, he put a, bla it's a bladed swim jig, not like an underspin, but on the top. And Juice been playing around with some stuff, but it won't be like out a chatterbait. Not at all. No, there was a oh. Santone Lures made. Um, uh, in fact, if you go back even further, I can't remember the company name, but it was a jig that had a piece of flexible wire, like like cable, like braided cable, and it had a, a blade with a rattle in the blade. Funky, man. And it's like behind the weed guard. Um, wow. So Ott, in, in his recent win, was throwing a bladed swim jig, but not an underspit bladed swim jig. So it's, the blade's not under the bait. It's on top of the bait. Very much like this Santone Lures... Um, I forget what it's called, the truth or the deal. I've got a couple in the bass lab. I threw it. I experimented with it. I didn't love it. I probably should have stuck with it more, but the blade was much bigger. I was throwing smaller blades. So, you know, kind of like the concept of throwing a bladed, you know, tail bladed Senko, you know, post spawn. Mm -hmm. pretty, can be pretty deadly for the fry garters in particular, which I can't believe I didn't try with a five inch Senko. I don't know that would have made a difference. It was a dead stick deal, but. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting, man, to see how people hack stuff up. And Ott's in his garage again, man. Rapala couldn't get it right, so it's about two years off before it comes to market, apparently. I don't know. Gotcha. gotcha. James was telling me this, so we'll see. Yeah, he was on Bass yeah. talking about it, I think. I think All it was right. Bass yep. Yeah. What you got, a milkshake? Coffee. Ah. Well, listen, guys, we got a lot of good good stuff. I see I see Tom. Um, oh, I, I keep I – keep, giving the surprise away we got we got to talk about we got to show the video premiere here coming up and then we're going to get into it we're going to bring a couple guests on shortly after that rick thanks again for coming on tonight yeah, i will see you at the classic yeah looking you forward got it, to it dude right yeah looking forward to it I'm excited about that one that's Have gonna fun, be great man. Keep and listen by the way last good. time Make rick it, was on last time rick was on we had we had first of all we were hanging out with roland martin we had technical issues we had to leave to get power right to the computer and Tom knee took over the host and he did an amazing job while we great. disappeared. He did, a great job. he did a great job. So first of all, thanks for Tom for covering. I think he's shooting for my spot, man. <laughs> oh, I thought he was gunning for mine. You're solid, I don't know. Man. It's your show, dude. You can't be fired. <laughs> you can't fire yourself. Well, I guess you could. I could, but I could. why would you, right? Yeah. Well, you never know. Yeah, the star, yeah. bro. You know. <laughs> All right. All right, Rick. Take All care, guys. buddy. We'll talk yeah. to you soon. Thank we'll you. Rick, we'll see you man. Peace, All right. All right. Bye. Awesome. Thanks. Cool. Cool, man. It's always good talking with Rick. Guys, listen, Monster Bass, it is the deal. Monthly box ba bleh, ba ba bag subscription. Do you uh, say that over there? I did. They come in a bag now. A reusable bag. And you guys are actually going to be able to win this bag uh, with your super chat donations for every right. dollar. You get entered. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff. We got Berkeley Power, Max, Max, whatever they call them, Max Sense. Max Sense. We got some buffs. We got all that. Before we go any further, we're going to do the video premiere, first time ever on a live, where we premiere a video. I was going to put out naturally, but I thought, why not? This just works, and we're going to kind of talk a little bit about the, uh, the Ike Foundation tournament that we fished, and we're going to actually walk you through a little bit of practice as well as the event. And if you listen closely, you might hear some funny banter between Eric and myself. So let's get into that. You ready, Brohim? Dude, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready too. To do this thing, man. All right. Yo, what's up, Home Skillet? Smallmouth Crush. Hanging out on the Chesapeake Bay. The big Ike home tournament. Skillet. You, you said that. Fishing with Epic Eric, he's somewhere in the background doing what he does. We're going to go head out, see if we can find a few fish. It's late afternoon, low tide, perfect timing. Just one day of practice? Come on. I've been out all week except for yesterday. Well, I went yesterday, but someone ditched me on a guide trip because they were afraid of 50% thunderstorms. So I lost some income. It's not like it's not like the government sends me my relief money because you missed a trip. I'm just looking for right now. Anyways, I did catch a few yesterday, and therefore, 
I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about tomorrow. Travis, was this when you were practicing on the 50% chance of storm? Yeah, that morning. How many fish did you catch? About 20. Why would you do that on Thursday? Before I was bouncing around, Saturday? Randy. Just well, watch the show. To start off the morning. Oh, my God. You never told me that. I'm actually going to take today as an opportunity to practice for an upcoming tournament in two days. And I'm fishing grass, deeper grass, and slowing it down with finesse baits. So I'm going to bounce around a little bit and try to put together a pattern. And you guys are going to hang out with me today. Rain or shine. Hmm. That's one we could have used in the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> what you got to money? When did you realize you like had a pattern going? You just leave them alone. Go fish hard. I bounced it around, bro. Them. I was trying to hit Tom Nee spots. Now you bounce around on my brain. Oh my god! I can't Come believe on. we're in a What are you moving in for the week? <laughs> Why do you have, it's kind of windy out, bro. What time's that? We were gonna go low tide looking for some betters, but it might be a little too breezy out there. Yeah, I think so. That'd be cool to see a late night better. No, we're not staying out late. <laughs> no, in a couple hours, we're going to see how crashed the place is. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. A late season better. That would be really cool. That'd be first. Why? Why? I'm trying to make a wind blocker. I don't know if this is going to work. So we're out here practicing. We caught one little fish. Seems like the flats are going to be really tough. Premonition, Maybe Travis. We haven't committed to the flats just yet, but I think we are. We're going to probably form a game plan tonight. we got a big thunderstorm coming, but we just might miss us barely. Eric seems to be going quite fast on the trolling motor in the opposite direction. There it is behind me. It's not really moving. <laughs> right over us. It doesn't want to move. Uh -uh. There's a sign, Travis. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I needed to get my groove on. We survived the storm. Evan. We survived the storm, and it's a healthy fish. It's not going to win you a boat. No. <laughs> but no, it probably would have five of those. Trying. That's not win practice. Right. Three eight. Right. So we had another storm come through. It's getting late. Uh, we decided to stay down here this evening. Yeah. So sleep right here under cover. Not under here, but there's a storm coming. Oh, it's no, gonna down here. We're gonna rig up right now. This is how you become one with the fish, bro. I'll tell you how you become one with the fish. Talk to me. Jeez. I don't know, but look at that storm. So no, it looks no, beautiful no. out here. It, it was a really nice day. But we got some bats in the belfry here. We got some nasties coming. Oh yeah, man. The storm popped up quick. Right, we got a good hour ready, dude. So let's get the let's morning. do it. Let's do it. That was the best move of the two days. That's right. <laughs> Just getting things ready. Oh, here's the best part, the hotel scene. <laughs> we made her to our destination. Oh, for evening. oh I'm sorry. I'm what sorry about the light, the bro. Just... Hell? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it's 10 o'clock. We had a, the nastiest dinner at the Naughty Goose. <laughs> oh, that hurts. Uh, dude, I've never had a good meal at the Naughty Goose. They messed up our meal four times. He's not too picky, everybody. I mean, there's one thing about Manson Child. He I said no tomatoes. Manson Child, you need it just right. I said it would be a miracle if she got the order right, <laughs> and I predicted it proper. He got nothing he requested. That's right. <laughs> there was like seven And I said, we're not going picky. there again. This is dumb. I the know. The place sucks, dude. Dude, I was just The food some... sucks, and the service it sucks. It was in honor of Uncle Bill, man. Uncle Bill, man. May God rest your soul. That's he would have right. been happy that we were at the Naughty Goose tonight. Okay. That's why I wanted to go. It was a sentimental. You thing. didn't. Yeah, I told you about it. Right, we got to get up in four hours. We got to go. Let's go. We got to. I got to go. We'll I got to go. We got to go.
what the hell is this, bro? Dude, everything was sold out in the area, man, because we waited last minute this freaking I got a couch. Yeah, no, I'm sleeping on the couch, man. I'll sleep on the couch, bro. It's really okay. You <laughs> sit together. You're talking on the bed. There's no way that's happening. Why not? You want to cuddle with me? A team that fishes together. <laughs> I don't sleep together. Dude. I'm sure you've seen my wiener off the back of the boat. Oh my oh god. My god. What? what? What in the what? hell? Are you afraid right. of wieners? No. Eric's afraid of the wieners. Oh, I'm not losing. You officially have I'm, lost it. What? Point. You're afraid of wieners. Admit no, it. No, dude, not at all. Well, <laughs> you see one wiener, you've seen them all. It's very true. Okay. Very true. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are we gonna is this gonna make the video? It just might. I sure hope not. <laughs> Good night. Man, I, Eric, you're getting ready for bed. Eric pulls up. You're a grown man. You don't get ready for bed. You you get ready for bed when you're 12 or eight <laughs> or six. You're a grown man. Now. I look at him. Come on. He pulls the couch out. This is the and he starts putting this blanket on it. I'm not gonna sleep on that. I said just lay on it and throw a blanket on well, you. Why you go, go, ahead, he goes, go ahead. I'll get in that nice And he goes, Oh, help me. Come on. Come help on. Me. Come on. Come you on. go, I'll help me make the bed. Lay on that, Mr. Germaphobe. Come on. Dude, this is work. Do you know how much? Uh, seriously, sure. now what are you going to tell me? What kind of crazy factoid are you going to come out Let's with? Put it on there. You've never even done this, have you? I'm, I'm making a bed for a grown man. <laughs> you said you're getting ready for bed. You're what are you, six? Get, I'm getting ready for bed. I'm getting yeah, ready. meaning I want to. I'm getting ready for bed. Well, you want to read me a story? Uh, I don't think so. Would that be funny? Oh my God, you're out of control. Do you have any storybooks? So you're going to help me do the sheet? All I need you to do is work your worm right tomorrow, bro. Bro. I got it. I'm dialed in, man. Right. Dialed I'm in. really excited for tomorrow because the weights today in that tournament were down. So there was a tournament on the Chesapeake today. Yep. Uh, twenty pounds won. Legend. Sixty boats of the or forty or sixty, whatever. Yep. Johnny V took like seventh or eighth. Eighth, I think. With, you said. with seventeen pounds. Seventeen pounds. He should be able to do that from the shore with his eyes closed. Johnny yeah. Johnny from the shore. Stick. But <laughs> he obviously can't catch him. Post-spawn blues, bro. <laughs> I know. That's what you keep saying. That's what it is, man. But you call it pre-spawner today. I'm not saying it's all post-spawn. There may be some stragglers. It's late, man. This is the last wave of fish. The big wave's gone. Anyways, so far, the only thing I learned this weekend was is don't go to the Naughty Goose. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure when you book rooms, you book them in advance. Well in advance. And get two beds. Exactly. This room was three hundred and ten dollars. It was not. Pretty close. No. <laughs> the Holly Inn was. I scored it for one ninety five. Oh, jeez. Thank one, you, La Quinta. With one bed. La Quinta Inn. Queen La Quinta. Anyways, La Quinta Inn. Yeah, well, thanks, bro. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. All right. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Oh, it's not over yet. Oh my God. Yeah, that's how I. This is how I get ready for bed. It's not because I'm 10. There it is. I take my flip flops off and I crawl in under the blankets. <laughs> Travis is drunk. <laughs> like four Tito's into it. Anyways. Hey, you gonna need those blankets, man? Are you going to turn the TV on now? Totally. You're going to have the TV on tonight. You always do. Just a little bit, man. We'll put to sleep. All right? he does is he watch, he puts CNN on. <laughs> Shut up, you know I'm a movie guy. <laughs> yeah, you'll put Coming to America or whatever that show is. <laughs> what is it? Coming to America. That Eddie Murphy thing. Okay, I liked it. I liked it. It was funny. I had to listen to Coming to America no, all were, night long when I was trying to there sleep. There was actually a couple good scenes that I liked. Okay. Yeah. The one in the barbershop in particular. Okay. <laughs> Later. Later. Go, man. Let's up, go, guys? Monster Bass. There's Red. defending team from last year. That's right. Father, son. That, nice color this year. And that Silver, was Father's Day weekend. Red trim. Oh, the right. cat. Now you're going to have to call him Bass Cat Tomney, not 12 Count Tomney, right. bro. Nah. He sold that boat. Had you. a hard time. But doesn't matter. Great boat, just the wrong color. You wish oh, you had purple it. purple one? Oh, yeah. That, that, was, that, was, that was the brightest purple I've ever Here we are. Good morning. We're getting ready. Eric's ready to go. Got your worms all greased up. We're both 50 something. 47, and, and I to told in you in the truck. 230. 240. I you should have read it on time. my hand, but already. In this your is hand, what my too. job is for. You this is just ridiculous. take us to the fish. All right. The you live out here. You got the flow. Don't stress, dude. Don't stress. It'll all be all right.
<laughs> When's the mic fly off, Travis? Does that count? I don't himself? know. In the audio? No. no. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, man. I, I got you. Okay, I'll, Will Brown, right? All right, cool, man. Johnny D! <laughs> What's good, brother? Morning, Frank! <laughs> Those bonus fish, right? Need those bonus five dollars. You need a bonus three. <laughs> Travis, I caught the first fish. What are you doing? I don't think it. This, this is where you suck, man. Oh, jeez. Is this you do the editing? Is this, a, is this a little one? This better not it's be a, a keeper. One. Okay, it's a little one. You did catch the first. Yeah, Tom one. needs in the background jacking on him right now. Oh, yeah, I know. I can see him. There he is. Nice. Dude. Travis, you, you hesitated on the net. How come? You got the party started. That was a shake stop. I want you to rewind that for a second. Watch well, Travis. I've never okay. seen him hesitate. Why did you hesitate? There he is. Good. <laughs> you got the party started. That was a shake stop. Hey, this is Travis Bay. He recommended that I throw, man. So I got us one of our five. I don't I hope you don't make it to the way in. But there's one. <laughs> We're gonna have to grab a couple more bass real quick. Man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> many times, many times. Don't start to panic. Like four yet. more. Huh? There he is. Well, there he's got I was really slow on the net, Travis. That's the world's biggest bass. Jimmy Big Time Bates to the rescue. Nico to Frico Rig, second cast. Is that a quick? I don't know. Jimmy Big Time Bates, get yourself some. I hope we call this one out too. But anyway, it's a fish. Travis, I was counting on you for all five big ones, man. I thought you were going to do it. Me too. I did. You were dialed, man. Yeah. You came back though. What time is this, by the way? Yeah. Were you catching the first keeper? That was like twelve. Figure something out. Oh, that was a little one. Yeah. Might have figured. I thought it was your first keeper. When the did game you catch here? your first keeper? About. Right here. Like. Noon. Giant. It wasn't the one. That's, that's oh, how I head. do it. <laughs> I take it. Yes. Yes. Do what you do. Do what you do. Do what you do. Yeah. <laughs> they got beat up yesterday. The legends took them to them, man. I'm only human after all. <laughs> I'm not a vampire after all. Let me go to sleep. Oh my God. He was losing it, dude. You were We were having fun. We had fun. You were spinning we were having fun. Fun. Is this the 25th time we took off or the third? I don't know. We we're ran, struggling dude. right now, bro. We're oh, just dude. barreling through the pack of boats. I don't care at this point. I dared him to drive through the middle of the best ditch on the flats and go, you bunch of ditch monkeys. <laughs> you did. not do it. I go, you ditch monkeys, get out of my way. <laughs> you wouldn't do it, though. You were so. close. I bet you were this close to doing it. Is that a crap? What is that? Oh, you hesitated. Because you told me something. What are you doing? Oh, what, what was that? You, you like absolutely a, like air landed crazy. fish. What land was that, dude? I'm only human after all. 
We're having a good day. For you after all. Big TRD. Nah. Oh, big, the big. Big's back in. That's two fish on the big. Man, we are just busting, busting them up, them up today. today. Woo! Go, Travis! <laughs> Boy, do we suck. Oh, dude, that's the fourth one. Seven you minutes hear, to You go. can hear Tom Nee scream if you listen in the background. Yeah. I'm listening. Look, look at that net job. <laughs> He's just yanking him in. <laughs> What's up with that, man? <laughs> we got to go. We got to go. Look at Travis caught three, just like I predicted. He pulled it out, folks. I mean, it's nothing to write. All right, guys, we flat out suck today, but we're going to weigh these in because that's what we do. That's right. We don't just toss our bag over the side of the boat. We take it like a man, Travis like JV new, would. Travis's new nickname is 12-pound Travis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, rumor has it, Tom Nee might be might be might winning be this tournament again. We'll see. Could he do it back to back? We're going to find out. I don't know, man. So, Travis, man, you've been out here for several weeks guiding. You had a tough morning. JV, we just had, we just could not catch any. I mean, I mean that's, that, that's just it. That's the only good one. <laughs> that's the only good one, man. <laughs> Travis came through at the end and caught his third and final. I was counting on Travis to catch all five bigs today for me. It did not happen. I let off the party with a nice one. Second one. Uh, we tried. Lost a little pip squeak. Oh, what do you got there? 14? 14, 14 pounds. He's calling it. All right, man. 30, 45th place. Okay. He called hey, it. Hey, what do we come in, Travis? Bro, you gonna have to. I just need a I, I need to be able to grasp it. Uh, clearly. How much water did you put in there? Not enough. 14 pounds of water? <laughs> <laughs> it was like a 28 pound bag. All right, let's go see what we got. What's the problem? Everybody I saw catching them yep. good at their poles down. Mm. And at their poles down, and they were sitting down. And now moving. They were dialed. So that was the problem. Well, we suck today. Oh, yeah. I don't know, 13 pounds, bro. That's right. That's all we had. going to be the lowest bag of the day ever. <laughs> <laughs> How does JV do it? I don't know, bro. Come on, JV. That takes some balls. Nobody touches my bag. Nobody. <laughs> JV. That's. Then it's on you. JV just hands his fish off to some random this on the dock. I'm going to keep the camera rolling for this one. Yo, bro, I'm out, but good job. For real. Everybody help Johnny V on the dock. Come on, guys. Help him out. <laughs> right? Right? Oh, 13. 13. What'd you have? Right? Good job, bro. Dude, well, we were around the 17. Got to do it all over again tomorrow on the guide trip. Oh, you're, <laughs> you're thinking about games on that. That's right. You can guide with me. <laughs> I caught three fish all day long. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> rumor has you got a good bag. Got a good bag. I'm proud of you, dude. Me too, man. And so. But we had 12 pounds. Now he's 12 pound Travis and you. Yeah, we've been saying it all day since he hooted and holler passes. I don't think 12 pound Tom Nee is 12 pound Tom Nee anymore. And I'm going to let you guys decide because we're actually going to be bringing them on in moments on the live show. And we're, we'll figure this out <laughs> once and for all. Well, I think it's about that time to figure out if we need to keep calling 12 pound Tom Nee, 12 pound Tom Nee. I think you already said you're not. I'm not. <laughs> Tom, I'm not doing it. That's all right, man. No, you, bro. You can, this is my name, man. This you can't just steal my name. <laughs> Listen, I earned that. Travis, man, it's, it's trading a lot places, of twelve bro. pound bags I had to earn before uh, I got that name. <laughs> Dang, bro. Listen, I honestly, 
you had a good bag. Like you had you. I want you to tell us yeah. about the whole situation because I know it was really disappointing. You didn't lose by much at all, right? I mean, yeah. No, 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 no. We 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 actually uh, we were short 0.9 of a pound, but uh, we fell down to sixth place. Um, but before I get into that, man, I, Eric, I just got to let you know, man, I'm I'm a little scared of wieners too, man. <laughs> just, uh, uh, I just had to get that in there, man. Like he was weird, man. Uh, it got, it he, got weird I, in the hotel. I was seriously worried about the dude, man. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I was just having a conversation. Um, but a weird. Dude, that was awesome. We yeah. could take it in many different places, you know, tournament talk, strategy, practice. But you went straight to the wiener, dude. It makes me wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen, I appreciate you guys showing that video. I mean, that was probably some of the most authentic, real experience that one could ever have hanging out with you two. Um, mm -hmm. It is complete banter all the time, and I only get to experience it once in a while. So that I, I actually really enjoyed that video. I hope everybody cool. else did, too. Thank it, you. Thank you. It, it's so fun, man. before you explain the actual tournament and kind of, you know, what you did, the results, because you were really close. I mean, you won – this tournament last year, for, for you guys that don't know, Tom actually won the event with a mega bag um, and almost backed it up again. And we we give him shit because, first of all, 12-pound Tom, he just sounds cool. But he does catch fish, okay? He's he's part of the Smallmouth Crush team, for Christ's sakes. We travel all over the country fishing big-ass tournaments, taking 89th place on the James River. I mean, we're a team to fear, okay? And, you know, I don't know where I'm going with this. All I know is before we talk about that, we got to bring your dad on because we do. Yes. he's a big part of this. So let's uh, welcome. I love it. John, come on. John, man, come awesome. on. What's up, Brodus? Wow. Eric, the man. That was John, fun. man. I'm stoked, man. I only had to win this tournament twice for to get on this show. Last year, you <laughs> And I had all the fish. <laughs> nice guy. <laughs> that Travis Manson, I ought to, huh? Oh, man. It's all good. No, I was super excited for you. I, I thought you had a legit shot again. And especially the, the way. Boat, Travis, I was already buying the boat, man. I'm like, I know. Anybody the else, man. I want, I, want it, I want it up at Deep Creek, man. So here's, here's, here's what I knew. I didn't know how he did. I knew he was very confident in the morning. And I felt like he was somewhat dialed in, but when we were out there fishing, Eric, we were, um, we were out kind of by the main group of boats and here comes this wild ranger yeah. Yeah. just crashing through the crowd, burning up everyone's grass and he's hooting and hollering and beeping the horn. I'm like, that was Tom. Yeah. He's in a really good mood right now. Yeah. That dude caught him. And, I'm like, heavy. and then we were all happy for you. And I'm like, Eric, it's not over yet. We got two hours. We can do this with one fish in the live well. We can That's do right. this. That's right. And uh, so we fish. We finally get our fifth. And you actually, while we were, before I got my fifth fish, I saw, and no, I have a hard time. Our fifth fish. I have a hard time. He uh, has no, that wee problem. I see that. I know. <laughs> I don't know the boats that are around me a lot of times. And I, I didn't know that was you out a couple hundred yards from me. And you who didn't holler. I'm, first of all, I was looking the other way. I go, I couldn't really quite hear. I go, Eric, what's that dude's problem? Because I thought you were pissed off, like you lost one. And then, and then you started screaming in excitement. And Eric's like, I think he said, done. like, that's how it's done. I you go, that's, that's Tom. I go, is that Tom? It was. He goes, yeah, it looks like Tom. I go, that's freaking Tom over there. I go, dudes want it. I go, guys want it. He he did it again. I have no idea how. What a crazy day. We suck, and I was getting my head, and I got my fifth bite, and then you you gave a hoot out to me because I think you saw me flip that in, and never then give up, and then you were like, "That dude never Travis ain't calling. He's struggling, you know, he's struggling." Yeah, that, so then that, that wasn't a big fish that you you pulled in at the end there, and I, I saw you throw in the box and pull the trolling motor up, and I looked at the clock and I was like, "Ooh, he just caught his fifth. <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta you go. Do I gotta realize? go." Do you realize the positions of them boats were in the same spot as last year at the end of the tournament? Really? Crazy. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, Travis, the, the crowd is saying you have to address uh, Tommy Sr. 
as 24 pound Tom Sr. Ah. Yeah. So please properly yes. reintroduce. Welcome, 24 pound. <laughs> Tom, Tom, me senior. Yes, thank you. John. Yeah, give them the, John. John. Johnny. Sorry. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny senior. senior. Yeah. yeah. They typed it wrong in the comments. I was just repeating. But we used to call so, him Tommy John when he was younger. So I like that. <laughs> That's his middle name. Oh, nice. Tommy John. All right. So listen. Tommy John. You tr yep. Travis, I think yes. I think it probably makes some sense for us to kind of talk to you a little bit about what we shared with you last year. And maybe this will sound a little bit more familiar with how we did pretty well again on the flats right around this time again with, by the way, the same exact tide, the same exact wind. Like this couldn't have set up better for us because we just fished this event a year ago with the same baits, the same tide, the same boat positioning. The same wind. The only thing different is that it didn't rain. That's what so, we're missing. Travis, did that was you it. actually take notes on what they told you? <laughs> yeah. Yes, and I bought a bunch of stuff. <laughs> but, based off I of did all, but, but he didn't throw but, it. I, you didn't throw it. And I, I think this is the, for me, I mean, I, I, I've i got a, I had an epiphany, and I, I know you did too. I think the any randy can win in the grass i hope you figured out that that's not true anymore that there is actually technique and skill and knowledge and thought on how you do it in the grass and it's not luck because one more bite or a half pound and they Ooh. have another boat it's crazy and it's not luck and it's not any randy it's tom and john sitting here on your show again talking about how they almost <laughs> did it again so I think you got to kind of say it. Not any Randy can win in the grass. Say it. We're I agree. Waiting. And as as I was pulling the boat out, I said to Eric, you know, sometimes I I I, I talk shit and say some stupid stuff, and uh, I said that was wrong of me for saying that. You were there. <laughs> you guys didn't hear this. Made it was it Eric and I. And yeah, I didn't man, even, he, he, was he wasn't serious. drilling me. He wasn't drilling no. me to be like, Travis, I just went up to him and said that. Yeah, no, I, and, and, I, look, man, before I say anything else, and I'll tell you about my epiphany, I thought you had a good game plan. I thought you stuck to your guns. You'd been getting bigger bites on a bigger bait. Absolutely had, you dialed in the areas where you caught fish guiding. It was cherry grass. There's no question about it. And I think we fished over fish too fast. And that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all it is. You nailed it. You nailed it's, that last it's, line. If you keep saying to yourself when you're bass fishing, how do they want the bait presented? Depth, speed, and cadence. This was a, you were at the right depth. You probably, we didn't have the cadence right. You know, we were, we're looking for that reaction bite, snapping that bigger bait out of grass. And that can trigger bites. We all know that, right? That's, that's a chatterbait bite. You can trigger them that way with a swim jig. And I'm not asking for any John and Tom secrets. I'm just talking about depth, speed, and cadence. And so I'm looking at this grass where Travis got us in front of. Sometimes we're floating by really quick, and sometimes he's on the trolley motor, and sometimes he is powered. He's power pulled down. And I'm looking at it going, there has to be a limit in here. And throughout the day, I probably sit three or four times with Travis. The only thing we haven't done, because we abandoned the big baits, even though I caught one, the first fish came on that bigger bait, presented slowly. And then Travis started to do his finesse thing. And he's, he's one of the best finesse fishermen I know. But the only thing we didn't do was dead stick. The only thing we didn't do was do a different cadence and slow our speed of our retrieves down enough mm -hmm. to trigger bites. Crazy, man that close and who knows what we would have weighed in it might not have been any better than 12 6. you know we fished clean except for that little fish week i lost right we landed every fish that bit yeah crazy All but it's them. a great lesson it's a great lesson yes so walk me through your day guys cool hey thanks for asking yeah didn't never was wondering why you brought us on the show 
<laughs> I'm just hang out in the uh, in the green room for 45 minutes. So I love it to get the wiener video out. So yeah, I appreciate it. Hopefully, we can talk some fishing. Yes. So Hold on, guys. early in the morning. Up. I'm listening, Tom. Okay. Well, you're you're probably the only one that's going to be listening. <laughs> because you went over so, this last year no i'm taking notes. that's exactly right so top of the tide this is the key thing you know i ch i shared with you before uh before the show travis i only practiced for high tide wow i know fish eat at low tide so i wanted to practice at high tide knowing the morning was going to be high tide i think it was like a 7 30 high tide out on the flats and uh, I, I practiced for three hours before this event. That was it. Fascinating, man. And here's exactly what I did. I tied on the same green pumpkin Senko, Texas rigged. And I went out there and I was very thoughtful about where I was casting that green pumpkin Senko. It had to be in milfoil and it had to be with a sandy bottom near a sandbar and it had to be touching the grass. And when you could get that bait slow enough, like Eric was saying, on that grass, and the fish were there, they would eat it. They'd pick it up and walk away with it. And in practice for three hours, I, 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 I'm not kidding, I haven't been on the flat since before the James. I had some grass marked out there that's been there for years. I looked at every piece of grass and I was looking for the highest stalks, the highest, thickest grass that I could find. And I was remarking it. And before my dad went out to practice, I think a couple of days later, I said, dude, two boats. When you find that grass, I want you to mark it with a different, a different uh, character, something different, like not a, not a piece of grass, not a red mark, not like put it like a tree on it or something. Because when, when you share those marks with me, we're going to hit that grass only at high tide. And we put enough of those pieces together over a couple hours of high tide practice. And when, I mean, dad, you went out there. I mean, what happened when you went out there with that pattern in practice? High the, tide. Same, the exact same thing. I mean, we were you working wrecked from, them. from, what's that? You wrecked them, right? Wrecked them. I mean, it was nonstop. I was going back to back. Both started pulling up. I pulled the poles and drifted out of where I was. Smart. You know, I just drifted off. And they called it like walking a dog last night. You go over here and they all follow you. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> man. I used to, I used to, I used to coach a uh, little, you know, uh, Pee Wee football and I ran a DC young coach, uh, Delaware wing T and the job of the defense the end, my split end was to take the defensive end for a walk. And if you yeah. give you three yards, take him take five. It. And I'd yep. run through that hole all day long. I'm like, that guy is your dog. Just cheat a little bit out. Keep go. going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, man, what a brilliant strategy. I love it. It's a good analogy, man. That's awesome. Walk that dog, man. Oh, yeah. Walk the dog. Nice. So you guys want to know that that Senko uh, Texas rig, was there a weight or weightless? Weightless. Okay. I mean, it's uber finesse. Yeah. I mean, it, you really wanted to just – you wanted the bait to be in the right position, which is – it. Uh, the Garmin live scope had to tell me where the grass was. You couldn't see it at high tide. Yep. So yeah, those electronics are pretty helpful. I'm not looking for fish. I'm looking for grass stalks. And when you could get that bait 15, 20 feet out there into that grass, you were getting bit. And uh, so once I knew I could catch them on high tide, you know, we, you know, we were notorious for throwing that swim jig at low tide. And that was, you know, yeah, the Senkos could put fish in the boat, but the biggest fish came on the swim jig. And, mm. you know, my dad caught the biggest fish of the day right out of the gate on the swim jig. Travis had it tied on. Travis, you said you haven't caught a fish on it all year. Well, it's early. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it usually picks up around Father's Day, which is another week. Yeah. Oh, that swim jig is deadly, man. One of my favorites on but, the Bro Tomac. Mm. So, Eric, like your swim jig that you described a year and a half ago 
that I stole from you <laughs> and totally, I mean, we have the same exact setup. I don't know what reel you, you probably have a more expensive reel than I do, but it's the 853 uh, yep. G Loomis. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. G Loomis NRX 853. Yep. Um, we're throwing that on Sunline 14 pound. Yep. Uh, dirty jigs, finesse jig. Yep. Black and blue. Yep. Um, with the chigger crawl in the back, green pumpkin yep. chigger crawl. So it's, yep. you mix and match it. Oh, yeah. And it's just works. Money. It just works out there. Is there a um, better but I will one? Say this. I mean, on the Potomac, uh, it's the same story, man. It's that color is just or something about that black, blue. And a lot of people won't throw green pumpkin on the back of it. They might want black and blue, sapphire blue. I just love that. It speaks bluegill to me or crawfish. Supernatural. I mean, I, I just know I, I know Eric speaked it, so that's why I tied it on. And it it, it really works. You're not going to get 15 bites on that bait. All you could, you could, but when it's it, hot, it, sure. It, it's it truly for whatever reason it is a big fish bait. And I mean, think I, about I, think I about the jig, think about the jig overall as a big fish bite bait. Jigs in dock, jigs in trees, jigs on rocks. I mean, some of your biggest fish come on jigs, and so you're employing a bigger fish bait in the grass, right? And so um, it, it just it absolutely makes sense. It Ooh. absolutely makes sense to me. And my epiphany is I have stopped thinking for myself as a bass fisherman. As crazy as that sounds to admit it tonight, I'm saying it. And, um, you know, I fish with really very, very, very strong fishermen. I mean, Travis is a guide. Um, you know, it's his living. He's a YouTuber. Uh, you know, he's out on the water five times as much as I am any given year. Scooter Lily, another team partner. Everybody I fish with fishes 10 times more than I do. I know it feels to people that are watching like I fish a lot, but I literally stopped fishing for fun where I'd think for myself and I'm only geared towards tournaments. And so I'm down south with Scooter and he's wired because he's those are his waters. So I, and I do throw things that I want to throw. Don't get me wrong, but I've stopped using my head and i'm really you're pissed following at myself. the lead you know what i'm, I'm mad at me because i felt like travis put a great game plan together i really did i feel like he had areas that i knew held fish and my bass instincts were telling me the only thing we haven't done is dead stick let's put the poles down and stop but i didn't insist because mm -hmm. He's out there, and I should respect that. No, no, you should have said something, brain. Eric. No, no, that's not what a team does. You should have no, said and, something. And, and, and listen, I would have probably, it yeah. would have clicked for me. Listen, we were in that same area today on the guy trip and busted them up good. And guess yeah. what we caught them on? Yeah. Exactly what Tom was saying. Yeah. And last well, year, and last year, the Cinco was one of the top producers for me. And I got it in my head. I just felt like I had other baits have been working very well for me. And I wanted to get away from that because I just felt everyone was throwing these stupid things out there. And so doesn't that's matter. what <laughs> I know it doesn't matter, but it honestly does. Looking it's back at the presentation, right? I mean, we were, we were in the right. Training. Yes, we were absolutely in the right area. No doubt. It just didn't air, happen. Air, areas. And man, I mean, I think I told you at the end of the day or like close to it. I'm like, man, you're fishing fast, dude. I mean, there were moments where I knew I wasn't presenting the bait correctly. Because I'm like, there's just no way I can present a finesse plastic slowly enough when you're on the trolling <laughs> motor and the wind's driving us. I'm like, what are we doing? You know, mm -hmm. I, I, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't use my brain. I didn't use, I didn't insist. Turn the troll the motor down. <laughs> yeah, just stop. Yeah, you yeah. know, but but that's that's on me, man. I mean, we're a team. I mean, you well, know, I'll tell you, I, I I do want to make another point here, guys. So, guiding out there every day prior to Memorial Day weekend, you know, there was a full moon, and that last group of fish. Well, not saying the last group, but the majority of those fish that wanted to spawn because the grass is finally right on the flats, wanted to do it that probably that weekend. And we had that massive cold front up here, 40 degree nights. And yep. so my guide trip on Monday, or I'm sorry, Tuesday, where it sort of warmed up was tough. The bite from Wednesday 
Thursday to that following day after that cold front, that severe cold front, I believe really messed these fish up this week. And I think today we're finally starting to see a little recovery from that a week away based on my experience out there every day. Yeah, but that, I mean, obviously a cold front's going to knock those grass fish down. The hard cover fish will probably bite. I mean, the flats got trashed a week before this tournament. I think there were like 15 mile an hour, 20 mile an hour winds muddying up the grass. I don't know about anybody else on the show, but you know, if I'm on grass fish, man, it's over. You get 20, 15 mile an hour winds and it muddies it up in colder weather. When it's starting to warm, those fish go negative super fast. You're cooked out there. You better have a backup pattern. The backup pattern would be the Northeast hard cover, right? And so, um, you know, hey, shout out to Mike Powers. He's a viewer, man. He came in fourth in this tournament. I and, fished uh, with a, him last year. Yeah, and a Great week before. He dude, had, cut, he had a, dude catches him. He had a club tournament, man, and he asked me my opinion, whether he should go to the flats. I'm like, no, bro, they're done. Stick stick on hard cover and keep a drop shot in your hand. He took first, so. He's a good. He's a good student of the game, man. He's got game. He's got a good partner. So they're 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 feeling around. Fourth in the Susquehanna tournament too. So big boat wow. fields, man. He's got some momentum. So he's doing the job. He's listening. Hey, you got some people in the chat that are kind of talking a little bit about sizes and jigs and quarter ounce, three eighths, half ounce. Mm-hmm. Um, we were throwing three eighths. Yeah, and I'd... you know we just feel like it. It's a depending on the water column, whether it's you know two feet deep or you know, six feet deep, depending on the tide. Um, you, it just seems to be pretty versatile for us. We haven't really changed since. Um, Jamie Newton was asking about angles. I'm assuming he's talking about maybe boat positioning and, you know, well, you know how you're presenting that bait um, in a tidal circumstance. And I think that um, the, the, the key for us is the same every single time. It's you want to bring that bait off that sandbar in the same direction as the tide is pulling so in in this case the tide was coming out so in theory those fish are coming off that bar and they're going to stage in that mill foil so you want to bring that bait off of that bar through that mill foil and back to the boat in that same direction that the tide is coming out and um you know i I think we we picked up two key fish um right around low tide it might have been the snap of the tide it was really hard to time it with the wind direction we couldn't really see it. We started seeing the grass turn over a little bit. So we switched boat directions. And Travis, that's when you heard me screaming. I switched yeah. boat directions maybe 10 minutes before that and started presenting the bait the other way through that same section that we were fishing. And we picked up a key fish that culled, which you know I certainly thought it was a little bit bigger than it was. But um, yeah, I got pretty excited about that. And knowing that you were there within distance, I wanted to let you know <laughs> that I was feeling really good about my day. Bravo, man. Bravo. I want to was... just clarify when Tom is talking about the tide for people. And, and I think this is one of the keys for grass. What I've learned over the years, you know, grass, right? Obviously, thicker patches of milfoil, the taller milfoil. John made a really good point. Don't sleep on that, guys. The tallest, thickest milfoil will hold the biggest bass. If you can find patches, you will be amazed at the number of fish you can find in a, a, a milfoil patch the size of your boat or two boats. It's crazy. The Don't concentration. Pass them up. Do Don't not. Pass them up. It, it has more than you think. It's nuts. Um, number one. two, more current. If you see that grass really leaning hard, it's got more current. Bigger fish want that current as long as they've got a break. So if you see the tides going out and you know the tides really pulling, and your grass is kind of like that, and then you see an area where the grass is like this, that's the juice, and you've got thick grass. And think about edges, points. There are natural points to these milfoil beds. There's natural indentations. Don't sleep on it. Um, you know, the sand patches that you're talking about, you got to have breaks. They want some areas to feed. Grass fishing is an art. I've been really lucky to fish with, I think, some of the best grass fishermen on the Potomac. Um, You know, Bob Cherry, Richard Wader, he was a guide, worked for Potomac Guide Service, and Billy Kramer. And Bill Kramer, if he has a choice, he'll fish grass. And Bill has spent 40 years on the river reading grass. And it's amazing. It can be an odyssey to people, especially people that haven't fished tidal, because tidal, it's tide and time, and then miles of grass and it all looks the same but it's not um 
Yeah, so uh, Tom, you're figuring it out. It's pretty cool to listen to the story how you and John did it. Um, bravo, man. Bravo. Hey, yes. Yeah, so Dad, somebody's asking about throwing the jig, twitching the rod tip, straight retrieve. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned from this guy over here. So I'll let you answer that question. I mean, he's the one coaching me throughout the day. Like, awesome. dude, you gotta do this, that. So, you know, why don't you share with the share with the the group here? Actually, I don't know that he will. Yeah, <laughs> no, he will. I'm like a little bit, a lot. <laughs> nah, John. I mean, look, man. You know, it's it's honored that uh, you figure some things out. You tell what you feel comfortable with. I mean, listen, you know, use that three eighths because it won't it won't suck down in that grass deep. Okay, mm -hmm. she'll float up and she'll get maybe on top of it. And what you're actually doing is you're at a slow winch. Now, you see a lot of guys with their rod tips down. I almost have my rod tip in the water because I want that even parallel winch. You're going to run into the grass. Keep your winch going. Don't pop it. You just pass the fish. Hmm. You pop it, you just went over their head. They looked up and went, what was that? You just want a steady winch. It'll pop out, but, but it won't shoot three feet past it. That's when that hit's going to happen. It's there was a, um, I had a unique situation on the Potomac fishing deep mill foil with a tube. And uh, I'd get the tube hung up in the grass and literally just shake gently until I pulled it free in every single time. I think I got nine in about 30 minutes and my buddy couldn't get it. He's like popping it, cracking it. And uh, there are times where that reaction thing works, but right. post spawn. Mm -mm. And I think day in, day out on a swim jig, that steady retrieves gets the job done. I've seen that really snappy, poppy, crazy technique work and generate bites in different circumstances. But I think day in, day out, you got the secret sauce, man. Because you actually think about it, when that jig enters that grass and that fish is on the other side, he, he knows, knows it's there. something. Oh, he yeah. knows something just went in there. So he turns around, sets himself up for battle. You just got to bring and he'll watch it. He'll sit there and he'll know it's inside that grass and he's waiting for it to come out. Wouldn't that be cool to, 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 to watch an underwater, like have an underwater camera right. set up in a mill pool yeah. bed where you know there's some juicy fish and yeah. just watch what happens it would be real i mean i've seen a few you know cameras set up under docks where they were skipping jigs and right. seeing it happen bro kim strickler hook yeah. and look oh, hook hook and he's look, on bro. it hook he's on it well you know those mollies man they're they're I know. they eat anything i mean they're crazy listen what is first of all again congratulations you almost won the dang thing bummer because you were so jacked up you go in there and you find out like Someone beat you. Now you're in second. Now you're in third. Now you're in fourth. They only paid on five spots, right? Yeah. And like ounces. How many separated. ounces were you guys off the boat? Point nine. Right? Point nine of a pound. Nine. God, That's it was crazy. tight. All the weights were tight from uh, and, on down. And I broke one off, and I could, and it had to be at least a six pounder. Come on. Yeah, really. Who knows, dude? I never saw it. I just broke it off. Who knows? Right, dude, I just tell myself dude. that. How many dude. times you break off, you guys? I, I did that. I, I, I broke a fish off in my championship tournament with Scooter. We were second place after day one. It's a two-day on How curve. How long ago was that? How long ago? Uh, that was two weeks ago, man. I don't break and, off. And, I don't either. I yeah. lose them. I lose, you know, the hook falls out. And then I don't break this. off. Then I lost a six in front of me, like we saw the fish, and so I I, I can I, confirm I've it. Had, Eric breaks I've had a off. Rough patch, How? man. Just rookie stuff, man. Rookie no, is stuff. it not? Or Travis, you broke off in the James River. You're such a liar, man. I watched you break off on a video. Go watch your oh those crank that was crank Whatever, dude. I don't give a fuck, man. You break off. Shut up. <laughs> don't sell me any bullshit, bro. I've watched you break off, man. You're so full of it. That pisses me off. I Everybody rarely break off. off fish. Rarely fine. Okay, I broke a few fish off, but let okay. me tell you something. In that tournament, if you put more than one fish in, we would have won. Now what? Nope. And I took you to the spot where we caught the good fish. Both calls were mine. So, hey, you might want to blame me for not winning that tournament. I had the 6-3-3. Come on now.
I had three of our five. You had one. One. And it was a pip squeak. Hey, Charles, Charles Poling said the polymer knot is garbage on any clear lines. Oh, no, you that has something to do with it. You got to wet it and make sure it, you got to test it. That Apparently, line not, I, I watched the video that, on this. Go you ahead, can't John. twist that line. That's right. No twist. That's right. If you're starting to cinch it down and yes. you see it, stop. Cut it off. If, start over. If they cross over, too. I watched a guy do it perfectly, yeah. and he got the micro camera on, and I'm like, right. that was my issue when I got back into bass fishing. I came in second place in our club. I should have been Mr. Bass. And I was fishing way too light. I was fishing like eight-pound test on the Potomac, 10-pound test. But I, I know I generated more bites, so I'm risking the biscuit. But nonetheless, yeah. I was screwing up on my knot. Flat out. Bob Cherry caught me doing it. We're rigging for a turn. He goes, dude, what'd you just do? I'm like, what are you talking about? And he watched me tie the polymer, and I was putting a twist in the line. It held a lot yep. of the time, but it broke on me. So that's just rookie stuff. With tra the ones Travis referring to, I was on the wall in the marina. I made the call. I was dead sticking. I was doing weighted wacky, inchy wacky, trick worm. I caught a five. And then I threw back in without retying. And I know I was in gravel because I could feel it. Zoom fluorocarbon line. I didn't retie. So that's just rookie shit. I'll, I'll admit it. I'm a rookie when it comes to making dumb rookie mistakes. I get the bites, but, I mean, you got to fish clean. So whatever. Yeah, maybe your viewers have to understand that. You got after, after 15 minutes to a half hour, you got to grab the top of that line and run your finger down to that, to that bait. I don't do yeah. it near enough. I don't know if I, I do it during the day at all, John. I got to go back to bass school, bro. I'm straight up with you, man. I'm, that's a fact. I mean, I'm Tommy's not trapped. He set the I'm hook on this fish, and he took that NRX, and he he half-mooned it. And I looked over, I'm putting my rod down, and I hear, poing, and I'm going, that, that'll that cost us. Yeah. Mm. Maybe yeah. it was a catfish. I'm hoping it was a catfish. catfish. I mean, honestly, it's it's like I, I, I honestly what you just said running my finger down the line is as as simple as that sounds. I honestly can't remember. I think I did it maybe in a tournament last last year. That right. sounds crazy, right? That's just rookie stuff. Well, that I, if you're on the James and you're getting all that all that barnacle, and, uh, sure barnacles, but on the grass, yeah, not as much, but. That fluorocarbon, it takes a nick or, or a kink in that kink in that knot. And he yeah. he sets the hook. Let me tell you what, he sets the hook. And if you're on the edge of the boat in the back, I hope you're not that close because you might go in because he rocks the boat. He oh, so does Travis, man. Back. Travis what do you is violent on the hook set. Well, I just want to share with you guys one second here. This is this isn't gonna take long. <laughs> well, you went and oh. found the clip. Uh oh. <laughs> No, you got to show me catching all the fish. I don't want you to just show my fuck up. Watch this. He puts his hands on me. Good netting job. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the? That was like five times. <laughs> Look at Travis. He's all over me, man. Yeah, but. <laughs> Can you? Oh, man. That? I have no idea where that spot is. No, never seen that. I'm Travis. He's like, oh man. Oh. <laughs> oh. There you oh, go. That's, that's it happens. Sick. It's no, it doesn't just happen because that is I made a bad rookie mistake. I probably was using ten pound Tatsu as good as it is. Look, dude, I had that thing that's thick, and I was thrown against the wall. How is all, ta Tatsu? One of the best I've ever used. But anyway. I'm thrown against the wall. I know that inchy wacky hit that wall a couple times. And that's just ridiculous. I mean, for me to not think, and, and especially after catching a five, to not retie? I, I mean, it's as simple as it gets. It. Dude, I haven't it. caught a fish in that spot in three years, by the way. <laughs> that's so crazy. It's crazy how why. things change. It's crazy how things change on the on the Chesapeake every year. And you guys know this. I mean, ah, uh, Swan Creek, let's take that for it. And, you know, maybe we, maybe Tom, maybe we were down in Virginia, you know, during the peak there, but doesn't seem to be producing much this year for it's me. Crazy man. Right. Dude, listen, 
the, the upper bay has totally changed. Even the grass flats right now are totally different from a year ago. I mean, I am impressed with the amount of bass that were caught in this past tournament off that flat with the amount of boats that were on that. It's there was crazy. not a lot of, there was not a lot of key grass. Like right. when I tell you, like we fished two spots. We fished yeah. two spots. We fished two spots that would probably, you could probably get maybe eight boats on each spot. Like they were not big. Doesn't matter. And we saw boats everywhere. And I'm telling you, like, yeah, there was grass everywhere. There was eel grass, there was star grass. There was a lot of different grass out there, but not the grass I wanted to fish. And there, there was probably three boats on the first spot, right, Dad? Mm -hmm. Three or four boats. Well, they dropped and, in on us. Yeah, whatever. Like it's it's they knew where the grass was, right? <laughs> so and then and then uh we, we went to the second spot and the whole fleet was somewhere else, man. And you could see them far away. And you're like, Did what are they all doing down there? <laughs> and that crazy? sure enough, like, right. You guys, you guys saw us at the end of the day. And it's like, they were all somewhere else. And we were fishing the right stuff. We just were, you know, and it, bro. you, Dude, you have to commit to it. Oh, you I was on the right stuff again you today, and I was, promise. dude. Every time we jacked a you big were. one today, I was like, "Where were you on Saturday?" Nah, they were really? there, dude. Just we were just I not know. presenting it the way they wanted to eat it. John, people are asking, you know, they're saying John's got a lot of knowledge. They want to hear your favorite setup for swim jigging or anything, man. Give give the people what they want, man. They want to hear from the. Dang. 24 pound John Senior. It took me. It took me a long time to get on this show. I mean, after winning the boat race, <laughs> <laughs> you get an invite. <laughs> well, the swim jig setup is pretty basic. It's a dirty jig, three eighths. Uh, trim up, trim up the skirt. Okay, you want that to puff. You're actually moving that bait slow, so you're not going to be. There's no cadence. There's no jerk, and you're back to that winching. So anything that makes a hesitation in that bait is going to give it that little little puff to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, the trailer's up to you. Uh, Tommy got me started on these Berkleys. They seem to do fine. <clears throat> the Cinco Swim I used to use that all the time in the black and blue laminate. The Swim Cinco. Yeah, yeah. Nice man, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Five inch. Uh, well, I, I used to use that Three right probably. on a chatter bait. Oh, I love the three inch on the chatterbait, man. It's badass. Well, something I do with the swim jig, I'll put a four and a half on. Ooh. A little, little bit, bit bigger, bigger profile. Why don't we go back to the uh the swim sink go on the chatterbait? Dude, I traps. I love that thing, time. man. I lost it. I lost it, bro. It's hard to find. It works. I think it's no, I have a bunch. Game. I just don't bring them. I haven't put one on the chatterbait in years. But really? I tried to we angle fished it on the back skirt. channel together. Go ahead. Yeah, one years ago, that skirt. don't cut that skirt straight across all the time. You Listen can shorten that skirt up by bringing it up, shorten it up, but then take an angle cut once in a while. So you have those little stragglers up top and then the longer yeah. ones in the back. Yeah, man. Nice. And get yourself a swim jig and make sure uh, we like the dirty jigs, but anything with a big eyeball on it. Oh, I love big eyeball. They used to make a jig <laughs> called a snooty jig, eyeball. man. I, I, yeah. I've done some custom ones with Bravarni, and I'll take, I'll drill out a little bit and put these big giant eyeballs on them, man. I don't know what it is that triggers the bite, but they like it. They like that eyeball coming across. Don't they, though? But what's like the what's the next? Uh, what's the next? What what's next for you, John? Why why didn't you uh, partake in the uh, Bass Northern Opens with us and join the team? I heard you don't know, sleep at night. <laughs> and then tonight and then tonight the wiener thing came out oh god you know? there you go <laughs> and now you knew you might you made the right decision well what's coming up on the bay something's got to be coming up on the bay we're yeah. all tuned up right now we should repeat that this weekend hey you want to know the coolest thing you're changing topic wednesday is my last guide trip on the chesapeake bay nice for a long time and I'm so thankful for that. You're heading up north. Boom. Heading Yo, up. That's it, man. Get, getting out of that dirty grass, dirty ditch. What do you call him, <laughs> Eric? Ditch. <laughs> ditch monkey. Ditch monkeys. Get out of there, you ditch monkeys. 
<laughs> I begged him. I said, Travis, he'd been saying it all day. He goes, look at those. Uh, you know, and I'm like, Travis, go right through the middle and yell. <laughs> just do it. And I think he was this close to just turning the boat hard and running no, right dude, through the middle of the day. I got to respect. Dude, I'll get called out out there. I was messing yeah. with I you. Go I go way around everybody. I know you would have you never done it. You didn't do I that. I don't do at that. All. You I were very respectful. On, I on try to, even if it, it, even if it means I might hit a sandbar, I go around people. You did. Let you me did. ask you a question about casting your swim jigs. I get some distance out there. Yeah. And, and I get some distance. Sometimes I reach other boats. I probably got too close. To hey, I, I do want to. I got. I got to ask you a question. Go ahead, John. I heard there was a little confrontation with Riz, perhaps in the morning. No, you want to talk no, about no, that? No. I I like to I like to get distance. If I'm fishing the ground, oh, he doesn't want to bring it up. We could bring him on. Talk about this. No, there's nothing. There was no guy. He was cool. He was cool. Okay. I, I liked it. That was a little excitement in the morning. It I thought you guys cool. got a little close to each other. Am I wrong? A little uh, bit. Well, no, we got we got really close. Yeah, listen, <laughs> listen, it, it's it's one of those things like like I just mentioned before. There's key grass and some people know what to look for. And when you come off plane and there's nobody else around you and you turn the motor off and throw the trolling motor in the water and here comes another one right off plane and right on your grass bed, dude, you are like. He landed on top. You gotta be kidding me! Like, but you know what? It is what it is. Like, it's it, it's it's a key spot out there. Not a lot of people know about it. We're fishing the same stuff. Our heads are down. We're fishing. Like, we're we're not focused yeah. on, you know, other boaters and what they're doing or talking. Like, I'm not interested in what Riz was doing. But look, he was jacking them. Like, Dude, let me tell you what. When he pulled in, he dropped in, and like I said, I like to make some distance on my cast. Some, I mean, Tom will stand in front of the boat, cast forward. I'll cast forward past them and get 20 yards on them. I like I like to pump that out there because I'm going to get on the other side of that grass bed and I'm going to bring it in from this side of that grass bed in because sometimes they'll sit on the outside edge looking forward. They're not just sitting in the back. That's right. And the first one I got was about five and a half pounds and he was on the other side. That was the first one in the morning. I mean, Riz came in. We were, all, we were down in power poles, but he came floating in. I don't say a word. I send one to the back side of the boat. Yeah, right right off right the power pole. I send <laughs> one to the front side of the boat. And his co his, his co angler got, got a little little he was this, like Riz, Riz don't get frazzled. And let me tell you what, I give the guy a lot of credit because let me tell you what, that's a rising star there because we see him work. But anyway, his co angler goes, You can do that all day. I got thick skin. <laughs> I almost said, obviously you don't, <laughs> because and Tommy goes, everything's cool, and I'm like, yeah, we're good. And Riz said, oh, I gotta pull off. I gotta pull off, you know, because he did come in on us a little bit, but and that's good. He he went out and worked. But let me tell you what, I watch that kid catch two fish, and he is a machine. I give that kid credit. He's got something coming. Um, he caught that fish, got it out of the net, back in the line, well, back on the boat. And he was up front, and he's he's going. And nice. he did it again. But he's Fired fishing him fast. Up. He's fishing fast. He's catching the little ones. And I'm like, you can have him. But, I mean, he's he's going somewhere. He's really working at it. Mm. Doesn't look like a slacker on the water. But he's probably listening. I love you. You did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. No, yeah. We didn't, there was no. There was no. Tom, you did. No, I'm just. I like a little drama. I like to get a little drama going here once in a while. <laughs> You know, we all know each other on on the Chesapeake. You know, I, I don't think there's there's too many d weeds out there. You know, what I mean, yeah. everyone's pretty cool. So we just get on top of each other once in a while. Yeah, and if I can, and if everybody I can, knows everybody. the the yeah, The I worst thing you want to have, hey, the worst thing you want to be is a wannabe with a rap boat on the Chesapeake Bay. Everyone knows where you at. What is that? I ain't naming names because I don't know anybody. I'm just rap, saying rap. rap boats would be a target. Travis you know exactly. has this thing like if you have a rap boat, you just want to look cool. Like, come yeah. on, man. Like the guy worked hard to get somebody's name on that rap. That's about three. We convince yeah. somebody to give him a couple bucks to get that rap done. Come on, not, man. That's not, awesome. Not not everybody, Brodus. 
Travis, you, you 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 got some things that just bug you, man. I do. <laughs> you used to be a patch pirate. I have to wear a jersey now. It's mandatory at weigh in. I'll say this, man. It's just like sure. the the worst non smoker is the ex smoker. The worst, oh. yeah. Dex machine made in. Yeah. Made. Some I don't Armenian like drama in all aspects. <laughs> Guys, we got Bradley uh, Bradley Hallman in the chats tonight. I, I sent a text out to uh, see if he wants to join us, so we'll see. Uh, Brian the Carpenter <laughs> is like disappeared, We're and he sent me a message. He's like, what time can I come on? I'm like, well, we got this and that and that. He goes, I got a job, is what he replied back. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Fair, fair. Oh, so, so, so he he was waiting. Well, he, yeah, he wanted in. He wanted in. One more thing, Eric. He's pretty important. You're talking about the fake producer of Ike Live and the best you do. You don't treat him. So like you're saying I wanted, blew him off? I didn't wait, blow wait, him wait. off. You, you just oh. said he wanted in. What what are you what are you even talking about, man? He deserves a spot on the show, bro. He he's, does. Don't he's don't top flight. double. Dude, I'm don't giving you drama, air. dude. You're starting it. He wanted <laughs> in. He wanted in. Like, what is that? He what is, is that? welcome down here whenever he wants to come in, but I just That's can't better. bump the man right away. You you should move him up in the show, man. He's important. Yes. Yo, talk to me about that time you got tight on Joe Zombeck on the Potomac. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I, I just time? heard something in the chat. Was okay, that Joe. Joe. No, that was probably... A week later, day two or something. Trash point? Oh. He, no, he was fishing my shit, too. And I wanted to let him know that I know why you're there, Joe. That ain't your spot. <laughs> I already know why you're there. I just want to make a quick point to let Joe know that I knew what he knew as well. That's all. Can you do a power? Well, so wait, wait, wait. Because I'm not sure how that what is that? What? what does that actually mean? Like, what kind of point did you, like, what, did you just... That Drive means, by and honk your horn like I know what you're doing and no, keep going I, or like No, I sat down. I fished next to him. No way. Just to prove a point that you No, not to doing. prove a point to catch a fish, but I gave him room. I asked him. I was polite. I go, Joe, I don't know what I said to him. But Joe, it wasn't what did a, Travis say to you? Type it into the comment. I want to hear <laughs> your he said, <laughs> Travis, Travis said, Good day, Joe. May I pull in here near you? Oh man. Do you, do you have any great poupons? Pardon me, but do you have any bass biting today? Because I need about four more. Because that's a lot like you because. Hey, before we go, before we get any further, because we, we may or may not have a cool guest. We definitely may or may not have my sister come on shortly. I got to go see if she's still awake. And we may or may not get to another thing. I want to share something with you guys <laughs> what? real quick. <laughs> Before we forget, I want you guys to. Can you I got picture, a job. I, <laughs> <laughs> what time do you get up? <laughs> can I just share with you a quick 60 second video of me doing something I've never done before? No, just yeah. real quick. Can yeah, I say sure. something, Eric? Yeah, yeah. John. I cuss you out in the boat. <laughs> Today? Why? No, at all time. Me? What? I'm throwing the NRX now. I have uh -oh. two or three, and then I pick up another rod and I start using it. And I say, F you, Eric. And I throw that right down. I can't. I'm picking up a two by four. What is I this know. thing? You ruined Dude, me. They truly are the best. I know oh, Travis tries wow. to sell me on other stuff, but they're the best rods on And I'm throwing man. a jig and I can't even feel it coming through the grass. I'm like, ah. It's crazy good. There's man. a lot of shit right. rods out there. I will tell you that. I, it's yeah. true. It's true. Tom knows, man. John I got to I got to share with you guys. I got to share with you guys this 56. Eric, you haven't seen this yet. All right. I want your I want your raw thoughts on what happened oh, to me great. yesterday. Okay? All right. Go ahead. Because I think I'm like, I'm trying to get more with nature and be like the Native Americans, okay? So I just got done with a guide trip. I dropped the boat off. I'm going to go get me some dinner. But not like you think. Here's how I do it. Let me just park next to the dock here. Like... It's not going to take long. Yeah, that's a spear I got in my hand. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. This is awesome. Oh. 
Come on, bro. And there's dinner tonight. <laughs> That's what I'm delight. talking about. <laughs> That's, That's what I'm talking about. That's how I get my dinner. Simple Dude, as that. That's guy in Florida. What did it take? Two minutes? In and out. Done. Hey, don't. There you go. That's awesome, man. <laughs> That's a 10 plus, bro. I'm so Thank happy you. for you. You Thank told you. me you're yeah. going to do that, man. I'm so stoked it, that you did it. It was an amazing experience. It. And oh, my God. Fun. Seriously. Was that your first throw? I mean, be honest. I, I threw five times. <laughs> so I was like, what did it take two minutes? I Did missed you five. Got the license for that? Are, th- are, just, are there that many snakeheads up in there? No, don't be messing with that place. You can't, it's private. Stay the f- out of there. Those are my snakeheads. That's my dinner right, you're listen, taking I, away from my kids. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to eat any of that. I'm just saying <laughs> that's a wild video, bro. That's that's good. I'm surprised that didn't go public yet. It will soon. The guy in Florida with the long blonde hair to build his own spear goes out in the swamp and he gets all the tilapia. He gets all the uh, Armenian fish. Whew. Anyways, guys, listen. I know you. I know you got work. John, it's it's been it's been an honor having you on the show. Pleasure, Eric. Keep it coming. You no, guys are awesome, man. Yo, tonight, tonight. Raise the current. Was just, that was a headshot, amazing. you weirdo. That was a straight headshot. I didn't. Sh- I didn't try to hit him five times. I s- tried to spear five other snakeheads that day. Oh. People are giving me shit. <laughs> that was a great gig, man. That was awesome. I'm proud of you, dude. That gig, right. man. Wait till you see my next on. spear I got coming. Oh yeah. I had to upgrade. This was a 1999 uh, spear on Amazon. That basically bent all the shit, and uh, the pole isn't the right pole. I mean, I, I'm, I don't have the right setup, but we're doing it, Eric. You and me. I'm totally into it, man. Yeah, we gotta oh, eliminate. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Hey, how many, how many carp did you guys see out there in the flats? Practice, we see. Couple, man. Yeah. Couple big not, ones, not a lot, yeah. but a couple big ones. Rolling out I, there, dude. I saw one that looked like a log, and I'm like, Travis, watch out for that log. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, the log swimming is a carp. That's crazy. It was a you giant. See many on a tournament? No, not not no. nearly as as much as uh, I think the week they're before. Done. Yeah, they're, so this they're close weekend, to being this done. weekend out there in the flats, going to be crazy. Game on, man! Oh, it's about to pop to- off. Who's got a tournament, Travis? We'll go make some money. We're at the flats. It's going to be fired up this weekend. Yeah. I'll be down at Kerr trying to keep my feet. I'll be at the that. I'll be at the class. I got a two day championship. Oh, for uh, for uh, well, no, it's not a championship. It's just a two separate tournaments Saturday and Sunday with Scooter. So I wish I could be out there. It's all, it's going to be awesome, man. It's going to it's going to fire up big time. Yeah, I kind of miss fun fishing, man. Well, I want a, I want a tournament. Yeah, that's huh. true. Tom, I think I got a dance recital. There you go. <laughs> a dance recital. What does that even mean? What do you mean? <sighs> Are you? I, I, it's not me. I got kids, man. I got, oh, I, I, got... I thought you were going to a competitive ballroom dance recital or something. I'm hey, sorry. Jamie Newton saw 10 goldfish in the school. We only saw six, Eric. Six was our top. That's true. They're lucky. Do, do you guys think large bass eat the goldfish? <laughs> oh, no, but check this out. It's Put a little orange, orange on your bait because you know they eat the baby goldfish. I was throwing a color last year. Dude, those those goldfish can't reproduce, I don't think. What? What? Really? That's, I why, don't they, know. that's I was, why there's six of them in this school. I was thinking about it today. I was like, gonna, I wonder if they reproduce. You know, I, I, are, you, are you even believing this right now? How do you? Get, how do they get there, Travis? It's like bluegills don't spawn but once a year. No, they spawn every month, bro. Why wouldn't you think a goldfish couldn't reproduce? How do you think new goldfish are made? They're not clones. Well, he's not a clone. I have not. a pond. I have a pond out back. What are they doing that ball then, Eric? Over at the south end of the flats, over by Aberdeen, that big white ball. What goes on in that ball? The same thing that goes on in your head. What? Is that where the Martians beam in on or something? Well, John, you, you kind of work for Deep State. You should know what's going on down there. What goes on down there? In Aberdeen? 
Yeah. It's all, it's all proving ground. It's all testing. Testing what? In that ball? In that white ball? What are they testing? Uh, that's just radar. They're sending for signals what? receiving. Not for looking for goldfish. What are they looking for? <laughs> yeah, that's right. UFOs. Well, there's UFOs. Hey, there may be some validity. Dude, dude, you could part of your theory could come true, man. You got to go down to Arizona to the proving grounds. You want to see some crazy stuff. Yeah. That's where all your military future <sighs> equipment is tested. Tom, what are you sighing for? <laughs> I've been down there. I just, I don't know, man. Just listen, I want to thank you for just letting us come on the show. I I, I, oh, I yeah. actually felt like fired up. I thought I had a shot to win that thing. I know. And I know. uh I'm hoping you did. Man, uh um, you guys were right there, man. I mean, look, you don't if if it was a bass you hooked, what was your mm -hmm. smallest fish that you weighed in? Well, I mean, my scale said it was over three pounds. Yeah. Okay. So so you had but a, I, a, you, know, you know, a three eight. Three nine gets it done. I mean, or a four. Who knows, Ooh, man? Yeah. But you're right there. You're you're a bite away. Me and Travis were five bites away from getting it done. <laughs> every, every, every swim. <laughs> no, uh, four. I had just, a monster in there. Tra Travis, they gave me three. I'm, they gave Tra me three Travis, four on that fish. I'm, I'm just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. It was it was funny thing to say. You were funny, Travis. Amazingly, I actually was it was calm and funny that day. I was worried for no, you were not. Not in the beginning, not in the middle of the morning. You were not, dude. You were like barking orders, throw this, pick oh. that up. So what are you doing? Whoa. You're wasting time. It's just like all these swing thoughts, negative mojo in my brain. Yeah, and then once weird. you once you figured out I, I I feel like you figured out we were beat, you just started having fun with it. Cause I'm going, <laughs> it's twelve o'clock and Travis doesn't have a fish in the boat. I'm going. I was really worried that you might blank for the video. <laughs> like Travis might not catch a keeper. And I'm I'm going, this is bad for business, bad for the channel. No one's ever going to see this video. I pray to God I catch all five. I'm starting to flip out. And I, that made me actually fish faster. I go, I've got the only two keepers here. It's like noon. And I'm going, I got to catch all five today. And I'm counting on Travis being dialed in and tuned in. He's going to catch all five and I'm going to win a boat. I'm going to give him a bonus. And I'm like, that dream shattered really quick. I mean, like noon, and I'm like, he's got two 12 inch fish. I'm going, this is not good. This is not good. Eric, this is this is something that we talked about after after the tournament. Actually, very shortly after the tournament, we're driving home, and we started talking about the teamwork on the boat. Yeah, and it's like we don't really spend a whole lot of time talking at all. We know exactly what we're doing at all times occasionally I'll ask him what he's throwing. So I'm not throwing the same thing. So we, we are constantly working and working together and we're not moving. Like we might move the trolling motor on three or four once in a while, just to mix it up or represent the baits in a different way. But my dad and I, we work together, like, like literally like as a team. And when you guys, when you guys like, are sideways over this shit. Like, oh, yeah. I'm telling you, man. We're fine. I just asked in a team tournament. I go to him. Are Travis. you throwing that bait or not? Because somebody needs to be throwing it right now. Do you have which, it in your hand? Which, and if he doesn't, I, I, I got absolutely, it. That's, absolutely wasn't working. But anyway, I, I really wish you would show the unedited video with our all of our trails and how many miles of water we covered, <laughs> drifting, trolling, motoring, running. And I, I mean, when I caught that Nico fish, third cast because i i really would pull it into the grass literally yep. john i was kind of dead sticking it and then pull it through yep. and the fish nailed it <clears throat> and i'm like wait that's a good sign i feel like it's a clue and then i pitched back in. to another clump the thickest clump highest clump i had a fish drill it like as soon as i pulled it through and i'm like i wasn't sure how big that fish was but i did miss him and then i pitched back shook it and and let it sit and pulled it through and then a 12 incher ate it i'm like this is something and he left i'm like at that point i'm like what are we doing well i didn't know and, and normally I'm, eric we do fish well together maybe we haven't fished yeah. enough lately no, no, no. we There's normally do well in tournaments this is not uh, a I, commentary on your game plan dude i was all in i was all in with the giant trd i was all in on every spot 
when you pulled down, you were in good stuff. You'd done your homework. It just, I stopped thinking for myself. And that's my epiphany. That's on me, bro. Because uh, it's not like you. I, I just got I'm news. on you to win the tournament. Yes, it's, I just it's got like, news. We may have a special guest coming up. Tom, John, do you want to stick around? Now's your exit if no. you have to. No. <laughs> There's a plan. Thank you. You guys are awesome, Thank you, man. guys. Congrats well, again, man. Thanks for having us on. We're close. John, glad you're again, having you on, sure. man. You rock. Tom, I enjoyed hanging with you at the James, man. Need to hang out more. It was good fun. You guys. Really, really fun time. You guys got a good group of guys. All right. See you, See you See John. Guys. Thank you. Congrats again, man. That man, funny. that was some good stuff, dude. Oh, I love yes. having him on. That was awesome. Let me fix this. We need to get Joe's Much on better. back on this on this alive. That would be fun, man. That Who's would coming be on next? We don't even know. Yeah, surprise guest coming Nobody up. Nobody knows. Uh -oh, Big Bradley name. Hallman? Big. Bradley right, Hallman. Come on, man. Why you got to spoil shit for you? <laughs> I, know, I was just hoping. Well, you mentioned him earlier. You spoiled him. I would have no uh, idea me, if you didn't say Bradley Hallman. Can you guys talk amongst there. yourselves real quick? I got to see if my sister's still up. Okay. <laughs> uh, wait, you're going to bump Bradley Hallman for your sister? Hmm. So, Eric, uh, that I conversation. I my light. Gotcha. Go, go so ahead, man. that conversation got me thinking. So you guys opted to run around all day and then these opted to sit in one or two spots and milk it. How do you make the decision on when it's time to run around all day and when it's time to sit in one spot all day? What makes you go one way or the other? Well, when you're fishing grass and you're sitting in front of a cherry millful patch that's super thick and about 40 or 50 yards long <laughs> and 40 yards wide, and you catch a couple and you, dude, I mean, I, I, I think you got to understand that there are feeding windows and you see that on the flats. I mean, Travis has talked about this before on the show, you know, people are catching fish around you. So, you know, the fish are feeding and you know, you're in good grass. Let me. So it's, this. it's really just a, um, a way that you're presenting the bait. So that's where you got to really think and go, what are we doing not to generate bites? Are we moving it? You know, depth, speed, cadence, depth. If you keep repeating that to yourself, if you feel like you're in an area with fish, something's changed. Pressure, obviously, 60 boats sure. the day before, 150 boats that day, right? Um, that's really all it was for us. I, we had the right baits in our hand for sure. Yeah. So you said something that stuck out to me. You said cherry red milfoil. Is that? Do you look for that over just the regular run of the mill milfoil? Is that what you look in? Is it no, typically no, no. better? I mean, is it cherry? I was describing something that's good. Cherry is like good in my vernacular. So yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Cherry. Like, if we got it. So it's like, no, but uh, <laughs> some, some milfoil have like um, a reddish tint to it. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 Do you guys yeah, have yeah. any echo on my end? No. No. Okay. I'm going to bring a special guest before our next special guest. Yeah. My sister. <laughs> Let's bring my sister and get in here. Travis has Say hello sister. to Christine. That's awesome. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Maybe get a little closer to me. There hey, you go. How's it going? Hello. Travis. Hello. Is this your first time on a live show? That's incredible. Yeah. No. <laughs> so Christine's visiting because I'm not. Why are you here? Because uh, your kid turned one. Oh, yeah. My kid had a birthday today. <laughs> so you came in for the birthday party. <laughs> Did you just say, oh, yeah, that's why she's here? My kid had a birthday party? Dude, I don't I, know. I believe he said that. Yes. You <laughs> Travis, do you struggle with life sometimes? Do I struggle with life? Yes. So, Christine, Honestly. so I, I thought we'd play a fun game here. Um. I don't know. Let's talk about growing up. Like you, why have you, why don't you fish? I just don't like it. Oh. We fished growing up though. <laughs> Any other questions? We fish. <laughs> I, we went down about Travis. That would yeah, embarrass get, him. Get to the good oh. stuff. <laughs> Let's go right for the throat. No, I'm thing. just. <laughs> what was Travis like growing up? Was he kind of dorky? Was he cool? Did he hang, was he like the cool kid in the school or was he kind of geeky? What was Travis like? Uh, he was pretty mean. <laughs> <laughs> Do tell. I mean, well, I have, let's be nice. Sure. What's that? Well, I mean, you did chase a friend around with a, 
a knife. It was a fake knife. It wasn't a fake oh. knife. Oh. <laughs> he, you would lock me in your closet with an ice cream bucket for a toilet. Yeah, but we were like eight years old. All day. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. <laughs> At least eight hours. Well, we, we were left home with no babysitter. It wasn't the only – it's not like you did it once. Okay. Well, I don't know. It was a few times. Okay. <laughs> That would explain it, Eric. Uh, Christine, if I was there, I'd punch Travis in the ribs as hard as I could right now and say, that's what locking your sister in the closet. We're going to play a game. It made me a better person. That's right. So <laughs> where would you throw this food? In some lily pads. Oh, dang, dang, dang. Damn. Top water frog. So you know a few things about fishing. What's your biggest bass? I don't think I've ever caught one. Have you ever caught anything? Sure, some perch, I think. Okay, okay. Sunfish. Fair enough. Fair enough. She's your sister. You don't know if she's caught a perch? We, yeah, we fished together. We went to Mud Creek together. Yeah. But I, you don't I, remember her catching a fish? Small things. Yeah, bluegills and perch. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you've ever caught a bass. Probably not. Your brother, he runs a YouTube channel called Smallmouth Crush, and he's pretty excellent. So I think, Travis, as a way to make amends. Now, Christine, do you have any interest in catching a smallmouth one time? Sure, I would. I think it would be fun. So when are you going to take your fi your sister fishing, Travis? She, does, she doesn't really have any interest in it. I think she just said it would be fun. Are you oh. listening? I was trying to think of another question to ask her about this bait, but I think um, this is way more important than quizzing your sister I on baits. Someone to take me fishing. I'll take you went with the parents all the time on charter boats and stuff. Not for bass. Oh, mm -hmm. Travis, you have a twenty-one foot bass boat with all the electronics. People want to know who's older. That I'm dome. slightly older. Don't tell our age because we don't really know. I um, <laughs> really want to know Travis's age. I say he's forty-one. Christine, am I right? Why say that? Let's not talk about it. We I mean, talk it's about really age here. pretty close. Christine's actually in the Air Force, and she's one of the huh? – are you – I we might mess this up. We can't talk about it? I mean, I don't want to. A yeah, little she bit? She has a clearance, Travis. Yeah. No, no. With people, Christine, I, I can't talk about some things either, so don't, don't let him force you into anything. But can I tell you what rank you are? I mean, it doesn't really I matter. I think she's a lieutenant or no? Uh, captain, captain. That's up there, huh? Is that good, Alex? That is good, yes. Yes. Much yes. respect. Congratulations, Christine. And she yeah. just got back from Germany to um, work on something she can't talk about. <laughs> is she your sister, Travis? Yes. We've had conversations. <laughs> I picked her up at the airport after the Ike tournament, and we listened to a lot of really good information on, on the radio, didn't we? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't agree with that statement. Okay. <laughs> oh, so he does the same thing to you, Christine, that he does to me once you listen to the X-22 report? It's too much and it's too loud. Oh. And it's too crazy. She, um, yes. But she does like Tom McDonald. <laughs> I introduced her to Tom McDonald this past weekend. Are you going to uh, download his album and listen to Absolutely it incessantly? Like you? Me Absolutely either. Look at that, tries. What? Um, where would you throw? What do you think that bait's used for? Well, some deeper water for sure. <laughs> yeah, we need to go fishing. So <laughs> this is like a spook bait. Um, fish on the surface. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. That would have been my next guess. No, but we're tight. I I went down to Florida. I've shark fished with you, or I caught a shark when I was visiting you. Okay, maybe that. I. When I was in the elite, you let me crash your house in Florida. I didn't do any fishing, but yes. No. So she takes care of me. You know what? She forgave me for locking her in a closet when we were eight years old. Okay. I gave you Did bread. You I, put bread I put bread underneath the crack so she could eat lunch, Eric. So I was. Hmm. Christine, I have you forgiven him? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good. You're, you're very nice. She's visiting me, for Christ's sakes, Eric. I mean, no, she's visiting, visiting the kids. Your kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My kids pretty cool. <laughs> it's all good. But no, we're glad you're here. So you leave tomorrow. I do. Yes. And then I get to see the parents next week in Wisconsin. 
exciting. And then we're probably, I want to get down to Florida. So you live up in the panhandle now, right? I do. The last three years. It's wonderful. Eric. <laughs> That's my little girl mango, man. You I'm bring cat your cats your Heck yeah, dude. They're family, bro. All right. Pets are family, man. I agree. We had cats growing up. Remember, I Sonny. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, his, his, his shoulders popped out of his sockets if you swing him around too much. This is disturbing, dude. Remember that? No, and we had dogs <clears throat> growing up, guinea pigs. Remember your guinea pig Tigger? I do. So we go on a family vacation. I'm not going to name names. We go on a family vacation trip. We come back and our guinea pig's dead. Oh, that's brutal. But we it made a. Bad. It's it's buried in the backyard next to all the. We have like a little pet cemetery with a tombstone. Tigger. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 1986 put, uh, to 1989. We did, right? we did that with our hamsters, man. Bonnie and Clyde, dude. Bonnie and really? Clyde. Yeah, we had hamsters, too. They'd get out of the cage, dude, and we'd have to go find them. It's crazy. It's hard remember to find. Remember that hamster, yeah. that gerbil I had? Yeah. Sandy. How do I remember <laughs> this? And we had rabbits. Remember we had like 50, 60 rabbits, and the and the, the carnival came to town, and they wanted to buy a rabbits for 50 cents a piece, and my parents what? weren't there, and I said, that sounds like a good deal. Let's he could sell them later the next day. Double his money. So the carnival bought all of our rabbits. And my parents and came they... home from work and all the rabbits were gone. <laughs> and we got like eight bucks. Oh, no, man. <laughs> we did a lot of crazy shit. Remember we had that rummage sale when they were gone? So, you know what? I'm not the only mean person in the family. It was both of us. I was. We did yeah. rummage sales when my parents were gone. Remember the antique phone I sold for 40 bucks? That was unintentional. Yeah. we. I didn't know it was worth two grand. Oh, <laughs> one of those ones with the wooden cranks. Yeah, I think I might have gave him. I think I had a list of for forty. He offered me twenty. I said done. <laughs> Enterprising businessman, even back in the day. We try. That's we funny. did a lot of stuff. Four wheeling, <clears throat> mud. It was a good life. Bicycling. Oh man. Good hunt, stuff you deer hunted, like don't you? You deer hunt a little bit. You shot a deer. I never shot a deer. Okay, but you you dressed up in blaze orange. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Travis! Have you done anything? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've done a few things. I have all these memories, and I thought you shot a deer. I thought you caught a bass with me. It's like, <laughs> no. Shit. Travis, you need Where am I getting man. these memories from, Christine? I mean, I went deer hunting. I just didn't I didn't have the opportunity to shoot a deer. Okay. I, I never saw any really. Okay. One day. No one no one takes me hunting either. Remember when we had that house party at my parents' house? Well, I don't want to talk about that. No, anymore. it's our parents' house, not my parents' house. It's our <laughs> parents. Unless she's not your sister. Pretty epic. Pretty epic. <laughs> You said at my Pretty parents' heavy. house. She's <laughs> our parents, dude. She's your sister. Well, anyway. You're flipping me out, dude, right now. I'm telling you. You you think she shot a deer? She didn't. You think All she right. caught a bass with you? My parents, our Listen, parents, the comments are going are great. You? People they are, are loving it. People are loving it. <laughs> So, so I got different viewpoints yeah. on things, you know, obviously, you know that. What happened here? Is that glass breaking? Oh, yeah. What? The cat? Well, if you, if you really want to see, there it is. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Come on, Mango. Not, no, that that's was indie. epic. Where uh, else are you guys going to get this? First of all, this is the best live it fishing live stream plan. out there. Nah. Like and share. Tell your friends it's only going to get better from here because our next guest coming up. Oh, she's bad. Oh, she's bad. <laughs> so, Christine, while we got a second here, I want to get, get your opinion get, on this. I'll get, I'll get what, how's your stance on Bigfoot? Is it yes, no, transcendent reality, whatever Travis has got going on? How do you feel about Bigfoot? Are you serious? Yes. We talk about Bigfoot a lot on the show. Okay. 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 Oh, well, I don't watch no, the show, so I didn't know that. She doesn't watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in Bigfoot? So that was a real plant. No. Okay. How about UFOs? Uh, there are 
unidentified flying objects that will occasionally grace our skies. How about? That doesn't mean they're from outer space. Okay. Can you get me those really cool night goggle vision glasses? <laughs> For eighty thousand, you can. Get some. Yeah, okay. eighty thousand. <laughs> yeah, they're up there. Yes. I just I was talking like the twenty five hundred dollar ones. I mean, I'm not going to purchase them for you. No, I'm you saying. Think I'm gonna take I them? didn't know you. No. I thought you had ins with the military. <laughs> for, no. Yeah. It's very secretive, guys. <laughs> That's good. Keep it that way. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. What What other things? I mean, is there a deep state? Maybe. I, I mean, I'm not going to. Okay. Yeah, this. you're military. That's yeah. right. You might be the. Yeah. I uh, oh, enjoy man. serving my country, and uh, I do it to the best of my ability. Yes, I agree. It, yeah. Yeah, I love America. Are you a Trump supporter? Or are you or are you going to support whoever's the president? What if he's a green screen president? All right, we won't go there. Never mind. Um, sorry, sorry. I'm not going to go there. I'm Christine. I'll understand if you don't want to answer this, but Jamie Newton wants to know what your MOS is. Oh, I'm a uh, 21 Alpha, so a maintenance officer. Cool. What are you maintaining? Vehicles, yes, electronics? Sean, uh, aircraft, uh, but currently okay. I, I work at a headquarters, um, but I'll be back on the flight line in a few months. Looking okay. forward to it. One of the coolest things my sister ever did for me was she built bombs back in the day, and she wrote my name on a bomb. So I was enlisted prior to uh, earning a okay. job, and I was an ammo troop. Mustang. W O. Pretty cool. Yeah. You still have that bomb, bomb in Iraq. Iraq. Yeah. Well, no, the bomb blew up. It, it, it oh. killed some some people. Or, <laughs> or a building or something like that. It hit a target. I guess is the appropriate way to say that. It didn't come back. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, doing great things, Man. America. <laughs> it was a long time ago, 2005 yeah. maybe. Oh really? Wow. Wow. Or maybe 07. All right. Well, we'll have to go. I asked her actually to go if she wanted to go spear snakeheads, and you did say you'd yes. like to. So that'd be awesome. It would. Be fun. It would be fun. So I guess Eric's cleaning up that glass. Well, thanks for yeah. coming on real quick. I know. Okay, yeah, it was fun. We got a busy morning ahead. Indeed. Okay. And, uh, Thanks, everyone. Yeah. All right. Bye, Christine. Thank you for your service. We appreciate it. Everyone's been saying that. Right. Oh. It's your bass one day. It'd be really cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming on. All right. I can put that away later. All right. Yeah, we actually, she helped me. Um, we had a little propane issue today. We had to make burgers for the birthday party. And gotcha. I guess I left the propane tank on. Yeah, that's not good. And I guess all the propane leaked out. Yeah. So it was a yeah, it was a rough afternoon. All right, let do me you figure this out. With life I sometime, this. Travis. I do, Eric. <laughs> okay. I because I never hit. Oh, I'm gonna get into that real quick. Let me get my audio right now. That here we go. Alex, you got me? I got you. I got you. Not yet. Oh, I guess we're going to plug you. Well, while Travis is figuring this out, I'll give you a quick pass. You commercial break. They're going on a special right now, 99 for the whole year. Best deal they're going to have all year. It's a texas size deal. You're not going to beat it. Go over there, sign up. Some of the best info on the internet. Travis has been on there. Mr. Hallman has been on there. Eric has been on there. It's a great program they have going on. Go check them out. I'm sure most of you guys know about it, but if you don't, BassU.TV. Good. And the discounts from Aprala are crazy yes. good, everybody. It's Forty percent off yes. Aprala, yeah. thirty percent off missile baits, yep. twenty-five off Gills gear. Can't beat it. I mean, DT sixes and, and tens for like, and DT fours and whatever you like to throw for like five bucks. I mean, mm. come on, come on, doesn't get any better. Tons Listen, and cheese. by the way, I, I just want to thank my sister for coming on. I want to clarify a few things up. I locked her in a closet. I was probably eight years old, and that whole knife incident, man, I was probably like six, seven, okay? That's excusable. All right, thank you. At least a knife. I wasn't I'm like I wasn't like 16 locking her up in the closet. <laughs> hmm. Eric, come on. Just sweep up your glass. Listen, we're going to bring our next guest on. Kind of a surprise guest. What's yeah. up, Brohim? 
What up? What up? Bradley what up? Holman. Bradley Dude. Holman. What? Brad Holman. Heck? Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. I, I was honestly <laughs> just like, I swear to God, I, I just clicked over. It was Monday night, and I just clicked over, and I was watching, and I made a couple comments, and I. I couldn't even find my damn phone whenever you were like, I sent him a deal if he wants to get in. And I'm like, where the hell's my phone? And so it took me five minutes to find that. And once I found it, I'm like, well, I'd been gone. So my camera, nothing's set up. And I'm like, okay. So I, I start putting you. stuff together. But anyway, um, I was just enjoying y'all. Honestly, I finished dinner and uh, I fixed myself a drink and I was sitting here in the office and just enjoying y'all's uh, Northern accents. Tom's dad rocks, dude. That's no joke. Yeah, yeah that was, that was good He's stuff. Straight up. He's legit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, dude. Like, listen, uh, I made a little joke in the comments before. You may have not seen that, but you've been stuck on the flats. Yeah, well, I've only been up there one time, and uh, it was uh, – I, I didn't know, you know. I mean, Pete and all those guys were up there, and I was just trying to, like, stay out of their way for a little while, and Brian was going to hook up with me later in the morning. And so, you know, I didn't want to be like a leech, so – they were uh, working on some stuff, so I just took off and started running, and I got out there, and I was like, well, am I just going to fish a dock, or what am I going to do? And I thought about my buddy Brian Schmidt, so I call him. He sends me a couple of little digits. I didn't tell him that it was the very bottom of the tide, like the very bottom. And I just run, you know, And but I mean, I, I, I got out there, and I realized that it was getting shallower and shallower and shallower, and I came in from the south side, and, uh, you know, it was on one of those ditches or something out there, and um man it got so shallow i was like i better get off this but then i had once i came off pad i was just like idling for or i mean it couldn't even hardly idle you know you have to patrol the motor in the water i mean it was that shallow and i was like man if this damn tide keeps going like i'm gonna be on dry land <laughs> but anyway so i eight, hour and a half later i finally got off that sucker but it was uh dang we ended up where we end up it's where we end up catching fish later that day you know but the tide was just all the way gone i probably should just stayed out there but uh, I ended up running to that that wall where you just put that video where I went to after I got off there. Come on, was man. I was joking uh, with Brian. I was like, because uh, he was trying to tell me somewhere he thought they were going to go. And I was like, are you in front of them condos? It looks like that cove up there on the Potomac that's got the bridge. Because you know? those condos in the Aquacon look like that. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like it kind of, you know. And he's like, nah, we're not in there, man. Sorry. And I'd run all the way. Anyway, I was running around. But yeah. Oh, that's funny, man. Hey, well, Eric, did you ask his his sister about if she believed in uh, – what did you ask her if she believed in Bigfoot? In Bigfoot, yeah, yeah Bradley. <laughs> why, why didn't you ask her if she believed in vampires, dude? You missed your opportunity. <laughs> oh, she, she has to believe. She's a sibling with one, so well, I figured we'd ask a more pressing question. Oh, that's funny, man. Come on. Come on. Uh, Travis, oh. we learned a lot about you tonight, Travis. This explains many things. Does it really? I don't know <laughs> about that. Smiling, man, it does. <laughs> no, I'm smiling because BTC is texting me here. Bring him on, dude. Stuff. Let's five five. It's it, bro. up Come to on. him, bro. He said he drank. I think he's had a lot to drink. Yeah, bring him on. Good. Well, if BTC perfect. comes on, we can debut the new backdrop that I still got <laughs> waiting in the. I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna. We'll find out. Bradley, what's up with you? What are what's what's new? What's on the agenda? What you got going on the next couple of weeks? A classic. Am I going to see any of you guys next week in Texas? I'll be down Dang. there. I just sent you some pictures of like. I some, saw that. What was that? A belt no, buckle? Those are bass fishing belt buckles of the giveaway for <laughs> derbies down there. That's so <laughs> yeah. crazy. Different than That's you cool. guys, right? Right. So it's like. That's what you shit. get? You get a belt buckle? Yeah, you get a belt buckle. In Oklahoma or something or what? Yeah, Oklahoma, Texas. I think that one was one of Castle Dines at 2003. I think the other one I sent you is like one of the original like. Bassmaster belt buckles, probably from back in the day. Man, those are badass. That's awesome, man. That's something for the bathroom right there, bro. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. I put that on my bass lab ball for sure. No, honestly, you know, I mean, that? I just like I like listening to you guys because it's like it's just different, you know. Y'all's accents are different. The things you talk about. I was sitting here tonight thinking about the the grass that you're talking about. Like, if we have grass conversations down here, dude, it all revolves around hydrilla. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. It's all hydrilla. I mean, we just you know millful. Doesn't really, I mean, we have a little bit, but not very much, and it doesn't really exist. And then you go to places like the Upper Bay and Potomac, and I mean, Mill Falls, King Kong, and it, it is it, different, it, totally different. It is, it is. I mean, we're still catching it in, in hydrilla beds for sure, man, but it's just a different kind of fishing. When you got good, 
you know, milfoil or coontail. I mean, right now in the Potomac, I mean, star grass is the star, right? Uh, yeah. The milfoil's taking a big hit. It changes every year, and that's what makes the grass equation so difficult and so challenging, but fun, right? A lot of eel grass, too, you know, different way to, to, to look for bass. But, um, yeah, there's a mixture out there. But the Potomac, there's some there's some strong milfoil coming up this year. But uh, in, in the past, it's been dominated by, by hydrilla. So you got to adjust, man. So, yeah, they're, they're total grass fisheries. I mean, good hard cover in the spring. But once that yeah. grass gets on, it's hard to beat, you know. It stays clean. But you, you, right. the pattern can get wrecked with wind, man. That's the that's the old catch-22, right? You better have Bradley, what's your what's your favorite way to fish? <clears throat> Whatever way I can get a freaking bite. <laughs> Is that no like the fun I, fish? No, like what's something question. you really enjoy doing? Like you're excited to do. Like you know you're going out somewhere and this is a technique or the type of structure you're gonna fish. Where would be your not necessarily it doesn't even have to be your strength, just like the most enjoyable way to catch a bass in your mind? Probably sight fishing. I mean, I like sight fishing a lot, right? It's it's a lot of fun for everybody. I think everybody kind of gets that. Um, it is not the most enjoyable way to fish a tournament. I think we'll all agree upon that. Mm. Um, but it's nerve-wracking, you know. But, uh, yeah, I think fun fishing. I mean, sight fishing is a lot of fun. I like it a lot. Mm. That's interesting. So when when people think – or say sight fishing, there's, in my mind, there's two things that come into play. There's bed fishing and there's sight fishing for cruisers. Right. I'm a sight fishing for cruisers. That would be my favorite technique. Really? And I, I get the feeling you don't ex get to experience that too much. I can probably say I've probably caught less than 10 fish in my life doing what you're talking about and it's wow. all been by accident and i would say even out of those 10 five of them are probably those sick ones you know those big floaters just got like the stores all over them, <laughs> trying to snag over them. <laughs> and you flip out there and you're like holy shit he just ate my bait <laughs> i saw one of those in a derby the other day we couldn't get him to eat man but i was we needed a three and a half pound every, would every now and now then Every now and then, those sick ones will fool you, dude. That's like a five pounder, and she'll roll over and smoke it. And she's got sores all over. And you're like, man, man I put her in the live wheel. The hell, she's a five pounder, and you caught her, you, you know? You got to. Yeah, you know, man. one thing One thing I love to do, and I don't get to experience it too much because, especially in the northern fisheries, when you think of fry garters, those fry garters typically are still on beds or in that right there. Right. Down south, you know, even like Carolinas, like, like, I'm just thinking of a lake, Lake Murray, for instance, was, was where I first experienced this. One of the funnest ways for, for myself when, when I'm thinking of that technique is, is the fry gutters when they're not necessarily on beds, but they might be under a dock and we don't get to experience. We see the fry and I'm sure we cast them, but you don't see that fish hovering mm -hmm. underneath that floating dock and stuff like that. And to me, that's a pretty cool way to fish that I just don't get to experience that often either. I, I do love that technique. How, do, how does the sight fishing work for uh, roamers? I guess you're talking about brown fish when you're talking about that. Most of the, yeah, I would say pretty much all the time. Um, you, when you just get up shallow and you actually can see the fish swimming in their natural environment, they may or may not know you're there. And you're just able to to know before you cast, you're like you know that's a five or six pounder and you try to catch them. So is it usually singles like that or are they wolf packs? Both, but a lot of times it's that single that's, you know, you're, you're on the trolling motor for 50, hundred yards, 200 yards, right. shit, half the day. And all of a sudden there he is. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's super, super exciting for me like that. I live bass fishing when, when I can do that technique, that's one of my favorite ways to do it. I, I just, what are your, what are your top techniques to catch those cruiser hair jig? What else? No, so believe it or jig. not, I little hair, but I'm I'm a mm -hmm. finesse, you know, the small finesse plastics and and definitely like a drop shot. So, mm -hmm. uh, you could burn a spinner bait past them. Okay. I, I like to burn a spinner bait to locate cruisers, okay, and then go back to them with a little finesse bait because a lot of times they'll show themselves, just like when we had Austin on and and some of the other guys that were talking about swim baits. Uh, a big swim bait can be used, I guess, which I haven't experienced too much, but that's another way to pull fish. I know you do that, Eric, down 
yeah. and the Carolinas a lot to, to visually see pack, that fish. When they wolf pack, Travis mm -hmm. and I fished a, uh, I mean, Austin and I fished a big bass tournament on Norm and Bradley, and uh, they were cruising at this point, you know, wolf packing on the banks, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, we both were throwing rats, and it was thrilling. I mean, thrilling. Lost some, caught some, and they cracked that rat. It's crazy, dude. You don't catch a ton, but the ones you can catch are, are good ones. You just got to make sure that two doesn't eat it before the four in, in the wolf pack. And there's no way to do that. It's, <laughs> it's maddening, man. It's maddening. At one point, Austin literally – so I went on the Zuma rat in practice. And I, don't ask me why we I didn't bend my hooks back on my Nizuma. I lost the winning fish in practice. Didn't even catch him. But Austin was like, you just lost us the boat. And I'm like, dude, it's practice. Like, I didn't – and they were crushing this Nizuma rat. And he's got these custom rats from the NC and stuff. And now come turn – and he's laying that rat under this undercut bank or low-hanging trees, and I mean feathering it in there. Man, I'm plunking it down, dude. We're both throwing braid, and I'm getting the bites, and I don't know why. It was like, was mine a squirrel falling out of the tree? I, who knows why? But the next day, it was a totally different bite. But uh, at one point, we see this wolf pack, and he spots it first. He makes the cast to the wolf pack, but the sun is shining down so that I see this bass, which is like four pounds. It has the rat pinned to the bottom. I can see it. And I'm like, dude, set the hook, set the hook. And he sets it late and, and sets on air. Man, he takes the whole rod and reel with the rat and throws it 100 yards, man. And just like, I'm like, dude, you're going to need that rod, man. So, like, I cast, I get the rod back with the rat. He's, he's an emotional guy, but he can fish his ass off. But that rat bite, it's, it's a specialized thing. I guess it only happens when they wolf pack, but it's a blast catching them, man. Hey, guys, that's real quick. Well, I, that's a great rat story, Eric. Uh, BTC Sorry. is down below. I'm trying to get a, a audio. Hey, <laughs> to the sea. My you, all right? you all right, buddy? Yeah, man. Tired. <laughs> I mean, he's got a job, Travis. Yeah, I, I got, I got, I got a couple jobs. What's You're up? working, man? Well, uh, we appreciate right. you, you coming on, real jobs, dude. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Oh, uh, this is going to get taken down. I, don't, no, I, love, that, I love that guy. BTC, I want to hear about your Ike Foundation Derby. Um, <laughs> it wasn't too good, man. Is all your stuff still for sale? Yeah, everything's for sale, dude. I don't know. Well, for, yeah. Did you fish clean, man? Is your shirt half oh. on, dude? Yeah. <laughs> Did I did I hear y'all say that that thing was for a boat? Was first place a boat? Yeah. Is that what I heard y'all say earlier? Yeah, it's a bass bass cat cat. Market. Damn! How many got how many boats y'all got in that derby? One fifty. And, and first place is a boat. Yeah, yeah. And that's all it draws. I think that's like a cap. Limited. They had to limit it that's for COVID. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Do what? Get a boat? COVID. Okay, yeah, it, I know you're in Oklahoma, but out here on the East Coast, it's uh, there's this major pandemic going around. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you get to Texas, dude. We're all going to be together. There's going to be no mask, no nothing. You are going to know nothing about a pandemic. I promise. <laughs> oh, shit. So, Bradley, just mention the classic real quick. I know you're a fantasy fishing savant. Do you have a pick or someone you feel confident oh. in that can win the classic? Uh, I'm getting my ass kicked so bad in fantasy fishing this year. Uh, we're supposed to shoot Andrew's show tomorrow, and I will make my picks probably within two minutes before he uh, goes live, <laughs> before he hits the record button. Oh, my God. He's, he's in the bar. Look at that. <laughs> you look like a, you're wearing a Roman cape, man, like in, in, in Roman days, dude. What are you, what are you doing, man? Um, uh, <laughs> so I was – I don't know. I don't know why. This might go down like as one of the Caesar best fucking a... lives we've ever had. <laughs> yes. He looks like J Julius Caesar. Did you see my cat knock my plane off my high shelf? Yeah. <laughs> my floating shelf? The dude, the dude like jumped down 10 feet, walked across like a transom on a window, and jumped to the next thing and knocked the plant down. Damn. Let me know in the comments how you guys are liking this live. I think it's pretty epic. It, it's a good one. It's a good one. So what you guys cover so far tonight? Uh, well, you know, the 
12 pound Tom knee. He's no longer 12 pound Tom knee, but he still wants to be called 12 pound Tom knee. What do you finish? Six? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nine yeah. ounces out of the wind or something like that. Yeah, and his dad will be referred to as 24 pound, uh, pound Johnny Senior. Senior. Johnny Senior, yes. Did you guys get Senior. three other guys that won it? Now, who won it? Can you tell us the background? I don't know. I didn't even know their name. I don't. I didn't look. So I so, thought we saw them on the flat, anchored with a rope. I don't think it was them. <laughs> the dude had an orange shirt on, dude. There was only one dude on the flat. There was a guy, you know. And listen, they they were making, they were doing what they had to do. They didn't have power poles, so they were throwing an anchor out and they, and calling they, fish Travis, right in front of us. Tra tra Travis, they didn't move. Sit down, and listen to country music. No. Some Luke Bryan, and uh, I heard a little bit of uh, Kenny no. Chesney. What's that? Country music. What kind of does Luke Bryan does Luke Bryan qualify as country music? I'm just asking. <laughs> no. Okay. Not sure. KVD would beg to differ. He just filmed the show with him. BDC, tell us, tell us how they did it, man. Talk to us, bro. So, so uh, it was Mark Schaefer. Uh, if anybody there doesn't know who Mark Schaefer, he's an old school. Friend. Dude, back in the day, it's one of the guys that, uh, when Mike was getting started in the Jersey in the Federation. Sam, Pete Lusick, uh, Dave, Bob Stoley, Mark Schaefer. It was like you know, those were the guys that that were um, you know out there tearing it up. It was a pretty pretty badass uh, crew of guys coming from, out of Jersey. And um, so we got you know so Mark and 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 Mike and the rest of them guys kind of have a long history. Um, but Mark's gone through, you know, some really tough times the last couple of years. He's endured a two-year battle with cancer and and mm -hmm. um, kind of coming out on the other side of that. Fished this tournament with his daughter. So I think it's the first event he's jumped in in a while. And uh, first one he's fished with his daughter. And uh, they got on him, man. He put a freaking Senko in her hand. Uh, wow. They all waited Senko and... They had an area. They had a little area to themselves too. But dang, yeah, it was bad. I mean, like that's awesome. They were the ones that were supposed Man. to win. It sounds yeah. like it. Yeah, it Man. Was, it was, yeah, fa father, son last year. Tom and John, father, daughter. That's pretty year. cool. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, wow. for sure. And a guy that's had a hard road, man. Man. Yeah. Yep. We had him. Did Nike Live last night, kind of threw it together last minute. Had him in studio. Um, I had Soli and, and Mansu jump on the Zoom, and it was it was oh, pretty fun. A lot of, I thought, I'm going to watch that. That's good so, stuff, BTC. Uh, yeah. Once again, man, you're putting it together, bro. Yeah. He always does. How do you do it, dude? I don't know. I don't know. Huh? How about Brad, dude? How about, how about my man? Yeah. <laughs> He's week, awesome. Dude. I can't believe he's on the show. It's cool. Dude, I was just sitting here thinking I've met, I don't know how many guys in the last whatever through fishing. I, I think BTC is probably my favorite person that I've honestly met through all of fishing. That ain't no bullshit, dude. Oh, he's, he's legit. Fact. He's legit. Yeah. Dude, I'm right there with you, Bradley. Right there with I, you, man. Can I get you guys to write a note to my wife? <laughs> I sure will. I think we, we covered that ground last time to get you the hall pass to New York, and it worked. What can we do this time, Bradley? We got to brainstorm. That's a note to his wife. <laughs> I'm not very good at writing notes. I'll make my wife write it for you if you want for me if you'd like. I mean, I'll make it sound like it's coming from me, but you know, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't need that. But yeah, that's cool. So what else? Yeah, we <laughs> why? Well, my sister joined us quickly. Um, talked about how bad I was growing up, and then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shit, what else? That's about it, man. That sums up this live. Wait, you got a sister? I do. <laughs> really? Yeah, oh. you missed it. I, I think she's young. She's younger. She's younger than me. Right, that's <laughs> because you never mentioned her. Keep going. I, I was waiting for her to claim that that wasn't the case either. After you were like, you shot a deer, you caught a bass. What is it? You know, and <laughs> I'm waiting for her to say, and I'm not, you're not my brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Nah, and you I'm thought she good. shot a deer, and you thought she shot a bass. I did. But you remembered locking her in the closet for an hour, and she said it was eight It wasn't eight hours, later. Eric. Come on. We have and supervision. You, you think red. some babysitter's going to let me lock her in a closet for eight hours? She she exaggerates <laughs> okay. a little bit. Apparently, you were the babysitter, dude. 
the bad babysitter. <laughs> you did say the there was no babysitter. From hell. Dude, you got to check that memory, bro. Check that Anyways, BTC, what do you got going on here? You- I was just trying to find out what her Instagram is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes BTC the best in the business. He will, he will slide it in, uh, and you don't even know it's coming. Sorry. It's so damn good. It's on point, man. It's just like right to the heart. That's a hard shot, bro. I thought you were in bed when I texted you. Now you're drinking? I was. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes BTC BTC, man. Somebody say you look a- like you got done hitting the heavy bag, BTC. <laughs> this is a good look. I just uh, I took a quick shot here and put it on the Instagram story, and you look pretty legit there. Yeah, you know, the rough part, <sighs> I can't see because I'm right. all... So I don't know what I look like right now. <laughs> look amazing. <laughs> Pretty badass. I'm really putting it out there. Hey, hey so BTC, when are you? I got something coming for you. Hold on, BTC. See if you the sticker that Goonie Wolf did. Rise and glide. Hold on. Okay, get it right. Rise and glide. So, dude, that's for you, bro. Slap's coming your way, bro. Nice, man. <laughs> Slap hack. That's right. BTC, when you get into the classic? Wednesday. Okay. Oh my Either God. Thursday. We'll probably, have to, we'll have to probably grab a couple drinks. You're going, Trev? Every year. Right on, dude. Mm-hmm. He would miss it for the world, man. Uh, Sunday night, die. what's going on? No Ike Live, nothing. We're about to make some. Why don't we do a small mouth live dude. party? Boom. Can I put, put that together top. in one day? Yeah, Wi Fi. Shit. Uh, That's a lot. That's a lot. On Sunday night? Yeah, we need to do, do it, something man, Sunday do night. I think There's something's going on. There's got to be something going on Sunday night. Is Duncan doing anything? Saturday night, it's Duncan's shindig. Oh, yeah? Yeah, big one. Oh, it's cool. When's he sending out invites? Uh, it's freaking posted right there on his last uh, show he did. It's like right on the front of it, inviting the whole world. Why didn't we do that, Eric? Yeah, Dude, you guys could have done happy. a show right here. You could have done it Sunday. You could still do it. Mm, you could do good. a show. Um, uh, Friday night, dude, y'all have got to experience. Maybe not Friday night. Maybe Thursday night before it starts. But at some point, man, you guys have got to experience Billy Bob's. This is the local bar in Fort Worth. And, um, dude, it's Texas size. I think oh. Billy Bob's – I think Billy Bob's – this is no exaggeration, dude. I think Billy Bob's Texas is the name of the bar – I think it's 10,000 square feet. What? Holy there, crap. No shit, dude. There's like two or three restaurants inside. What? Um, there's usually two, anywhere from two to three live bands playing. They have an indoor, they have an indoor bull riding arena inside the damn bar. So like they could have live bull riding going on. No, you're talking about a live bull. Hell yeah, in the dirt. No, bull they ride. don't. Swear to God, dude. Not what? mechanical kind. The, dude, the their parking lot, their parking lot is 30 acres. 30 oh. freaking <laughs> acres. Like, this is Fort Worth, Texas, right? Billy Bob's, Texas. You guys have got to experience that. I mean, you can't even. When the there. fuck am I gonna get any sleep? Exactly. <laughs> <You're not. laughs> During the day. <laughs> I was supposed to now because I'm way short. Jeez. Yeah. BTC. Just don't, don't, don't buy. <laughs> Let's do Billy Bob. Dude, this is going to be unreal. Yeah, it's going to be. Epic. I mean, it, it's great that Texas ended up being this year because with we're like we're talking about, like where we are with COVID and stuff, or yeah. worse, probably the best place we could be to actually, you know, for the guys that want to live life normal. Like, if you want to wear a mask, I'm not knocking you. Just don't come to Texas and be pissed at anybody because ain't nobody gonna put one on when you look at them funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what about, dude? I saw a guy drive through an intersection today, a UPS driver. You know, and they got the door the open door it's fucking mad when i was so mad <laughs> <laughs> he forgot dude they're so used to it. they're conditioned bro that was the whole point uh, of this to get was, you conditioned oh, oh no tell him travis tell you're, you're overthinking it bro Stop. he's conditioned there find, 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 find something else to care about bro like be a better be a better bass fisher it's still if they, they make me wear a mask i wear this one you can what is that? There you go. Oh, Travis, you, Travis, Travis, you win, man. Just quit bitching about it. Shut up. Find something new to bitch about, dude. I'm tired of it. Really. It's over. It's over. Is it? 
Are you Dr. Fauci? If Dr. Fauci tells me it's over, then it's over. Until then, don't tell me, Dr. Eric. <laughs> Go back to the bass lab because you're not Dr. I didn't Fauci. Say, I didn't say a word. I just said stop bitching about it. I'm tired of your bitching. Shut up. Move on, bro. It's over. Done. I, did, I just came back. I just came back from Florida, and I, so I flew on a plane. And um, obviously, the planes are still wearing them. They wear them in the airports, but Florida itself was pretty open. Like if you go into yeah, a restaurant or anywhere, nobody's wearing them. The employees of most businesses do wear them, um, but that's that's pretty much it, you know. Do you see the uh, guy run, running? Uh, oh shoot, what's his name? Uh, I think it's Italian name. The guy in in, in Florida. The governor? Yeah. DeSantis. DeSantis, yeah, yeah, yeah. His his, uh, his slogan, make America Florida. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say that. That's pretty good. You got to give it to him. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty good. Man, I, I, hope this is a, I hope this is a classic. I make it back in one piece. Yeah, Travis was Hey, by the way. Let's see. Remember, Travis? You literally thought. You told me when I arrived. I might not Knoxville, survive. You're weekend. like, I think. I, no, you said I think I'm I'm gonna die. And I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? And he goes, No, literally, I think I'm gonna die. And I'm just like, I talked to him for 15 minutes, and he he was convinced he was gonna die. His body was just gonna give out. And I'm like, dude, just go Ed take a nap. I, I said, just, just go take a nap. And he did. And he goes, I feel better now. That was before the last Ike Live party. Oh, as we're know, walking the Ike Live party, I looked at Eric as we got off that golf cart and said, this might be my last night on earth because my body's going to have God. to shut down at some point and it's getting really close. And I'm slightly scared, but I'm still going to go and rock this party. Bingo. <laughs> and we did. You can't live forever, right? Well, you might. We, we did, man. No, he's Dracula. He can't. He lives 400 years, bro. Uh, Bradley, so <laughs> talk to us because I haven't been paying attention. The yeah. lake, because I'm real curious about the morning commute. The lake yeah. from the uh, downtown area to the lake. How long of a ride is that? Because I got to get up every morning to go to that. I'm oh. sorry. Are you it's serious? A long damn Are you yeah. serious? Oh yeah. Like no. under yeah, under an hour. No. Hour and a half. Under an hour and a half, but oh, probably. Oof hour and 10 i'm guessing i mean if you're going early in the morning there's no one there and you're shooting right, it's not like early. grand lake from uh it's ballpark like grand lake yep from tulsa <laughs> I, <it's, laughs> but, but we're talking about dallas fort worth traffic that's the difference so like, yeah dude, give me on, knoxville we, give me knoxville we walk down to the ramp yeah, i have it's not, it's not like that a classic yet and i've been like travis just take an uber and sleep on the way bro no michelle is gonna well, want me there at four a.m. Why? Why you gotta be at the water every morning? Because we gotta hand out freaking mercury beanies to everybody. And you need to be more like me. Michelle doesn't even know I exist. <laughs> like, be part of the be part of the non known group. Dude. That's the only reason why I go down there, man. <laughs> to work for Mercury. I get it. Travis, there's a couple people asking in the comments. They want to know if you'll be licking any doorknobs this year and down in Texas. No. Talk okay. about a scandemic. But tell <laughs> tell the truth, bro. I, tell the truth. Tell the truth. I put now. a YouTube video up at the last classic saying that this is stupid and nobody should be worried. And I licked doorknobs and YouTube pulled it down. And by the way, you cleaned them before you licked them. Tell the truth. Of course I did. It was for show. Exactly. So I'd love to see you lick a doorknob and not clean. Unclean? It. You would. <laughs> oh yeah. No, because you you are a little bit of a germaphobe, bro. Be honest. This I did be suck straight. on that bluegill. Y'all That's seen the weird that. part. You got some funny stuff going on. I do. <laughs> so what night y'all? What night y'all want to go to Billy Bob's? Because I would like to be involved. Uh, Thursday, tonight. Friday, Saturday, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Hey, I'm in. Damn. Hey, I got Monday. Uh, Travis, you flying? Yeah. What what day? I fly in Thursday midday. I, I gotta hit hit up Whole Foods. I'm back on the keto. And then uh Monday I fly out like Monday afternoon. Yeah, I fly out Monday, late day Monday. So like me and Rich got Monday open for anybody in that area that's really cool and not creepy and wants to take a fishing. Ah you know what they mm. can be creepy. They can be creepy. Yeah. Yeah. 
as long as <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Are you going to go on Lake Louisville? Is that is that your plan? I have no plan. I want to go catch fish. Well, yeah, Louisville has only got like five in it. So good luck. Probably don't want to go there. Man. Oh, that's freaking terrible. Is it? I bet it's better than every lake in Jersey, but no, it's not. Mm. <laughs> Maybe. I, I shouldn't knock it. I mean, well, the hell, there's nobody on here from Texas watching right now. Is there in the middle of the night? Yeah, Louisville sucks. Yeah, fuck. Mm. It sucks. Damn. So what's that? What are you going to take to win, Bradley? Oh, it'll take a bunch up there in the water size. Okay. So um, it's going to be good for the guys. Oh, that, good. Um, it's going to be bush flipping, you know, on the bank. It's going to be mm. the guys that get to the bank. I mean, I haven't seen the lake level. I don't know what it is. Brian New sent me a text like three days ago, and he was in the middle of the damn jungle floating in the woods, and he put some kind of goofy text in there to me. And th- there's a lot of water in that place and a lot of wow. stuff underwater. So um, I don't imagine they're going to drain it that quick. So, so it's not going to be an offshore bite? Hell no. Good. Wow. No, it's going to be six inches That'll- deep. Huh. Yeah, Jason Christie and all those guys are going to be licking their chops, dude. It's, it's mm. right up there, wheelhouse. It may be the one Jason wins. He Holy or hack here. moly, man. It'll be one of those stone cold killers that just came back, probably. Flippers oh. Delight. That's awesome. Damn. That's right. That's good. <sighs> Better offshore tournament. So. Bradley, you just mentioned you think it's going to be a flipping deal. How cool would it be to you if someone won the Bassmaster Classic on the BFE? Oh, it would be badass, but that's um, what I'm talking about. I don't know anybody there that will be flipping it. Um, I'm just thinking sponsor wise, you know. I mean, will, will they be flipping it without the big bite sponsorship, you think? They could be flipping it and bitten. Man, they're sneaky. I, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, there there could be a potential of that, but um, man, as it starts to warm up, I mean, honestly, my true feeling is is that you need a little action once the water starts to warm up. You know, something more like a brush hog, something with some kicking legs, okay. and that's not what the BFE is. The BFE is really designed to have pretty much no action, you know, or smaller amount of action for either punching or or colder water, you know, earlier in the spring. Hmm. Gotcha. Well, at this Great point question. in the show, we got to ask BTC, what the hell are you doing over there in the dark, bro? Huh? Now you look, it just turned the lights out. You trying to go back to sleep? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> what you got to do tomorrow? You got to, you got you to, gotta, you got to build a bathroom or what? Uh, I got tomorrow. I got Finish up a couple jobs. Yeah, I got three kitchens to look at tomorrow. Damn. I got my guys on a couple jobs during the, uh, this week while I'm away. So it's just a matter of getting all that set up. And and then I got it. As soon as I get that done, I got to switch gears and start booking guests for Bass U. Hey, dude, do you and your brother, do y'all like jump back and forth and help each other with each other's jobs or yeah. y'all like totally separate? No, y'all do? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, Bill's 12 years older than me. So earlier on, it was all him and then it was 50 50. And now it's mostly me. Right. You know, he's getting towards the but slowing down. You know, take it easy, bro. So, dang, all I can think about is Billy Bob's. I know Matt's gonna join us. I, I, I got a text from Matt, um, from BTL a little while ago, and he was like, Are we down? I'm like, Yeah, we're down. Dude, that's gonna be awesome. This, man. this is this is the one Eric should be at. Epic, epic, man. You missed it. You I missed know. it. Why are you not coming, know, dude? Uh, I'm practicing on curve. My, my my team partner Scooter Lily, his title sponsors got a, a two day on on Bugs Island in Carolina. So we're practicing Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday. It's two separate tournaments, and uh, you know they've got a shortened tournament year. Um, so we need to qualify for the championship. He's got to fish it. So I get it. So, yeah. Yep. So te- and, uh, Texas is going to be Texas is going to be fun. I mean, it's going to be good. And good. I think we'd be able to party about every night and somehow make it through <laughs> the day every day. And I don't know exactly how that works, but I've been able to do it up till now. So I imagine I can keep on doing it. Yeah, you can handle it. <laughs> One more weekend. Oh you better come back with some. Epic yeah, where are you? Where's everybody staying? I'm at the Omni. I don't know what that means, but that's where I'm at. I'm at the. I think Panger and I both are. I think Panger and I are in the same damn room. I think um, oh. we're in the Hyatt. The Hyatt, I believe, is what I was told. Okay. 
Everything should probably be around that zone. I think uh, BTC, you're more of a what super eight Haldan type of guy <laughs> on, that, <laughs> on that on that on that on that fast live budget. Uh, uh, wow. You're actually right. Like th- we both been in the spot while you was. Up. Isn't it? Isn't it you, Pete Lusick, and like two other guys share a room normally? Nah. <laughs> uh, just me, Pete, or yeah. He yeah. called it fast live. You run By the fast live show, right? Fast right? you, PTC. whatever. Yeah, Pete. 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 <laughs> Interesting. Uh, uh, roommate. <laughs> if anybody knows, Pete's just the nicest guy in the world. Just. Just, he's just Pete. He's like a, he's like a, a an Ewok or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> just like fuzzy and happy, and, like a nice, a nice, unthreat, non-threatening, you know, entity. And um, but entity. In, 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 I, I, yeah. In his sleep, he's dude, awesome. He, oh, that's fucking crazy. He what? He works it all out in his sleep. He's over there. <laughs> he, he works it all out in his sleep. What do you What do you mean? He, you know, he works it out. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. Guys. I want to hear. I'm telling you, he's 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 over there fighting in his sleep. He's, he's oh, he's he's punching his pillow. He's cursing. His, <laughs> I told you no. You know. What I mean? <laughs> he talks. <laughs> Yeah, Pete in his sleep. Pete sleep. He's yeah. I, I gotta tell a quick story about Pete. This happened about two, three weeks ago at the BFL or MLF or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Don't call um, it. so the coolest thing ever happened. I'm not gonna give details, but I because I don't want to but what happened was he was fishing next to me in the morning and I didn't know it was him. And he did something I dream about doing the way he caught a bass. And I screamed at him. I didn't know it was him. I go, yeah, that's how it's done because I always wanted to do that. What do you and do? I, was so, I can't say it because it would kind of give oh. away some, some things. It was just something really cool. Damn. Maybe that's you know it. what I'm talking about. Eric. Hey, BTC, is Pete up? Would he come on the show right now? No, he ain't coming on. No. He didn't even come on. <laughs> Listen, so anyways. He goes so, to me. So he catches this fish. I, I'm just, I'm so proud of this dude over there because I'm like, that's what I always wanted to do. And, and as they get closer to him, he goes, Travis, is that you? I go, yeah. I go, oh, Pete. I'm, and we're talking. And uh, anyways, that's just, that's the story. Just a cool fucking that's thing. That's so I get crazy. To Pete, dude. Somebody just said that's so crazy that the floating fly would work on the flats like that. It's just nuts. <laughs> no, it was. <laughs> It was sort of flipping over something, but it wasn't a bulkhead. Okay. Oh, it wasn't his you motor know what I'm like right over I, a four pounder you had on the bed? Travis? And yeah, and by the way, his back of his motor was on a, a four plus pounder I had marked on a bed. That's so. And uh, I don't, I never talked to him yet. You know, since then, I don't know if he found it or not. But I went back later in the day, and there was uh, mu- muddy water, so I couldn't couldn't get it. But whatever. I've got to uh, step in here and correct myself. I went back and read some of the comments of your listeners. Yeah. And they are correct. I'm a complete dumbass. Oh. They are. Well, they they're right. Been. They're right. They're right. There's no yeah. Christie. There's no Hackney. So, I mean, what? they're not in the damn classic. No. Oh, not. yeah. Because they're, they're not. They would be. Yeah, well, I've, you know, I'm I'm three in, and I'm just thinking off the top of my head. I told you I hadn't <laughs> looked at the damn uh, deal as fantasy. That's true. Right? That's true. You didn't. They, you they've got a great point. I'm a, I'm a complete idiot. <laughs> yeah, those, those guys were MLFing over there, so they, they have no right to be in there. You're 110 correct. There you go. Oh, that's what? funny. So fun. Yeah, I think KVD will do pretty good this weekend. Yeah, Van Damme's going to win it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so hold on. All right, so this bothers the shit out of me. MLF is the fucking pro trail, right? Yeah. Why do we got to call whatever the Toyota series, whatever? We can't be calling that MLF too, right? Yeah. I still call it FLW. I know. I do too, but I get yelled at for that. It's the big five or something. Mm -hmm. Like, what trail is it? I can't keep it straight. Same name for two, three different trails. Can't keep it straight. I agree. I, it fucking drives me nuts, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> right there with you, now. Huh. Have- Ooh. We get, grab another beer? Yeah, well, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Can you stream yeah. from open fridge? Because you look good there, dude. <laughs> Just keep that shit open. Oh, everything's MLF. 
Big five. Just, yeah, just come out with the big five, bro. For everything. That's yeah. Stupid. Um. Yeah. Back to you. So, real quick, dude. I didn't get. I'm sure you guys already talked about how you shit the bed on the Chesapeake and yep. and whatever. Give me just real quick, real quick. What happened? I believe we fished too fast. Okay. That's All right. It. So, well, we talked about it afterwards at the weigh-ins. Mm -hmm. My observation, if you had your power poles down, you were catching them. If you had your power poles down and you were sitting down, dial. <laughs> at that point. Or if you had no power poles and an anchor sitting down listening to country music, you were catching them. Boom. You can oh, yeah, they were. Dude, Travis, every time we trapped past that boat, they were calling. I was like, that's crazy, man. And I go to Eric at some point. I'm like, how in the fuck are all these guys calling fish? Are we dude, that freaking bad? All day long, I was, Eric, I'm like, hey, dude, what that is guy our was problem? He had, a he had a swim jig on. I watched him do this. He was winching it like John Lee described to the guys like this. Like as slow as he could reel that jig. Know, I, I watched him. Dude, I watched him. Isn't that what Tom and his dad? I mean, I, I got up. I did have what, to run. I had to go run, but isn't that what Tom and his dad were talking about doing? Swimming the jig, yeah, super mm -hmm. swimming the jig, but but literally winching it slow and low, and not no action, no shaking, no popping it, no snapping it. Them suckers no. are the and then, suckers are sitting on the beds. What they're doing, you think? And yeah. then I think uh, I think some were postponed and you, some were spawned. There's so plenty postponed. I caught a pre I caught a pre spawner. Yeah. You know, Friday. I mean, I did. Travis, I, that was. Good. Hey guys, I'm just gonna give you a five minute warning before we forget. Uh, if you do a super chat, you're entered into yes. that drawing. We're gonna draw that here shortly because I don't want to forget. You get some smallmouth crush buff, some Merkley, Berkeley, Merkley, some Merkley Maxent, <laughs> and some uh, Merkley Maxent. Yeah, some Merkley Maxent. <laughs> Merkley. That bag awesome. of monster bass. Yeah, Merkley. Merkley and Berkeley. That's right. I like it. Oh, mm -hmm. Rise and Glide, baby. Show me that again there, BTC. Well, you got, man. Ooh. Oh, dude, it's looking fine, bro. What's that little pink one that's out there? Pinky that's duty, that man. That's the goldfish, bro. Yeah. Will it yeah, work? Cast, I need, cast that in the middle for you, Nick Weed. That'll come, back, that'll come back clean every time. <laughs> You don't know nothing about it, man. Eric, you don't know either, man. Just throw your little worm, bro. Hey, dude, you fifty. Don't oh, me I'm off. You want to get aggressive? Come on. You want to get aggressive? <laughs> hey, I think I showed you in Alabama what it was all about, right? You give me the front of the boat for fifteen minutes, I put the six in. That's right. Not what a goldfish now? colored. Oh, who said I was gonna throw a goldfish, man? Come or a on. milfoil? <laughs> lost, bro. <laughs> we go soft sided on that, man. The citizen in goldfish. Oh yeah, did you crazy color shot, shot? Hey Brian, you gotta look at that citizen, oh, bro. Who? I'll I'll tell you. Working class zero, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't. It's so hard to get a hold of. I got one for you. Uh, <laughs> I got one for you, bro. I mean your PayPal or whatever. <laughs> hey, uh, Travis. <laughs> What you drink on that keto diet that's alcoholic? Um, Tito's blood. and seltzer water. Tito's and blood. Tito's and blood. Is seltzer I, water like a carbonated mineral water? Just carbonated, yeah. And I, I put a little lemon, that little, you know, you can spike it with some. So we got a deal down here. It's called ranch water. And, okay. Uh, well, I'm going to introduce you to it when you get down here. It's totally right. keto friendly. It's uh, choco or chicho, chicho pinko, whatever that mineral Water, carbonated yeah. mineral water. Is out of Mexico? Okay. With uh, some freshly squeezed lime and a shot of your favorite tequila or two in it. Yeah. Mm. I'm just trying to uh, – I, I had a, a health scare, maybe, potentially. I don't know. Something's going on with my leg. Um, <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> dude, I, I don't go to the doctor for no reason, right? So I don't know what's going on. Part of me hopes that it's because I stand in the boat for 15 – I stand for 15 hours a day <gasps> for the last three months. And I'm hoping that's the problem. But then you start Googling, you start Googling shit, and next thing you know, it's a sign of cancer. It's a sign of blood clots. You, you can't ever Google, dude. Yeah. When you know something's wrong, it will straight, turn straight to a tumor every single time. <laughs> Everything is a tumor. I got a toothache. That shit is a tumor when you start Googling. Yeah. What are your symptoms? Just a sore leg, man. And I get some cramps, and it feels like, feels like things are crawling around on my legs sometimes. Twitches. All right, and, I, and it's nerves, dude. Yeah. What was that mean? 
Yeah, my nerves. It's a rare disease. And they have to cut your leg off sometimes. No, man. You got like fucking nerve, man. Relax. And then my, I told my sister this, and she goes, well, you know, if they cut your leg off, you're still going to feel it. And then that freaked me out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess it's true. Travis, so I, well, never mind. I won't talk about problems, but I got all kinds of like nerve issues. I got, I got a patch of skin on my. How do you get, how do you get diagnosed? It don't even bother, dude. It's a waste of time. <laughs> they never, they never come up with anything, but I got. You have things crawling in your skin. You feel them? Twitches and stuff, especially in the morning. Yeah, I got a spot on my back that itches all the time. It's just so much that it, I discolored the skin from scratching it. And it's, of course, in a spot that my beat ass shoulders can't reach. So I went to the dermatologist and they determined that it's not a discolored spot on your skin. It's, it's like no kind of skin cancer stuff. It's nerve related. So my nerves are telling me that there's an itch there. There ain't no itch. It's the nerves being an asshole because I got a fucked up back. Wow. I got, you know, I've got my right calf. Sometimes it just twitches. It looks like there's worms underneath there. It's just. Like daily or no? I haven't looked. And then, um, and then just recently my left leg, somewhere around my shin, right over there. It just feels like it's like I had a Novocaine shot. It's just fucking numb. I don't know Man. why. Sciatica. It's, it's just weird. So I might it's be nerves, okay. I just bro. might have little issues. Yeah. You, yep. yes. Okay. Yeah, you'll you're keep your leg. You die. You're gonna be that fine, dude. Travis. I'm you'll gonna fight fine, through bro. it, bro. I'll be up there fishing still without a leg. Yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> no, I promise you. <laughs> Tell you something. I'm going to be pissed as fuck. I'll be the maddest motherfucking fisherman out there without a damn leg, but I'm going to fish. Better on Saturday without him. Legs. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was the, that, was, that was the key to that bite. Travis, you losing your leg. We're winning next year, bro. We're doing it for you. Yeah. yeah, that was that was honestly that was embarrassing out there. Like Oliver and I came into town. How'd he do? Well, he he drove was, from New York because he was up in New York Wednesday, Thursday, Friday filming, and he and he was actually in a in a striper tournament up there on Friday, Friday night. Back to the room late, didn't even get dinner, and then they were on the road early uh, uh, Saturday morning to make it all the way from New York to Maryland to fish the event. So. I talked to him at like 5 a.m. He's like, bro, we're on no sleep. We got no food, no drink, like help me. So I had to put them on some wow. nourishment, but they went into a blind. And I was just head out to the flat and look for the crowd, right? I mean, what else can you tell them? But that was such a gross scene out there. It just wasn't, it just sucked. It's like, how many boats were out there? Sixty field seventy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, it'd be a good time to get Kevin out there and be like, yeah, this, this is the community, bro. You know? This is we saw him throwing really big baits. He threw the big bait. He was launching it, man. Yeah. By the time, but yeah, by the time I <laughs> saw him, he was down. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, sometimes give up. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I <swear. laughs> Travis looking at him. What'd you say, Travis? He'll learn real soon. Yeah, I said I go to Eric, I go, Eric goes, Hey, that's that's Oliver. He's he's throwing that big bait. And I look over to Eric and go, Yeah, he'll learn real quick not to throw that too much longer. So why is it? What's your logic there? Uh slow. Dead stick. Yeah, yeah, that's my logic. No, I we fig we figured that out after the But like, you know, there's there's a bait that can get you bites during the prime prime conditions. You know, we had that. Ma we were talking last weekend was that massive cold front coming off of a full moon, the last wave of really true spawners. There's still a handful. There's still 10, 15 percent that haven't spawned. But the, they really wanted to bed up Memorial Day weekend, 
and it turned out to be 40 degree nights and, and just windy and cold. And yeah. it affected those grass fish throughout that whole week. Weights were down. Weights were down the day before in that tournament. So down so much the scale weight light. That's now. right. That's right. <laughs> I weighed our big down. fish and they give, they give me like three, two. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, I'm way off here, I guess. Uh, yeah. He so, said, don't move. When he, when he, when I put the bag on, he goes, don't move. I knew something was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so Bradley, you fish a lot of tournaments and, you know, especially in the opens, even, even at the elite series level, do you ever think it's a possibility that someone could use win a four day event or even just a three day event using the glide bait or a big bait as their main tactic throughout the event? Yeah, there's time and a place. Um, it's funny you ask that. Cause I, I give some of my buddies a lot of shit about it um, because they're all, I mean, it's like the, it's like going to the, it's like going to the bar with your buddies in high school, you know, and you got this one buddy that doesn't have a chance in the world of picking up a girl, but yet he talks about the 10 that he could have got, you know, the 10 best looking girls in the place. And you're like, dude, hey. I mean, it's almost like going to a strip bar or something. I mean, like you're never, Going, I mean, you're just looking at a whole bunch of stuff, but you're never going to touch it. I give them <laughs> one kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and I, I give them hell about that because they're so committed to it. Like when stuff goes bad, the practice is not good. It's like, ah, oh, hell, I'm trying to go throw a glide bait all day. Well, what the hell for? I mean, nobody's standing on stage after four days going, I caught them all on a glide bait. Look at these monsters. Everybody's always in the damn bag around with two fish talking about all the giants that they looked at. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. That's just my opinion. I'm sure I'll get smashed. I'm right there. Smash him in the, no. in the comments, bro. He makes sense. Smash him in the comments. <laughs> no, yeah, and I'm nobody said it was a tournament bait, Travis. Alex, did did somebody in the message board bring that up? No, I brought that up in my head, but I thought about it because I remember <laughs> BTL about a year ago where Swindle was on and Matt asked him like pretty much the same. Why he's like, why don't you throw the glide bait? And he goes, Well, you ever write an article about someone winning a tournament on it? Goes, nope. <laughs> to, me, it's like, to me, it's like the damn booby bar. It honestly is. It's like that might be one of the you're never gonna touch it, but you can see it. Yeah, well Swindle's the wrong guy to ask. He's a he's a he's very much a keep it simple guy. Sure. He's like Pete Pete, you know, they're they're very oh, yeah. keep it simple. Travis Dean. Travis is a little bit like that. Um, you know, but you know, from what I've heard some guys talk about, you know, what makes it really tough for a big bait like that to play in, in these events is three days of three days of practice. All, you know, it's just the pressure, right? All yeah. that practice leading up to it and then the event, but into the event, like that's why you see so many smaller baits and finesse techniques that that, that play out during those events. It's just and I think that's 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 one of the things uh, Oliver's going to run into. Like I think if he was over in the NPFL throwing that glide bait, maybe he's got a better shot. Sure. You know, it's it's a different field, not quite as big, but that opens field. Yeah, that's, I don't know. Let's talk about this. I mean, educated wise, and and you guys help me with this because I I feel a little bit bad about not i'm terrible with names sometimes but there's a boy off the west coast who's been a badass out there for a long long time and he was on the mls slash flw that we were just talking about a minute ago Ty al Ty al and um, and i know him that's why i feel bad about even saying not not remembering his name but was ty, ty was throwing that thing um at lewis smith you guys remember seeing that on live mm -hmm. he made the top 10 and uh and yep. and the amount of knowledge that those guys have off the West Coast. So he had an S waiver is what he was throwing, but it was a customized S waiver from – so here I am again with names. The boy and his dad, Urub or Urbi or him and his dad. Uribe. Uribe, Those, thank you. Yeah. This is how my brain is so screwed up. Um, Uribe's dad had actually brought it to his house and brought three or four of them, and they were specially weighted. and like They're customized like completely – but those guys know exactly, like, not just that the sun's out or the wind's blowing or something like my simple mind and think of, like, 
he knows that the, the, the barometric pressure was here yesterday and then today it's fallen to here. And then whenever we get that slight tick, when it starts to rise again, I mean, shit like that, that just blows my mind. But anyway, point is he knows when he, when that kind of thing happens, that's when they fire, not just follow it. Like they'll eat it. And so like they know when to throw it and when it's not as risky, you know, more, more high potential. And so somebody like that comes along with one in a four day derby. Yeah. They can win it with it. Does that make sense? What I'm saying, in, man. Yeah, absolutely. Great point. I think they got, a, I think they've got a window to make it happen right now. Yeah. And it's right now. Like, there's there seems to be a resurgence in big baits going on right now like <laughs> when 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 a lot of these uh companies do it you know do a drop it's like two minutes boom gone i know it's it, i just feel like there's there's a bit of a resurgence and and the fish are see i know at least locally you know and it's not like big baits has been a thing here in jersey but definitely locally it, it's been a there's been a lot more of that going on somebody's got to make it happen soon or it's gonna to have to wait for the next cycle i mean i don't know back in the day you know before they brought out the 10 xd i mean I, if i would have looked at that bait 20 years ago 30 years ago i'd have gone that's crazy that's a giant crankbait but it got giant bites i mean does it still get giant bites bradley i mean you're out there i don't deep crank bites. yeah the, the deal with that thing is though it, it's kind of like a southern swim bait our gizzard chad are so damn big and yeah. a lot of these places uh, like all the tva systems all the stuff here in oklahoma and texas sure um our fish are primarily gizzard chad eaters for the most part that's, that's what they are and it's also what keeps them shallow right because gizzard chad run the bank a lot but um yeah they're so big, dude. That that it's very common for those fish to be eating that big of a bait. Very. So common. would that would would a bigger swim bait, not a glide bait, but there's lots of big baits out there. Like the one I referred to earlier for BTC, and especially in Grass Lakes down in Florida, it's doing a ton of work down there. It's that working class zero citizen. It's a six inch, but it's big bodied. I mean, it's it's gizzardy looking, man. And you can get it through grass and. Down there, it's it's constantly pulling up six, sevens, eights, nines, and double Ds. You know, they make a, a nine a battle shad, which is even bigger. But I think the citizen could be that tournament bait for a grass fishery. I don't know. Um, See, that's you know, a bait that I'm like not going, even. It's a bait I'm not even aware of. Like you're okay. way above me on that. Like which I know you are. I mean, I've watched some of y'all stuff, yeah. and I know that you're like a gearhead on that. Yeah. So I just wonder, I mean, I get the chance to fish, you know, Gunnersville. The one time I did fish it, one like this eBay thing uh, for the Future of Fishing Foundation. I fished with Larry Nixon on Bull Shoals. And then I spent like three days with Matt Lee on Gunnersville. And I never fished it. So he showed me ledge fishing. He was really good with electronics. I mean, I, I, I dropped shot an I, I, I eco rig. And, you know, he let me throw a big, big, just soft-sided swim bait. And that, for me, caught the big fish of the trip. Um, and it was really cool. I mean, it was offshore. He knew some areas to throw, and I stuck with it, you know, and, and it happened for me. It was cool. TVA, it was too. TVA is, to me, kind of misleading because, like, when the swim bait deal started going there, which obviously it's a it's a big deal there now. It's usually, a, sure. you know, like a hollow belly or something. But yeah, um, I just caught them there on Pickwick, and that's how I caught them on day two and that open. Yeah. It, it, is, it is surprisingly clear. So, like, and what I mean by that is, and, and a lot of the TVA chains this way, when you look at the watercolor on a lot of the TVA chain, it's got that green kind of yeah. tint to it that's more like where we are in Oklahoma and our stuff in Texas, but yet you can see a bait further than what you think you can. And when you're offshore, it doesn't look like it's that damn clear, but then when you pick up that big six-inch hollow belly and you fire it out there and you're reeling mm -hmm. it back, you start realizing that you can see that damn thing you know, four or five foot deep. So like, right. there's no wonder that they're firing on that thing on a 20 foot ledge, like what you're talking about offshore. Yeah. Because yeah. They can, they, can, they can see it. And I think the thing that surprised me a lot, of, a lot of anglers in this area is when Skeet Reese won at Smith Mountain Lake on a, on what I think was. Yeah. Know, I was there in that event. Big, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I a too. big swim bait and that shocked everybody. And I was just yeah. down there with my buddy Scooter Lily and we go pro for three days and, you know, I caught one that was, um, you know, if it had been during the spawn, it would have been a double digit, which, you know, it wasn't. It was an eight, 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 eight. Um, but throwing a six inch soft body, bigger swim bait, you know, and then the uh, eight inch it mag draft, I mean, to be honest. And, um, you know, it wasn't just followers. It was, it was fish eating it. And, it, it, um, it's, it 
it's funny that you bring that lake up in that tournament that you're talking about because Travis earlier was asking about uh, how many sight fish I'd caught that were that were cruisers, and yeah. I said it was less than ten. I had three or four bites in that event that Skeet won, and obviously I wasn't smart enough to put it together. But two of my biggest fish that I weighed in in that event were fish that I saw cruising, Travis, like what you're talking about. But here was the weird thing. That lake's got a lot of really flat points that will run a pretty good ways out. And, and, I mean, they're flat. They're like a foot, two foot deep, and they're they're massive. Mm-hmm. And I had sit down, tied something. I don't know what I was doing, but the damn boat had drifted up on this piece of shit flat, you know, that you should never see a fish on or catch a fish <laughs> on. And I jumped up on the front deck and was just about to stomp on the trail motor to get off of it, you know, to go back to the ditch. And when I did, I looked down and there was this wolf pack of about three or four fish. And they were all big. Every dang one of them was big. And they were just cruising like what Travis was talking about. And I just dropped the rod, reached down, grabbed a shaky head and flipped it right in front of them. And I mean, one of them just smoked it, you know, and I catch just like this four, four and a half pounder. This happened twice in this event and both times by accident. I still didn't put it together. But when I went back and when Skeet won that, that's where he's throwing the damn swim bait. That's where he was throwing it. And that's where all those wolf packs were. And so you had, which was what you need with swim bait fishing, right? You don't just want one. You want two or three to create competition. So one of them has to commit because they're afraid somebody else is going to eat their damn dinner, right? And, And that's exactly what he had. And he was just running those flats. Yeah. Hindsight's always 2020 in Derby, but like I saw that, you know, and that's what we it's love crazy. about fishing. Is that we learn things and we see things like that. But you're, you're absolutely, that's crazy that you brought that up. Was that a big eye opener for even professional fishermen like you that, you know, wow. A, oh, a yeah. Derby like I didn't have a damn one. clue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Clue. I thought yeah. that was like, I don't think anybody in the Smith Mountain Lake area was throwing a big bait like that. And, but I guarantee, uh, you, I guarantee you, it had something to do with them wolf packing, right? Like, so yeah. Skeet couldn't see him. He didn't see that, yeah. like, like what I saw. Or maybe, maybe he did yeah. at some point. He's smarter than me. He took it further. But if you get three or four of those in a wolf pack, dude, it was like a foot and a half deep forever. That's and crazy. you run that big giant swim bait within five feet of them or ten feet of them, they're going to smoke it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Austin Neary, who we've had on the show, the kid that grew up down the street from me, he's a big bait dude, and I've watched Southern Trout Eaters as a DVD. Matt Peters. I mean, it's it's hypnotic. And, you know, they talk about the Nazuma rat and, and um, glide baits and triple trouts, which, you know, when water gets warmer, it's a multi-jointed bait burn. And, you know, I don't think the bull shad was out at that point, but it might have been. But um, it just mesmerized me, you know, not for tournament fishing, but for trying to catch a double digit, you know, the fish of your life and all these trout eaters that are down in these North Carolina high mountain reservoirs. And Austin has recently been doing some work with um, uh, the DRT and uh it got this funky ass action and um he's uh he's throwing wolf packs but it's a nine inch bait and uh he's literally having the fish fight over it it's not a glide it's a build and you could fish it multiple ways they have you know it's a japanese bait if the tail tails in the a position you can fish it like a glide there you go um the b position the tail is kind of angled down they've got you know shallow running lip a deeper running lip when I was is that in Florida, it? Yeah, is that all it, you man. got? Okay. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's a that's a that's a a, a carp, that's a mad carp right there. But uh, he's having fish literally fight over the bait, uh, but the, it's the wolf pack, so it's exactly what you're talking about. I went down to Florida, fish with Brent Anderson uh, on, on Vero Trophy Bass Lakes, and we fished uh, Keenansville, and uh, we didn't was it Keenansville? Yeah, the jungle. Anyway, but I but the first day through the little tiny flash, which is still a big bait. And uh, I lost one of the biggest fish, but I also caught a giant on it. So it's crazy, man. It's triggering bites. It's like a big build uh, crank and swim bait, you know, the crank down. But you could fish it with a glide. The lip comes out. Yeah, there's a tiny clash and the big clash. Yeah, the lip but it's loud. I'm not saying I'm not saying they're tournament baits, dude. I'm just having fun with you know goofy shit. Anyway, uh, you stand by. You like them, BTC? Right. No, I haven't figured them out yet. Okay, it's a lot to learn. Hey, yeah. listen, they before cast we... like a potato chip. They cast like a flat A, man. They twirl in the wind. At least the, the tiny clash does. It's a bitch to cast. Yeah. Before we wrap up, we have to give away this uh, bag of stuff. Bag of baits. Oh, bag nice. of baits. Nice. Mega baits. Do that on your side. Okay. We're talking. Sorry. So, what's so, what? We... Traps, I so, missed it. I wasn't here earlier. What's your sister's name again? Uh, Christine with a C, C H. He's you still searching her on Instagram. <laughs> I don't know if she's on there. Married? 
Christian. No. Very religious, though. Younger than you, Travis. She is. You have any other siblings or just Christine? Just her. <laughs> nice. What's so funny, Eric? <laughs> that, that, that Alex would ask the question. It was a pretty uh, funny question. When you think Alex, uh, can you tell us who the winner is for this uh, giveaway tonight? Yeah, I think we had a record high number of entries into the giveaway, so we want to thank everyone for that. But the lucky winner tonight is Mr. Kevin Anderson. Kevin, I haven't seen you on the comments in a while, so I'll try to find you on Instagram. If you're watching this back, email Travis, DM me. We'll figure something out to get you your bait. So thanks for supporting the channel, and we'll make sure we get those out to you. Awesome, Kevin. Thank you. What you thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. We really do appreciate it. We're going to try to do more giveaways. Um, what do you get? More crazy stuff. Uh, some Merkley and then uh, Monster Merkley? Bass Bag. And some Merkley. Some yeah, Merkley. And then. Uh, I love Merkley. I think it's brilliant. A couple stickers. You know. You know how we do it. Yep. Yes. Sweet. That's, that's, that's the a color, too, bro. Well, I Listen, just, it's getting late. I know you get, you got to get to bed, BTC. Listen, you got me the fuck up. <laughs> the, the cool thing is here is like it's only 10.55 at my house. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, oh, that's, nice. Nice. Oh, nice. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Central Hell Times. Yeah, nice. It truly is. All right. Hey, we're all about to be on it so we can uh, have a good time with it. Oh, you got We got to rest crazy. up. We're only a couple days away from madness. Yeah. <laughs> you see, get to bed, go make your kitchens or whatever you got to do tomorrow and get ready. Yeah. Get Don't ready for me like Billy that. Bob, get ready for Billy Bob. And if you wear what you're wearing right now, it'll work. No, you need your boots. You need your boots and your belt. Buckles. Oh, we did belt. Uh, Brad, Bradley, I got to ask you this I, serious question. I don't own cowboy boots. I always wanted to. Yes. Should I wear them down there or should I try to look like different, differentiate myself? Well, do you own a pair? I don't, but I'll get I'll get some. Well, don't Travis, buy them there. Buy, buy them here. Mine. Buy them in Texas. Because if you buy them up there, they're going to be like all pointed, and you're going to look like somebody from the 1980s. Come down here, and I'll help you with some cowboy boots, and you'll be set. You don't want pointed boots? <laughs> no, sir. That's been way out of style for a long time. You look like an idiot. And, well, you know, just be you. No, don't be you. Come down here and buy some boots. I'll help you. <laughs> Does he wear jeans? There's, like, there's only like 20 stores on the way to Billy Bob, so it won't be. I'll hard wear boots. I'll get boots if BTC gets boots. I hate fucking get boots. <laughs> BTC would look good in some boots. Shit kickers. I don't think I would, dude. I, I, no, I, you I, would. You would. Wranglers, a buckle, a belt with your name on the back that just says BTC. <sighs> You'd look good. Really? Yeah, pearl snap shirt, dude. Oh God, yeah, pearl snap. Think I, about it. I would look Dang. like one of Ed Bassmaster's characters. At least get you a pearl snap shirt, BTC, because that I is your some. style. Should I bring those down? Absolutely. Okay. No, I gotta be me, and I don't know how to. I don't know how to be anybody else. Cheap bourbon whiskey and pearl snap shirts. It's a famous song down here. <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. Hey Bradley, is Gilly is Gilly still there, man? Texas, oh yeah, is Gilly's is there as well. Oh yeah, Gilly's, oh, yeah, hundred percent. Oh, wow, man, isn't that where they? I think Gilly's is actually in Houston man. to be to be politically correct, but there may be oh, a okay. Gilly's in, in in Fort Worth as well. Okay, I didn't know. No, it's like yeah, that, that movie with the Gilly's. That movie was shot. Which which Billy Bob's is bigger than Gilly's, but same same effect, you know, bull riding right. and all that. Yeah, yeah that's mechanical crazy, bull, man. real bulls. The whole that's line. nuts. Somebody's got to get on a mechanical bull, man. One of you. It ain't going to be me. I'm too old. <laughs> Same. Too damn Travis. old. I, don't know, I got tapeworms in my leg or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I feel your pain. I get that shit from driving. Just when I get in my truck and I start driving, like even if I've got a 14-hour drive and I've got to do it at once, like three hours in, I mean, my right leg just starts cramping bad, like all mm. the way up to my ass. It hurts. Do you yeah. ever wake up at night with leg cramps? Oh, yeah. Jump out of bed and screaming. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Like, like a couple times a month? It's a, it's a yeah, probably, probably once, twice you a month. Dehydrated, bro. Yeah, you're dehydrated. You need more, drink more pickle juice. So it's really maybe just standing Dehydr all the time and dehydration. Okay. Yeah, no, you're getting older and you're dehydrated. I still need to figure it out. I got to get some blood work done, dude. I got to be certain. Just drink pickle juice and you'll probably be good to go. Yeah. 
Dude, Roman Work. does 40 push-ups and what was it? 40 push-ups, 100 sit-ups. Roland? Yeah, every morning. He's 81 years yeah. old. Kid me. Holy That's shit. That's what said the second morning. Yeah. Hey, okay. tell us about that trip before before they kick us off here because it's late. Uh, tell us about the trip. Man, it was freaking unbelievable. Go ahead, Trav, you start. Um, good, good shit. Eric? <laughs> No, I, I would love to. I want to hear BT's teach. Oh, no, you, you hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I got, I got fifty on. seconds. Right. Whoa, fifty right. seconds of rolling. Roland's got the that. giant. Look at that giant that rolled. Hold on. Travis was able to post his. Yes. 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 Woo. Whoa. Travis, assist, please. Too much traffic up front. Assist. You got a triple. Touch my fish, Travis. Don't you know? Yes! 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ. Woo! <laughs> hit the button. Did we hit the button? Another yeah. one. Literally, not one fish a minute, like two to three a minute. Oh! Triple. Triple, triple. triple. Big five pounders, four pounders. Nice. There you go. Wow. I mean, that's, Brad, that's our trip. You catching U.S. With rolling. We shared a bed fish dude together, man. Travis was spotting bed fish for him. It was cool, man. The guy wants to fish. He didn't want to go in. There was one moment, like we're in these little cuts up the river. We had done our smallmouth thing. We're chasing large, large mouth at this point. This little, little, you know, offshoot to the main river, and you've got these little tiny cuts that go back maybe fifty yards and a house, you know. And this is where the large mouth spawn. And um, I mean, just bed fishing with him. It, it was crazy, man. I mean, the guy didn't want to leave. Will like lines up behind us with a shotgun and. Like cracks off three shotgun blasts, like go, come on, dude, we're going to get dinner. And Roland just didn't even flinch. He was working a bed fish. Didn't look back. Didn't even move. Maybe he didn't hear it, but who cares? He was totally into fishing until dark. He didn't want to leave. He did not want to leave. Guy got energy at 87. It's crazy. Just fun. Wow. Telling a story. And he's up literally like when he was doing his content for his YouTube, the dude is sharp as attack. He's like one cut and he was done. Like, we did one segment because he's sponsored by Yamamoto, as you know, Sanko. We did, like, seven ways to fish a Sanko with him. I mean, are you kidding me? What? How, how, mean, many, push -up, how many push-ups and sit-ups do you say he does? 40 and 100. So, like, Scott, all last year was like, I don't know, he was, you know, like a lot of guys. He's like, oh, I need to lose weight. And so he's doing these fucking stupid planks and shit in the morning before tournaments and before <laughs> practice. And he's doing these push-ups. If I would have known this, dude, I'd have been on his ass. I'd have been like, dude, your dad's 82 and does more damn push-ups than you do. <laughs> I would have been all over that. He's the Iron Man. He's funny too, man. Travis was like, "Man, you, Eric, you got to watch your mouth, you know, because I like I like colorful language." And he goes, "Cause I don't know what to expect, you know. I knew what to expect with Jimmy because we ran into him down at the uh, Double R Ranch down in Bama when I when yeah. Travis, yeah. you know, after the classic. Anyway, so like out of the gate, dude, he's like mixing it up. It's oh, he's yeah. dropping it. Oh, he loves yeah. to have fun and talk. He didn't <laughs> care. Yeah. He told us this great story about his greatest fart ever." Did you ever hear the story about Roland Martin's greatest heart ever? So he's driving with his dudes that he travels with, right? Camera guy and the driver. And so Roland, that's one go. And so you, these guys are experienced. So the one dude who's driving cracks the window. Well, that creates the draft and brings the heart by his nose. Yeah. And like he's sucking it up. The guy starts to gag. Then the guy in the back is gagging. And then the next thing you know, they lock up the brakes at 70 to the side of the road. They both throw up. They both throw up. He goes, that's my greatest fart ever. And he goes, so the next time, these guys thought they were smart. So he didn't announce it, but he made a little sound, you know, and they caught him. So, like, literally, they locked the brakes up. They cracked the window. They just locked it up and got the fuck out of it. His greatest fart ever. He's so proud of that. He's so proud of that greatest fart ever, man. He loves farts. I heard he loves that. It's the fart game, man. Roland likes to play the fart game, dude. He's the master at it. That's why he, that's why he's one of the winningest guys ever on tour, man. He's sneaky. <laughs> He'll sneak up on you, that guy. Silent, but oh, that, that, that dude ain't one of the winningest. That dude is the winningest dude ever. Not, like that, that, know, that dude is stupid. How many wins he's got? You know, you know, you know. I'm a crankbait head, right? So he starts talking about one of my, my and I was really fortunate to get into the crankbait game early, and um, you know, I had a chance to talk to Rob Cochran, and then. I called Mikey Step, man, with the big E. And Roland released the video. And somebody, like, sent it to me. And, like, dude, you got to watch this video. 
His winningest plug ever was a Mike Estep Big E. Oh, yeah, Mike Eastep from East Tennessee. I've got some of those in my house. So I actually have something you have. I actually have yes. Mike Eastep worked with my dad. Worked with my oh dad my with Green Me Bates. Wow. Yeah, no shit, dude. Dude, dude, wow. what? Oh yes, my sir. I got ties in to the Eastep Bates. No I shit. I love that little ticker inside that Eastep bait, man. And, you know, I think he used to make it the old way, like some of the old school makers would take a 22 caliber shell, put a steel ball bearing it. That ticker is badass, man. Mike signed a couple for me. So I got signed Mike Eastep's. And uh, but hearing Roland tell that story about that plug, and I'm like, damn. I mean, them boys like to grind the bills off them plugs early in the spring, man. Mm-hmm. That's a big body mm-hmm. crank to get you a it big is. bite, man. It is. It I is. mean, that's why that BDS3, BDS4, man. That, I'm telling you, don't sleep on them big baits, boys. You don't know nothing about it, Travis. Don't pretend like you do, and don't say nothing. <laughs> that, You're about to say some shit, dude. I know it. I know <laughs> it. Let me, me let me, Brad, Brad, we'll have a moment. Mikey Step. That's what I'm talking about. Dude, I want to do it so bad. Sounds like a great bait. I'd like to get my Mikey hands on Mikey Step needs like a fucking sign or something. You know what I mean? Something. Dude, the big E, man. Just the name of it. The big E. Dude, he sent me. Did you know Don't he be giving off Masonic vi- symbols on this show. No. Don't, do don't, be, don't be putting that out there. Don't you do it. <laughs> Zoltan. Zoltan. Dude, where's my car? Zoltan. So we had a Bass University show Tuesday night, and then Wednesday morning, me and Mike headed north, right? You guys were up there like Monday and Tuesday, something like that, beating them up. And um, and Mike, you know, came by, picked me up. Seven-hour drive up to up to St. Lawrence from here. We got there at like two o'clock. Those guys were all out fishing. They they were back at the you know at that boat ramp, and um, the boat's power pulled down. All the guys, and it was. it was Roland, Jimmy, OT Fears. Jimmy had Roland. Roland rolled up there by himself, but Jimmy. O- a- OT's crab ass was up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really. <laughs> wow. And uh, a couple other guys. Uh, uh, Jimmy had his camera guy, and God, I can't remember the other two guys. But anyhow, so they were all there, and they're just kind of sitting there waiting. You know, we pull up and whatever, and and you know. Like right off the bat, man, is walk down and hey, what's up, man? You know, there's Ron and Jimmy, and Jimmy's over there under a tree in some shade, and they're filming something, you know, you know, doing his thing. And and Roland's got a free minute, and he's pacing, he reaches down, grabs his rod, and makes a cast. And that struck me, man, you know, like they were fishing all morning. He's been fishing yeah. the last 75 years of his life, yeah, probably every day. And he had a free minute with nothing going on, nothing in his hands. He had to grab his rod at the boat ramp while we were taking on some downtime and made a cast. And I was just like, damn, you know, like. Still got the passion. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, and and if, it's like one of those things where you see kids today, they're like, oh, you know, they, they, they relate to, you know, some, some people that got them into fishing, right? Right now it's a huge movement with YouTubers that get these kids into it. And it's freaking awesome. And we didn't have that. But we didn't need it, right? And that's not a slight on them, but it was just like, it was something born in us, right? The town I grew up in, like the, the three or four or five of us that were into it, we all kind of found each other, like like four Cocoa Puffs in a bowl of milk, you know? When the last were there, they like, they all... Yeah. And they all end up like in the group. So that was us, man. We all found each other and, and, and we just... Four Cocoa Puffs in the we just had that passion for fishing and, and like couldn't go to a lake without making a cast, you know, dude, single mom, Mike, single mom, Dave, like all of us, we didn't even have a, a father in our lives growing up, you know, but it was born in us. You know, we just had that, that thing where whatever it is, whatever that gene was that we were drawn to the water. And when you're there, you got to cast, you got to fish, you got to catch something. You got to know what's in there. Um, and that's what Roland, to me, that's what Roland had. And he passed it on to Scott, and Mike's passing it on to Vegas for sure. You know, Vegas mm-hmm. all in, you know. But that was that was one of the moments that really, you know, jumped out and that I, I remember. And we got out on the water, you know, me, Mike, and Roland that day, and it was a blast, you know. Uh, I could tell it was a massive thrill for Mike. Like, first fish that Roland hooked up. Mike had to land it. Like, I got to land this fish for you. You know, he threw his rod down and 
And I, it was it was cool. It was cool to see, you know, because like I said, we grew kind of grew up without dads, and like probably a year and a half ago, we had Scott on Ike Live, and while Mike was talking with Scott, and Scott was describing, you know, a certain whatever the story was, talking about growing up with Rowan as his dad. I sit back in my producer spot, you know, where I'm pushing buttons and sort of a part of the show, but, um, and I just kind of watched him, Mike and I could see him drift off and paint the picture in his head of what it was like to grow up with Rowan as your dad, you know, and, and I could tell like in a lot of ways, those guys were for us, you know, they yeah. were, they were our fishing dads, you know, Rowan and Jimmy and Bill Dance. And so it was a, uh, it was a huge thrill, you know, Certainly for me, absolutely for Mike. Um, it was awesome, man. And I got to feel like it probably was for, for Roland and Jimmy too, you know, which is pretty cool. Not not me, but, you know, especially with Mike because he's made a name for himself and done some things. Um, and then, so the fish was a little bit tough, right? Like you guys pounded on them. We probably fished behind you. And I felt like as the day was going on, like, man, we got to get that pick where we all have a small mouth in our hand, right? And we didn't want to live well any. And it's just like, it's getting late. It's like getting towards the end. And then, you know, Rowan's starting to do practice outros in case this is the last one he catches. You know? And then Mike catches a good one, right? It's getting about that time. He catches like a four pounder or whatever. So he starts, Mike had his GoPro set up. Rowan had his. And Mike does starts doing an outro for it. And as he's doing it, Rowan hooks up. And then Mike just starts yelling, Bry, 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 this is it, this is it, this is chance, you gotta get one. So I'm like, oh God, you know, make that cast. Travis, <laughs> I had that bait on. We won't talk about it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Really? I was so oh, like, yeah. Really? And it was almost like I knew it was gonna happen. You know, it was just one of them ones where you just you felt it before it was gonna happen. Like that's amazing. Think it was freaking awesome, man. Set the hook. Rob bends over. Mike starts yelling. Rowan's landing his fish. Mike's got a four-pounder in his hand, you know. Dang. Boom. Got the fish in the boat. And, um, and and uh, you know, and it was cool, man. They were Dude. just so enthused, and and uh, it was wild. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. It is. That's beautiful. That's beautiful right there. But I know what you wore last summer, man. Yeah, <laughs> so we the rods in, we get everything strapped down, we're, we're about ready to, you know, jump up on pad and take our seats, and everyone's like, anybody like to drink? I'm like, <laughs> I don't like to drink. <laughs> Reaches in his pocket and he pulls out three airplane bottles. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, hell yeah, you know, I didn't even read it, you know, it was like, cheer, you know, we, we did the shot, it was rum, some kind of rum, I don't know, didn't read the bottle. And uh, we jump on pad, and, and Rowan's like nudging me. He's like pointing, grab that cap, grab that cap. So I grab the cap. He's like, grab the bottle, grab the bottle. He's like, I reuse them. Puts the cap back on the bottle, puts it in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, who knows what you know? But yeah, <laughs> I reuse them. Unbelievable, man. Oh yeah, they popped out later that night after dinner. That's so cool. That's unbelievable, there, man. Is there a bar near our hotel? <laughs> pulls, pulls back out of his pocket. But yeah, it was cool, man. It was it was wild. It was really awesome. And Jimmy was awesome. Jimmy talked circles around Mike, which was good. Today. That's incredible, yeah, but not a, not surprising. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, we uh we we bumped in him down in Alabama, man. That was fun, man. Just happened to be there at the Piero Ranch. It's nuts, Travis. Jimmy Hughes yeah. pulling his boat out. We didn't get we get we didn't get any time in the boat with Jimmy though. No, I didn't. we didn't. Mike got in Jimmy's boat. Yeah. Yeah. And was, Jimmy was on the front deck, his cameraman in the middle, and Mike on the back deck with the camera port, pointing towards Jimmy. Why didn't they want both awesome. of them on the, on the front? <laughs> I, I'm a carpenter, so I don't know. But that just seemed weird. <laughs> I'm curious how they made uh, maybe they had mirrors. I don't know. <laughs> I was trying to figure out the angles, but yeah, whatever, it was cool. Nah, it was it was it was a good time. That it was awesome. Good stuff. All right, listen, let's let's wrap this up. First of all, BTC, thanks for coming out. Your sleeper. 
Always. Bradley, man. thanks for easy, hanging easy. out. Last oh minute. Oh, my God, Bradley. Awesome. Awesome. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Man, bro. Yeah, I, I just joined on Monday night, honestly, just watching it. And I thought, I, I thought a while before I even chimed in. And I thought, yeah, fuck it, I'll chime in. Well. That's so Might cool, well. man. Thank awesome. you for doing that, man. He had another dimension to it, man. That was awesome. Well, All right, awesome. what do we got for Bash University tomorrow? Hell no, dude. Taking the day me, off. Me and no. you, Travis, telling telling everybody how not to fish the flats post ball. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'll give All lectures right. on how to run out there at low tide. There you go. <laughs> you know, about me flower before. pot and lesson by Bradley right. Hallman. Mm -hmm. Courtesy of Brian Schmidt. Do what, Brian? Trav. Hmm. The, the Chester County we fished last year, you and I started, and Mike and Rich started on the same spot. Yep. I don't know what that spot's called. Brad got waypoints from Schmidt. Right there. That, <laughs> that's yeah. where I ran it. So I understand what what happened was he probably went he he left the main river channel and basically started driving over all the pleasure boaters hang out and party and when you stay in the water it's below your knees. Dude, he ran there balls low tide. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I came from the south side. I didn't come from the north oh, yeah. side. Yeah, I, yeah. I came down on the south side and it was just all flat forever and it just got shallower and shallower. There's and shallower always a few that. guys in some of these tournaments that are. Uh, they're done for the day. They're right yeah, there like hanging Brian, out. Brian and Ike were telling me they're like it's bad whenever you uh, come off pad and set it down. But I, I didn't. I didn't push it that far. I was watching it the whole way. Yeah. Flower pot. Good stuff. We'll see everybody at the classic. Come say hi to us. You run into us at the expo. Be like, hey, what's up? We saw at Smallmouth Crush. Absolutely. And as always, until next time. Billy Bob's. See you on the water. See you, Billy Bob's. <laughs> see you guys.